the thirteenth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil schampf the thirteenth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument ulysses shipped but in the even with all the presents he was given and sleeping men is set next morn in full scope of his wished return and treads unknown his country shore whose search so many winters wore the ship returning and arrived against the city is deprived of form and all her motion gone transformed by neptune to a stone ulysses let to know the strand where the phaeacians made him land consults with pallas for the life of every wooer of his wife his gifts she hides within a cave and him into a man more grave all hid in wrinkles crooked gray transformed who so goes on his way another argument new phaeacia ulysses leaves whom ithaca unwares receives he said and silence all their tongues contained in admiration when with pleasure chained their ears had long been to him at last break alcinous silence and in this sort spake to the ithacensian laertes son o ithacus however overrun with former sufferings in your way for home since twas at last your happy fate to come to my high roofed and brass foundationed house i hope such speed and pass auspicious our loves shall yield you that you shall no more wander nor suffer homewards as before you then whoever that are ever graced with all the choice of authorized power to taste such wine with me as warms the sacred rage and is an honorary given to age with which ye likewise here divinely sing in honour's praise the poet of the king i move by way of my command to this that where in an elaborate chest there lies a present for our guest attires of price and gold engraven with infinite device i wish that each of us should add beside a tripod and a cauldron amplified with size and metal of most rate and great for we in council of taxation met will from our subjects gain their worth again since tis unequal one man should sustain a charge so weighty being the grace of all which borne by many is a weight but small thus spake alcinous and pleased the rest when each man closed with home and sleep his feast but when the color giving light arose all to the ship did all their speeds dispose and wealth that honest men makes brought with them all which even he that wore the diadem stowed in the ship himself beneath the seats the rower sat in stooping lest their lets in any of their labours he might prove then home he turned and after him did move the whole assembly to expected feast among whom he a sacrifice addressed and slew an ox to weather wielding jove beneath whose empire all things are and move the thighs then roasting they made glorious cheer delighted highly and amongst them there the honoured of the people used his voice divine demodocus yet through this choice of cheer and music had ulysses still an eye directed to the eastern hill to see him rising that illustrates all for now into his mind a fire did fall of thirst for home and as in hungry vow to needful food a man at fixed plough to whom the black ox all day long hath turned the stubborn fallows up his stomach burned with empty heat and appetite to food his knees afflicted with his spirit spent blood at length the long expected sunset sees that he may sit to food and rest his knees so to ulysses set the friendly light the sun afforded with as wished a sight who straight he spake the o'er affecting state but did in chief his speech appropriate to him by name that with their rule was crowned alcinous of all men most renowned dismiss me with as safe pass as you vow your offering past and may the gods to you in all contentment use as full a hand for now my landing here and stay shall stand in all perfection with my heart's desire 
both my so safe deduction to aspire and loving gifts which may the gods to me as blessed in use make as your acts are free even to the finding firm in love and life with all desired event my friends and wife when as myself shall live delighted there may you with your wives rest as happy here your sons and daughters in particular state with every virtue rendered consummate and in your general empire may ill never approach your land but good your good quit ever this all applauded and all jointly cried dismiss the stranger he hath dignified with fit speech his dismission then the king thus charged the herald fill for offering a bowl of wine which through the whole large house disposed to all men that propitious our father jove made with our prayers we may give home our guest in full and wished way this said pontinus commixed a bowl of such sweet wine as did delight the soul which making sacred to the blessed gods that hold in broad heaven their supreme abodes godlike ulysses from his chair arose and in the hands of the empress did impose the all-round cup to whom fair spoke he said rejoice o queen and be your joys repaid by heaven for me till age and death succeed both which inflict their most unwelcome need on men and dames alike and first for me i must from thence to both live you here free and ever may all living blessings spring your joy in children subjects and your king this said divine ulysses took his way before whom the unalterable sway of king alcinous's virtue did command a herald's fit attendance to the strand and ship appointed with him likewise went handmaids by arete's injunction sent one bore an out and in weed fair and sweet the other an embroidered cabinet the third had bread to bear and ruddy wine all which at sea and ship arrived resigned their freight conferred with fair attendance then the sheets and bedding of the man of men within a cabin of the hollow keel spread and made soft that sleep might sweetly seal his restful eyes he entered and his bed in silence took the rowers ordered themselves in several seats and then set gone the ship the gable from the hollow stone dissolved and weighed up all together close then beat the sea his lids in sweet repose sleep bound so fast it scarce gave way to breath inexcitable most dear next of all to death and as amidst a fair field four brave horse before a chariot stung into their course with fervent lashes of the smarting scourge that all their fire blows high and makes them urge to utmost speed the measure of their ground so bore the ship aloft her fiery bound about whom rushed the billows black and vast in which the sea roars burst as firm as fast she plied her course yet nor her winged speed the falcon gentle could for pace exceed so cut she through the waves and bore a man even with the gods in councils that began and spent his former life in all misease battles of men and rude waves of the seas yet now securely slept forgetting all and when heaven's brightest star that first doth call the early morning out advanced her head then near to ithaca the billow-bred frisian ship approached there is a port that the aged sea-god phorcus makes his fort whose earth the ithacensian people own in which two rocks inaccessible are grown far forth into the sea whose each strength binds the boisterous waves in from the high-flown winds on both the outparts so that all within the well-built ships that once their harbour win in his calm bosom without anchor rest safe and unstirred from forth the haven's high crest branched the well bronzed arms of an olive tree beneath which runs a cave from all sun free cool and delightsome sacred to the access of nymphs whose surnames are the naiades in which flew humming bees in which lay thrown stone cups stone vessels shittles all of stone with which the nymphs their purple mantles wove in whose contexture art and wonder strove in which pure springs perpetually ran to which two entries were one for man on which the north breathed 
the other for the gods on which the south and that bore no abodes for earthly men but only deathless feet had their free way this port these men thought meet to land ulysses being the first they knew drew then their ship in but no further drew than half her bulk reached by such cunning hand her course was managed then her men took land and first brought forth ulysses bed and all that richly furnished it he still in thrall of all subduing sleep upon the sand they set him softly down and then the strand they strew with all the goods he had bestowed by the renowned phaeacians since he showed so much minerva at the olive root they drew them then in heap most far from foot of any traveller lest ere his eyes resume their charge they might be others prize these then turned home nor was the sea supreme forgetful of his threats for polypheme bent at divine ulysses yet would prove ere their performance the decree of jove father no more the gods shall honour me since men despise me and those men that see the light in lineage of mine own loved race i vowed ulysses should before the grace of his return encounters woes enow to make that purchase dear yet did not vow simply against it since thy brow had bent to his reduction in the fore consent thou hast vouchsafed it yet before my mind hath full power on him the phaeacians find their own minds satisfaction with his pass so far from suffering what my pleasure was that ease and softness now is habited in his secure breast and his careless head returned in peace of sleep to ithaca the brass and gold of rich phaeacia rocking his temples garments richly woven in worlds of prize more than was ever strove from all the conflicts he sustained at troy if safe he should his full share there enjoy the shower dissolver answered what a speech hath passed thy palate o thou great in reach of wrackful empire far the gods remain from scorn of thee for twere a work of pain to prosecute with ignominies one that sways our ablest and most ancient throne for men if any so beneath in power neglect thy high will now or any hour that moves hereafter take revenge to thee soothe all thy will and be thy pleasure free why then said he thou blacker of the fumes that dim the sun my license power resumes act from thy speech but i observe so much and fear thy pleasure that i dare not touch at any inclination of mine own till thy consenting influence be known but now this curious built phaeacian ship returning from her convoy i will strip of all her fleeting matter and to stone transform and fix it just when she hath gone her full time home and jets before their priests in all her trim amidst the sable seas that they may cease to convoy strangers still when they shall see so like a mighty hill their glory stick before their city's grace and my hands cast a mask before her face o oh, friend said jove it shows to me the best of all earth's objects that their whole priests dressed in all their wonder near their town shall stand and stare upon a stone so near the land so like a ship and dam up all their lights as if a mountain interposed their sights when neptune heard this he for scaria went whence the phaeacians took their first descent which when he reached and in her swiftest pride the water-treader by the city side came cutting close close he came swiftly on took her in violent hand and to a stone turned all her sylvan substance all below firmed her with roots and left her this strange show when the phaeacians saw they stupid stood and asked each other who amidst the flood could fix their ship so in her full speed home and quite transparent make her bulk become thus talked they but were far from knowing how these things had issue which their king did show and said o friends the ancient prophecies my father told to me to all our eyes are now in proof he said the time would come when neptune for our safe conducting home all sorts of strangers out of envy fired would meet our fairer ship as she retired and all the goodly shape and speed we boast should like a mountain stand before us lost amidst the moving waters 
which we see performed in full end to our prophecy hear then my counsel and obey me then renounce henceforth our convoy home of men who shall hereafter greet our town and to the offended deities renown twelve chosen oxen let us sacred make that he may pity us and from us take this shady mountain they in fear obeyed slew all the beeves and to the godhead prayed the dukes and princes all in sphering round the sacred altar while whose tops were crowned divine ulysses on his country's breast lay bound in sleep now rose out of his rest nor being so long removed the region knew besides which absence yet minerva threw a cloud about him to make strange the more his safe arrival lest upon his shore he should make known his face and utter all that might prevent the event that was to fall which she prepared so well that not his wife presented to him should perceive his life no citizen no friend till righteous fate upon the wooer's wrongs were consummate through which cloud all things showed now to the king of foreign fashion the enflowered spring amongst the trees there the perpetual waves the rocks that did more high their foreheads raise to his rapt eye than naturally they did and all the haven in which a man seemed hid from wind and weather when storms loudest chid he therefore being risen stood and viewed his country earth which not perceived he rude and striking with his hurled down hands his thighs he mourned and said o oh me again where lies my desert way to wrongful men and rude and with no laws of human right and viewed or are they human and of holy minds what fits my deed with these so many kinds of goods late given what with myself will floods and errors do i would to god these goods had rested with their owners and that i had fallen on kings of more regality to grace out my return that loved indeed and would have given me consorts of fit speed to my distresses ending but as now all knowledge flies me where i may bestow my laboured purchase here they shall not stay lest what i cared for others make their prey o gods i see the great phaeacians then were not all just and understanding men that land me elsewhere than their vaunts pretended assuring me my country should see ended my miseries told them yet now eat their vaunts o jove great guardian of poor suppliants that other sees and notes too shutting in all in thy plagues that most presume on sin revenge me on them let me know now the goods they gave to give my mind to know if they have stolen none in their close retreat the goodly cauldrons then and tripods set in several ranks from out the heap he told his rich wrought garments too and all his gold and nothing lacked and yet this man did mourn the but supposed miss of his home return and creeping to the shore with much complaint minerva like a shepherd young and quaint as king's sons are a double mantle cast athwart his shoulders his fair goers graced with fitted shoes and in his hands a dart appeared to him whose sight rejoiced his heart to whom he came and said o friend since first i met your sight here be all good the worst that can join our encounter fare you fair nor with adverse mind welcome my repair but guard these goods of mine and succour me as to a god i offer prayers to thee and low access make to thy loved me say truth that i may know what country then what common people live here and what men some famous isle is this or gives it vent being near the sea to some rich continent she answered stranger whatsoe'er you are ye are either foolish or come passing far that know not this isle and make that doubt trouble for tis not so exceedingly ignoble but passing many know it and so many that of all the nation there abides not any from where the morning rises and the sun to where the even and the night their courses run but know this country rocky tis and rough and so for use of horse unapt enough yet with sad barrenness not much infested since clouds are here in frequent rains digested and flowery dews the compass is not great the little yet well filled with wine and wheat 
it feeds a goat and ox well being still watered with floods that ever overfill with heaven's continual showers and wooded so it makes a spring of all the kinds that grow and therefore stranger the extended name of this dominion makes access by fame from this extreme part of achaia as far as ilion and tis ithaca this joyed him much that so unknown a land turned to his country yet so wise a hand he carried even of this joy flown so high that other end he put to his reply than straight to show that joy and lay abroad his life to strangers therefore he bestowed a veil on truth for evermore did wind about his bosom a most crafty mind which thus his words showed i have far at sea in spacious crete heard speak of ithaca of which myself it seems now reach the shore with these my fortunes whose whole value more i left in crete amongst my children there from whence i fly for being the slaughterer of royal idomen's most loved son swift foot or silicus that could outrun professed men for the race yet him i slew because he would deprive me of my due in trojan prize for which i suffered so the rude waves piercing the redoubled woe of mind and body in the wars of men nor did i gratify his father then with any service but as well as he swayed in command other soldiery so with a friend withdrawn we waylaid him when gloomy night the cope of heaven did dim and no man knew but we lodged close he came and i put out to him his vital flame whose slaughter having authored with my sword i instant flight made and straight fell aboard a ship of the renowned phoenician state when prayed and paid at a sufficient rate obtained my pass of men in her command whom i enjoined to set me on the land of pylos or of elis the divine where the epians in great empire shine but force of weather checked that course to them though loath to fail me to their most extreme they spent their willing powers but forced from thence we erred and put in here with much expense of care and labour and in dead of night when no man there served any appetite so much as with the memory of food though our estates exceeding needy stood but going ashore we lay when gentle sleep my weary powers invaded and from ship they fetching these my riches with just hand about me laid them while upon the sand sleep bound my senses and for sidon they put off from hence made sail while here i lay left sad alone the goddess laughed and took his hand in hers and with another look assuming the likeness of a dame lovely and goodly expert in the frame of virtuous housewiferies she answered thus he should be passing sly and covetous of stealth in men's deceits that coateth thee in any craft though any god should be ambitious to exceed in subtlety thou still wit varying wretch insatiate in overreaches not secure thy state without these wiles though on thy native shore thou settest safe footing but upon thy store of false words still spend that even from thy birth have been thy best friends come our either worth is known to either thou of men art far for words and counsels the most singular but i above the gods in both may boast my still tried faculties yet thou hast lost the knowledge even of me the seed of jove pallas athenia that have still outstrove in all thy labours their extremes and stood thy sure guard ever making all thy good known to the good phaeacians and received and now again i greet thee to see weaved fresh counsels for thee and will take on me the close reserving of these goods for thee which the renowned phaeacian states bestowed at thy deduction homewards only moved with my both spirit and counsel all which grace i now will amplify and tell what case thy household stands in uttering all those pains that of mere need yet still must rack thy veins do thou then freely bear nor one word give to man nor dame to show thou yet dost live but silence suffer over all again thy sorrows past and bear the wrongs of men goddess said he unjust men and unwise that authored injuries and vanities by vanities and wrongs should rather be bound to this ill-bearing destiny than just and wise men 
what delight hath heaven that lives unhurt itself to suffer given up to all domage those poor few that strive to imitate it and like the deities live but where you wonder that i know you not through all your changes that skill is not got by slight or art since thy most hard-hit face is still distinguished by thy free given grace and therefore to truly acknowledge thee in thy encounters is a mastery in men most knowing for to all men thou takest several likeness all men think they know thee in their wits but since thy seeming view appears to all and yet thy truth to few through all thy changes to discern thee right ask chief love to thee and inspired light but this i surely know that some years past i have been often with thy presence graced all time the sons of greece waged war at troy but when fate's full hour let our swords enjoy our vows and sack of priam's lofty town our ships all boarded and when god had blown our fleet in sunder i could never see the seed of jove nor once distinguish thee boarding my ship to take one woe from me but only in my proper spirit involved erred here and there quite slain till heaven dissolved me and my ill which chanced not till thy grace by open speech confirmed me in a place fruitful of people where in person thou didst give me guide and all their city show and that was the renowned phaeacian earth now then even by the author of thy birth vouchsafe my doubt the truth for far it flies my thoughts that thus should fall into mine eyes conspicuous ithaca but fear i touch at some far shore and that thy wit is such thou dost delude me is it sure the same most honoured earth that bears my country's name i see said she thou wilt be ever thus in every worldly good incredulous and therefore have no more the power to see frail life more plagued with infelicity in one so eloquent ingenious wise another man that so long miseries had kept from his loved home and thus returned to see his house wife children would have burned in headlong lust to visit yet to inquire what states they hold affects not thy desire till thou hast tried if in thy wife there be a sorrow wasting days and nights for thee in loving tears that then the sight may prove a full reward for either's mutual love but i would never credit you both least cause of sorrow but well knew the troth of this thine own return though all thy friends i knew as well should make returnless ends yet would not cross mine uncle neptune so to stand their safeguard since so high did go his wrath for thy extinction of the eye of his loved son come then i'll show thee why i call this isle thy ithaca to ground thy credit on my words this haven is owned by the aged sea-god forces in whose brow this is the olive with the ample bough and here close by the pleasant shaded cave that to the fount nymphs the ithacensians gave as sacred to their pleasures here doth run the large and covered den where thou hast done hundreds of offerings to the naiades here mount neritus shakes his curled tress of shady woods this said she cleared the cloud that first deceived his eyes and all things showed his country to him glad he stood with the sight of his loved soil and kissed it with delight and instantly to all the nymphs he paid with hands held up to heaven these vows and said ye nymphs the naiades great seed of jove i had conceit that never more should move your sight in these spheres of my erring eyes and therefore in the fuller sacrifice of my heart's gratitude rejoice till more i pay your names in offerings as before which here i vow if jove's benign descent the mighty pillager with life convent my person home and to my saved decease of my loved son's sight add the sweet increase be confident said pallas nor oppress thy spirits with care of these performances but these thy fortunes let us straight repose in this divine cave's bosom that may close reserve their value and we then may see how best to order other acts to thee thus entered she the light excluding cave and through it sought some inmost nook to save the gold the great brass and robes richly wrought given to ulysses all which in he brought laid down in heap and she imposed a stone close to the cavern's mouth then sat they on the sacred olive's root 
consulting how to act the insulting wooer's overthrow when pallas said examine now the means that best may lay hands on the impudence of those proud wooers that have now three years thy roof's rule swayed and been bold offerers of suit and gifts to thy renowned wife who for thy absence all her desolate life dissolves in tears till thy desired return yet all her wooers while she thus doth mourn she holds in hope and every one affords in forcent message promise but her words bear other utterance than her heart approves o god said ithacus it now behooves my fate to end me in the ill decease that agamemnon underwent unless you tell me and in time their close intents advise then means to the revenged events we both resolve on be thyself so kind to stand close to me and but such a mind breathe in my bosom as when the ilion towers we tore in cinders o oh, if equal powers thou wouldst inflame amidst my nerves as then i could encounter with three hundred men thy only self great goddess had to friend in those brave ardors thou wert wont to extend i will be strongly with thee answered she nor must thou fail but do thy part with me when both whose powers combine i hope the bloods and brains of some of these that waste thy goods shall strew thy goodly pavements join we then i first will render thee unknown to men and on thy solid lineaments make dry thy now smooth skin thy bright brown curls imply in hoary mattings thy broad shoulders clothe in such a cloak as every eye shall loathe thy bright eyes blear and wrinkle and so change thy form at all parts that thou shalt be strange to all the wooers thy young son and wife but to thy herdsman first present thy life that guards thy swine and wisheth well to thee that loves thy son and wife penelope thy search shall find him set aside his herd that are with taste alighting acorns reared and drink the deep dark water of the spring bright arethusa the most nourishing razor of herds there stay and taking seat aside thy herdsman of the whole state treat of home occurrence while i make access to fair dame breeding sparta for redress of love telemachus who went in quest of thy loved fame and lived the welcome guest of menelaus the much knower said why wouldst not thou in whose grave breast is bred the art to order all acts tell in this his heir to him let those years of his amidst the rude seas wander and sustain the woes there raging while unworthy men devour his fortunes let not care extend thy heart for him said she myself did send his person in thy search to set his worth by good fame blown to such a distance forth nor suffers he in any least degree the grief you fear but all variety that plenty can yield in her quietest fare in menelaus's court doth sit and share in whose return from home the wooers yet lay bloody ambush and a ship have set to sea to intercept his life before he touch again his birth's attempted shore all which my thoughts say they shall never do but rather that the earth shall overgo some one at least of these love-making men by which thy goods so much impair sustain thus using certain secret words to him she touched him with her rod and every limb was hid all over with a withered skin his bright eyes bleared his brow curls white and thin and all things did an aged man present then for his own weeds shirt and coat all rent tanned and all sootied with noisome smoke she put him on and over all a cloak made of a stag's huge hide of which was worn the hair quite off a scrip all patched and torn hung by a cord oft broke and knit again and with a staff did his old limbs sustain thus having both consulted of the event they parted both and forth to sparta went the grey-eyed goddess to see all things done that appertain to wise ulysses son end of the thirteenth book the fourteenth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain 
For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Fourteenth Book of the Odysseys of Homer. Translated by George Chapman. The Argument ulysses meets amidst the field his swain eumaeus who doth yield kind guest rights to him and relate occurrence of his wronged estate another argument z ulysses feigns for his true good his pious swain's faith understood but he the rough way took from forth the port through woods and hilltops seeking the resort where pallas said divine eumaeus lived who of the fortunes that were first achieved by godlike Ithacus in household rites had more true care than all his proselytes? He found him sitting in his cottage door, where he had raised to every airy blore a front of great height, and in such a place that round he might behold of circular grace a walk so wound about it, which the swain, in absence of his far gone sovereign, had built himself without his queen's supply or old laertes to see safely lie his housed herd the inner part he wrought of stones that thither his own labours brought which with a hedge of thorn he fenced about and compassed all the hedge with pales cleft out of sable oak that here and there he fixed frequent and thick within his yard he mixed twelve styes to lodge his herd and every sty had room and use for fifty swine to lie but those were females all the male swine slept without doors ever nor was their herd kept fair like the females since they suffered still great diminution he being forced to kill and send the fattest to the dainty feasts affected by the ungodly wooing guests their number therefore but three hundred were and sixty by them mastiffs as austere as savage beasts lay ever their fierce strain bred by the herdsman a mere prince of men their number four himself was then applied in cutting forth a fair-hued ox's hide to fit his feet with shoes his servants held guard of his swine three here and there at field the fourth he sent to city with a sow which must of force be offered to the vow the wooers made to all satiety to serve which still they did those offerings ply the fate-born dogs to bark took sudden view of odysseus and upon him flew with open mouth he cunning to appall a fierce dog's fury from his hand let fall his staff to earth and sat him careless down and yet to him had one foul wrong been shown where most his right lay had not instantly the herdsman let his hide fall and his cry with frequent stones flung at the dogs repelled this way and that their eager course they held when through the entry past he thus did mourn o oh, father how soon had you near been torn by these rude dogs whose hurt had branded me with much neglect of you but deity hath given so many other sighs and cares to my attendant state that well unawares you might be hurt for me for here i lie grieving and mourning for the majesty that godlike wanted to be ruling here since now i fat his swine for others cheer where he perhaps airs hungry up and down in countries nations cities all unknown if anywhere he lives yet and doth see the sun's sweet beams but father follow me that cheered with wine and food you may disclose from whence you truly are and all the woes your age is subject to this said he led into his cottage and of osier spread a thickened hurdle on whose top he strode a wild goat's shaggy skin and then bestowed his own couch on it that was soft and great ulysses joyed to see him so entreat his uncouth presence saying jove requite and all the immortal gods with that delight thou most desirous thy kind receipt of me friend to human hospitality eumaeus answered guest if one much worse arrived here than thyself it were a curse to my poor means to let a stranger taste contempt for fit food poor men and unplaced in free seats of their own are all from jove commended to our entertaining love but poor is the entertainment i can give yet free and loving of such men as live the lives of servants and are still in fear where young lords govern this is all the cheer they can afford a stranger 
there was one that used to manage this now desert throne to whom the gods deny return that showed his curious favour to me and bestowed possessions on me a most wished wife a house and portion and a servant's life fit for the gift a gracious king should give who still took pains himself and god made thrive his personal endeavour and to me his work the more increased in which you see i am now conversant and therefore much his hand hath helped me had heaven's will been such he might have here grown old but he is gone and would to god the whole succession of helen might go with him since for her so many men died whose fate did confer my liege to troy in agamemnon's grace to spoil her people and her turrets race this said his coat to him he straight did gird and to his thighs went that contained his herd from whence he took out two slew both and cut both fairly up a fire inflamed and put to spit the joints which roasted well he set with spit and all to him that he might eat from thence his food in all the singeing heat yet dredged it first with flour then filled his cup with good sweet wine sat then and cheered him up eat now my guest such lean swine as are meat for us poor swains the fat the wooers eat in whose minds no shame no remorse doth move though well they know the blessed gods do not love ungodly actions but respect the right and in the works of pious men delight but these are worse than impious for those that bow to injustice and profess them foes to other nations enter on their land and jupiter to show his punishing hand upon the invaded for their penance then gives favour to their foes though wicked men to make their prey on them who having freight their ships with spoil enough weigh anchor straight and each man to his house and yet even these the powerful fear of god's just vengeance sees even for that prize in which they so rejoice but these men knowing having heard the voice of god by some means that said death hath reft the ruler here will never suffer left the unjust wooing of his wife nor take her off an answer and their own roofs make their fit retreats but since unchecked they may they therefore will make still his goods their prey without all spare or end there is no day nor night sent out from god that ever they profane with one beast's blood or only two but more make spoil of and the wrongs they do in meat's excess to wine as well extend which as excessively their riots spend yet still leave store for sure his means were great and no hero that hath choicest seat upon the fruitful neighbour continent or in this isle itself so opulent was as ulysses no nor twenty such put all together did possess so much whose herds and flocks i'll tell to every head upon the continent he daily fed twelve herds of oxen no less flocks of sheep and as many herds of swine stalls large and steep and equal sorts of goats which tenants there and his own shepherds kept then fed he here eleven fair stalls of goats whose food hath yield in the extreme part of a neighbour field each stall his herdsman hath an honest swain yet every one must every day sustain the load of one beast the most fat and the best of all the stall fed to the wooer's feast and i for my part of the swine i keep with four more herdsmen every day help steep the wooer's appetites in blood of one the most select our choice can fall upon to this ulysses gave good ear and fed and drunk his wine and vexed and ravished his food for mere vexation seeds of ill his stomach sowed to hear his goods go still to glut of wooers but his dinner done and stomach fed to satisfaction he drunk a full bowl all of only wine and gave it to the guardian of his swine who took it and rejoiced to whom he said o friend who is it that so rich hath paid price for thy service whose commended power thou sayest to grace the grecian conqueror at ilion perished tell me it may fall i knew some such the great god knows and all the other deathless godheads if i can having travelled tell of such a man eumaeus answered father 
never one of all the strangers that have touched upon this coast with his life's news could ever yet of queen or loved son any credit get these travellers for clothes or for a meal at all adventures any lie will tell nor do they trade for truth not any man that saw the people ithacensian of all their sort and had the queen's supplies did ever tell her any news but lies she graciously receives them yet inquires of all she can and all in tears expires it is the accustomed law that women keep their husbands elsewhere dead at home to weep but do thou quickly father forge a tale some coat or cloak to keep thee warm withal perhaps some one may yield thee but for him vultures and dogs have torn from limb to limb his porous skin and forth his soul is fled his course at sea to fishes forfeited or on the shore lies hid in heaps of sand and there hath he his ebb his native strand with friends tears flowing but to me past all were tears created for i never shall find so humane a royal master more whatever sea i seek whatever shore nay to my father or my mother's love should i return by whom i breathe and move could i so much joy offer nor these eyes though my desires sustain extremities for their sad absence would so fain be blessed with sight of their lives in my native nest as with ulysses dead in whose last rest o friend my soul shall love him he's not here nor do i name him like a flatterer but as one thankful for his love and care to me a poor man in the rich so rare and be he past all shores where sun can shine i will invoke him as a soul divine o friend said he to say and to believe he cannot live doth too much license give to incredulity for not to speak at needy randon but my breath to break in sacred oath ulysses shall return and when his sight recomforts those that mourn in his own roofs then give me cloak and coat and garments worthy of a man of note before which though need urge me never so i'll not receive a thread but naked go no less i hate him than the gates of hell that poorness can force an untruth to tell let jove then heaven's chief god just witness bear and this thy hospitable table here together with unblamed ulysses house in which i find receipt so gracious what i affirm of him shall all be true this instant year thine eyes even here shall view thy lord ulysses nay ere this month's end returned full home he shall revenge extend to every one whose ever deed hath done wrong to his wife and his illustrious son o oh, father he replied i'll neither give thy news reward nor doth ulysses live but come enough of this let's drink and eat and never more his memory repeat it grieves my heart to be remembered thus by any one of one so glorious but stand your oath and your assertion strong and let ulysses come for whom i long for whom his wife for whom his aged sire for whom his son consumes his godlike fire whose chance i now must mourn and ever shall whom when the gods hath brought to be as tall as any upright plant and i had said he would amongst a court of men have swayed in councils and for form have been admired even with his father some god misinspired or man took from him his own equal mind and passed him for the pillion shore to find his long-lost father in return from whence the wooer's pride waylays his innocence that of divine arcesius all the race may fade to ithaca and not the grace of any name left to it but leave we his state however if surprised he be or if he scape and may saturnius's hand protect him safely to his native land do thou then father show your griefs and cause of your arrival here nor break the laws that truth prescribes you but relate your name and of what race you are your father's fame and native cities ship and men unfold that to this isle conveyed you since i hold your here arrival was not all by shore nor that your feet your aged person bore he answered him 
i'll tell thee all strictly true if time and food and wine enough accrue within your roof to us that freely we may sit and banquet let your business be discharged by others for when all is done i cannot easily while the year doth run his circle round run over all the woes beneath which by the course of the gods dispose my sad age labours first i'll tell you then from ample crete i fetch my native strain my father wealthy whose house many a life brought forth and bred besides by his true wife but me a bondmaid bore his concubine yet tendered was i as his lawful line by him of whose race i my life profess castor his name surnamed hylocides a man in four times by the cretian state for goods good children and his fortunate success in all acts of no mean esteem but death conferring fates have banished him to pluto's kingdom after whom his sons by lots divided his possessions and gave me passing little yet bestowed a house on me to which my virtues wooed a wife from rich men's roofs nor was born low nor last in fight though all nerves fail me now but i suppose that you by thus much seen know by the stubble what the corn hath been for past all doubt affliction past all mean hath brought my age on but in seasons past both mars and pallas have with boldness graced and fortitude my fortunes when i choose choice men for ambush pressed to have produced ill to mine enemies my too venturous spirit set never death before mine eyes for merit but far from first advance still still i struck dead with my lance whoever overtook my speed of foot such was i then for war but rustic actions ever fled me far and household thrift which breeds a famous race in oar-driven ships did i my pleasures place in battles light darts arrows sad things all and into others thoughts with horror fall but what god put into my mind to me i still esteemed as my felicity as men of several metals are addressed so several forms are in their souls impressed before the sons of greece set foot in troy nine times in chief i did command and joy of men and ships against our foreign foe and all i fitly wished succeeded so yet after this i much exploit achieved when straight my house in all possessions thrived yet after that i great and reverend grew amongst the cretians till the thunderer drew our forces out in his foe troy decrees a hateful service that dissolved the knees of many a soldier and to this was i and famous idomen enjoined to apply our ships and powers nor was there to be heard one reason for denial so preferred was the unreasonable people's rumour nine years we therefore fed the martial humour and in the tenth the peopling priam's town we sailed for home but god had quickly blown our fleet in pieces and to wretched me the counsellor jove did much mishap decree for only one month i had leave to enjoy my wife and children and my goods to employ but after this my mind for egypt stood when nine fair ships i rigged forth for the flood manned them with noble soldiers all things fit for such a voyage soon were won to it yet six days after stayed my friends in feast while i in banquets to the gods addressed much sacred matter for their sacrifice the seventh we boarded and the northern skies lent us a frank and passing prosperous gale for which we bore us free and easy sail as we had backed a full and frolic tide nor felt one ship misfortune for her pride but safe we sat our sailors and the wind consenting in our convoy when heaven shined in sacred radiance of the fifth fair day to sweetly watered egypt reached our way and there we anchored where i charged my men to stay aboard and watch dismissing then some scouts to get the hilltops and discover they to their own intemperance given over fell straight to forge the rich fields and thence enforce both wives and infants with the expense of both their bloods when straight the rumour flew up to the city which heard up they drew by day's first break and all the field was filled with foot and horse whose arms did all things gild 
and then the lightning-loving deity cast a foul flight on my soldiers nor stood fast one man of all about whom mischief stood and with his stern steel drew in streams the blood the greater part fed in their dissolute veins the rest were saved and made enthralled swains to the basest usages their bread and then even jove himself supplied my head with saving counsel though i wished to die and there in egypt with their slaughters lie so much grief seized me but jove made me yield dishelm my head take from my neck my shield hurl from my hand my lance and to the troop of horse the king led instantly made up embrace and kiss his knees whom pity won to give me safety and to make me shun the people's outrage that made in a main all jointly fired with thirst to see me slain he took me to his chariot weeping home himself with fear of jove's wrath overcome who yielding souls receives and takes most ill all such as well may save yet love to kill seven years i sojourned here and treasure gat in good abundance of the egyptian state for all would give but when the eighth year began a knowing fellow that would gnaw a man like to a vermin with his hellish brain and many an honest soul even quick had slain whose name was phoenix close accosted me and with insinuations such as he practised on others my consent he gained to go into phoenicia where remained his house and living and with him i lived a complete year but when were all arrived the months and days and that the year again was turning round and every season's rain renewed upon us we for libya went when still inventing crafts to circumvent he made pretext that i should only go and help convey his freight but thought not so for his intent was to have sold me there and made good gain for finding me a year yet him i followed though suspecting this for being aboard his ship i must be his of strong necessity she ran the flood driven with a northern gale right free and good amidst the full stream full on crete but then jove plotted death to him and all his men for put off quite from crete and so far gone that shore was lost and we set eye on none but all showed heaven and sea above our keel jove pointed right a cloud as black as hell beneath which all the sea hid and from whence jove thundered as his hand would never thence and thick into our ship he threw his flash that gainst a rock or flat her keel did dash with headlong rapture of the sulphur all her bulk did savour and her men let fall amidst the surges on which all lay tossed like seagulls round about her sides and lost and so god took all home return from them but jove himself though plunged in that extreme recovered me by thrusting on my hand the ship's long mast and that my life might stand a little more up i embraced it round and on the rude winds that did ruin sound nine days we hovered in the tenth black night a huge sea cast me on thesprotia's height where the hero phidon that was chief of all the thesprots gave my rack relief without the price of that redemption that phoenix fished for where the king's loved son came to me took me by the hand and led into his court my poor life surfeited with cold and labour and because my rack chanced on his father's shore he let not lack my plight or coat or cloak or anything might cherish heat in me and here the king said he received ulysses as his guest observed him friendlike and his course addressed home to his country showing there to me ulysses goods a very treasury of brass and gold and steel of curious frame and to the tenth succession of his name he laid up wealth enough to serve beside in that king's house so hugely amplified his treasure was but from his court the king affirmed him shipped for the dodonian spring to hear from out the high-haired oak of jove counsel from him for means to his remove to his loved country whence so many a year he had been absent if he should appear disguised or manifest and further swore in his mid-court at sacrifice before these very eyes that he had ready there both ship and soldiers to attend and bear him to his country 
but before it chanced that a thesprotian ship was to be launched for the much corn-renowned dulichian land in which the king gave to his men command to take and bring me under tender hand to king acastus but in ill design of my poor life did their desires combine so far forth as might ever keep me under in fortune's hands and tear my state in sunder and when the water-treader far away had left the land then plotted they the day of my long servitude and took from me both coat and cloak and all things that might be grace in my habit and in place put on these tattered rags which now you see upon my wretched bosom when heaven's light took sea they fetched the field-works of fair ithaca and in the armed ship with a well-wreathed cord they straightly bound me and did all disboard to shore to supper in contentious rout yet straight the gods themselves took from about my pressed limbs the bands with equal ease and i my head in rags wrapped took the seas descending by the smooth stern using then my hands for oars and made from these bad men long way in little time at last i fetched a goodly grove of oaks whose shore i reached and cast me prostrate on it when they knew my thus made scape about the shores they flew but soon not finding held it not their best to seek me further but returned to rest aboard their vessel me the gods lodged close conducting me into the safe repose a good man's stable yielded and thus fate this poor hour added to my living date o wretched of guests said he thy tale hath stirred my mind to much ruth both how thou hast erred and suffered hearing in such good parts shown but what thy changed relation would make known about ulysses i hold neither true nor will believe and what needst thou pursue a lie so rashly since he sure is so as i conceive for which my skill shall go the safe return my king lacks cannot be he is so envied of each deity so clear so cruelly for not in troy they gave him end nor let his corpse enjoy the hands of friends which well they might have done he managed arms to such perfection and should have had his sepulchre and all and all the greeks to grace his funeral and this had given a glory to his son through all time's future but his head is run unseen unhonoured into harpy's maws for my part i'll not meddle with the cause i live a separate life amongst my swine come at no town for any need of mine unless the circularly witted queen when any far come guest is to be seen that brings her news commands me bring a brawn about which all things being in question drawn that touch the king they sit and some are sad for his long absence some again are glad to waste his goods unreeked all talking still but as for me i nourished little will to inquire or question of him since the man that feigned himself that fled aetolian for slaughtering one through many regions strayed in my stall as his devisory stayed where well entreating him he told me then amongst the cretians with king idomen he saw ulysses at his ship's repair that had been brushed with an enraged air and that in summer or in autumn sure with all his brave friends and rich furniture he would be here and nothing so nor so but thou an old man taught with so much woe as thou hast suffered to be seasoned true and brought by his fate do not here pursue his gratulations with thy cunning lies thou canst not soak so through my faculties for i did never either honour thee or give thee love to bring these tales to me but in my fear of hospitable jove thou didst to this pass my affections move you stand exceeding much incredulous replied ulysses to have witnessed thus my word and oath yet yield no trust at all but make me now a covenant here and call the dreadful gods to witness that take seat in large olympus if your king's retreat prove made even hither you shall furnish me with cloak and coat and make my passage free for love dulichius if as fits my vow your king return not let your servants throw my old limbs headlong from some rock most high that other poor men may take fear to lie the herdsman that had gifts in him divine replied 
o guest how shall this fame of mine and honest virtue amongst men remain now and hereafter without worthy stain if i that led thee to my hovel here and made thee fitting hospitable cheer should after kill thee and thy loved mine force from thy bones or how should stand incline with any faith my will to importune jove in any prayer hereafter for his love come now tis supper's hour and instant haste my men will make home when our sweet repast we'll taste together this discourse they held in mutual kind when from a neighbour field his swine and swineherds came who in their coats enclosed their herds for sleep which mighty throats laid out in entering then the godlike swain his men enjoined thus bring me to be slain a chief swine female for my stranger guest when all together we will take our feast refreshing now our spirits that all day take pains in our swine's good who may therefore make for our pains with them all amends with one since others eat our labours and take none this said his sharp steel hewed down wood and they a passing fat swine hauled out of the sty of five years old which to the fire they put when first eumaeus from the front did cut the sacred hair and cast it in the fire then prayed to heaven for still before desire was served with food in their so rude abodes not the poor swineherd would forget the gods good souls they bore how bad soever were the habits their bodies parts did bear when all the deathless deities besought that wise ulysses might be safely brought home to his house then with a log of oak left lying by high lifting it a stroke he gave so deadly it made life expire then cut the rest her throat and all in fire they hid and singed her cut her up and then the master took the office from the men who on the altar did the parts impose that served for sacrifice beginning close about the belly thorough which he went and all the chief fat gathering gave it vent part dredged with flour into the sacred flame then cut they up the joints and roasted them drew all from spit and served in dishes all then rose eumaeus who was general in skill to guide each act his fit event and all in seven parts cut the first part went to service of the nymphs and mercury to whose names he did rites of piety and vows particular and all the rest he shared to every one but his loved guest he graced with all the chine and of that king to have his heart cheered set up every string which he observing said i would to jove eumaeus thou livest in his worthy love as great as mine that gives to such a guest as my poor self of all thy goods the best eumaeus answered eat unhappy wretch and to what here is at thy pleasure reach this i have this thou once thus god will give thus take away in us and all that live to his will's equal centre all things fall his mind he must have for he can do all thus having eat and to his wine descended before he served his own thirst he commended the first use of it in fit sacrifice as of his meat to all the deities and to the city racer's hand applied a second cup whose place was next his side massalius did distribute the meat to which charge was eumaeus solely set in absence of ulysses by the queen and old laertes and this man had been bought by eumaeus with his faculties employed then in the taphian merchandise but now to food opposed and ordered thus all fell desire sufficed massalius did take away for bed then next they were all thoroughly satisfied with complete cheer the night then came ill and no taper shined jove reigned her whole date the ever watery wind zephyr blew loud and laertiades approving kind eumaeus's carefulness for his whole good made far about a say to get some cast-off cassock lest he lay that rough night cold of him or any one of those his servants when he thus begun hear me eumaeus and my other friends i'll use a speech that to my glory tends since i have drunk wine past my usual guise strong wine commands the fool and moves the wise moves and impels him too to sing and dance and break in pleasant laughters and perchance prefer a speech too that were better in but when my spirits once to speak begin i shall not then dissemble 
would to heaven i were as young and had my forces driven as close together as when once our powers we led to ambush under the ilian towers where ithacus and menelaus were the two commanders when it pleased them there to take myself for third when to the town and lofty walls we led we couched close down all armed amidst the osiers and the reeds which oft times the overflowing river feeds the cold night came and the icy northern gale blew bleak upon us after which did fall a snow so cold it cut as in it beat a frozen water which was all concrete about our shields like crystal all made fain above our arms to clothe and clothe again and so we made good shift our shields beside clapped close upon our clothes to rest and hide from all discovery but i poor fool left my weeds with my men because so cool i thought it could not prove which thought my pride a little strengthened being loath to hide the goodly glittering garment i had on and so i followed with my shield alone and that brave weed but when the night near ended her course on earth and when the stars descended i jogged ulysses who lay passing near and spake to him that had a nimble ear assuring him that long i could not lie amongst the living for the fervency of that sharp night would kill me since as then my evil angel made me with my men leave all weeds but a fine one but i know tis vain to talk here wants all remedy now this said he bore that understanding part in his prompt spirit that still showed his art in fight and counsel saying in a word and that low whispered peace lest you afford some greek note of your softness no word more but made as if his stern austerity bore my plight no pity yet as still he lay his head reposing on his hand gave way to this invention hear me friends a dream that was of some celestial light a beam stood in my sleep before me prompting me with this fit notice we are far said he from our fleet let one go then and try if agamemnon will afford supply to what we now are strong this stirred a speed in thoas to the affair whose purple weed he left for haste which then i took and lay in quiet after till the dawn of day this shift ulysses made for one in need and would to heaven that youth such spirit did feed now in my nerves and that my joints were knitted with such a strength as made me then held fit to lead men with ulysses i should then seem worth a weed that fits a herdsman's men for two respects to gain a thankful friend and to a good man's need a good extend o father said eumaeus thou hast shown good cause for us to give thee good renown not using any word that was not freed from all least ill thou therefore shalt not need or coat or other thing that aptly may beseem a wretched suppliant for defray of this night's need but when her golden throne the morn ascends you must resume your own for here you must not dream of many weeds or any change at all we serve our needs as you do yours one back one coat but when ulysses loved son returns he then shall give you coat and cassock and bestow your person where your heart and soul is now this said he rose made near the fire his bed which all with goats and sheepskins he bespread all which ulysses with himself did line with whom besides he changed a gabardine thick-lined and soft which still he made his shift when he would dress him against the horrid drift of tempest when deep winter's season blows nor pleased it him to lie there with his sows but while ulysses slept there and close by the other yonkers he abroad would lie and therefore armed him which set cheerful fare before ulysses heart to see such care of his goods taken how far off soever his fate his person and his wealth should sever first then a sharp-edged sword he girt about his well-spread shoulders and to shelter out the sharp west wind that blew he put him on a thick line jacket and yet cast upon all that the large hide of a goat well fed a lance then he took with a keen steel head to be his keep off both against men and dogs and thus went he to rest with his male hogs that still abroad lay underneath a rock 
shield to the north wind's ever eager shock end of the fourteenth book the fifteenth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by phil schampf the fifteenth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument minerva to his native seat exhorts ulysses son's retreat in bed and waking he receives gifts of Atrides, and so leaves the Spartan court, and going aboard doth favorable way afford to Theoclymenus, that was the Argive augur and sought pass, fled for a slaughter he had done. Eumaeus tells Laertes' son how he became his father's man, being sold by the Phoenician for some agreed-on faculties, from forth the Syrian isle made prize. Telemachus, arrived at home, doth to Eumaeus's cottage come another argument omicron from sparta's strand makes safe access to his own land ulyssides in lacedaemon large and apt for dances athenian palace her access advances up to the great in soul ulysses seed suggesting his return now fit for deed she found both him and nestor's noble son in bed in front of that fair mansion nestorides surprised with pleasing sleep but on the watch ulysses son did keep sleep could not enter cares did so excite his soul through all the solitary night for his loved father to him near she said telemachus tis time that now were stayed thy foreign travels since thy goods are free for those proud men that all will eat from thee divide thy whole possessions and leave thy too late presence nothing to receive incite the shrill-voiced menelaus then to send thee to thy native seat again while thou mayest yet find in her honour strong thy blameless mother gainst thy father's wrong for both the father and the brothers too of thy loved mother will not suffer so extended any more her widow's bed but make her now her richest wooer wed eurymachus who chiefly may augment her gifts and make her jointure eminent and therefore haste thee lest in thy despite thy house stand empty of thy native right for well thou knowest what mind a woman bears the house of him whoever she endears herself in nuptials to she sees increased the issue of her first loved lord deceased forgotten quite and never thought on more in thy return then the recounted store thou findest reserved to thy most trusted maid commit in guard till heaven's powers have purveyed a wife in virtue and in beauty's grace of fit sort for thee to supply her place and this note more i'll give thee which repose in sure remembrance the best sort of those that woo thy mother watchful scouts address both in the straits of the ithacensian seas and dusty samos with intent to invade and take thy life ere thy return be made which yet i think will fail and some of them that waste thy fortunes taste of that extreme they plot for thee but keep off far from shore and day and night sail for a foreright blore whoever of the immortals that vow guard and scape to thy return will see prepared as soon as thou arrivest dismiss to town thy ship and men and first of all make down to him that keeps thy swine and doth conceive a tender care to see thee well survive there sleep and send him to the town to tell the chaste penelope that safe and well thou livest in his charge and that pylos's sands the place contained from whence thy person lands thus she to large olympus made assent when with his heel a little touch he lent to nestor's son whose sleep's sweet chains he loosed bade rise and see in chariot enclose their one-hoofed horse that they might straight be gone no such haste he replied night holds her throne and dims all way to course of chariot the morn will soon get up nor see forgot the gifts with haste that will i know be rich and put into our coach with gracious speech by lance famed menelaus not a guest shall touch at his house but shall store his breast with fit mind of an hospitable man to last as long as any daylight can his eyes recomfort in such gifts as he will proofs make of his hearty royalty 
he had no sooner said but up arose aurora that the golden hills repose and menelaus good at martial cries from helen's bed raised to his guest supplies his first appearance whose repair made known till ulysses loved son on his robe was thrown about his gracious body his cloak cast athwart his ample shoulders and in haste abroad he went and did the king accost atrides guarded with heaven's deified host grant now remission to my native right my mind now urging mine own house's sight nor will i stay said he thy person long since thy desires to go are grown so strong i should myself be angry to sustain the like detention urged by other men who loves a guest past mean past mean will hate the mean in all acts bears the best estate alike ill tis to thrust out such a guest as would not go as to detain the rest we should a guest love while he loves to stay and when he likes not give him loving way yet suffer so that we may gifts impose in coach to thee which ere our hands enclose thine eyes shall see lest else our loves may glose besides i'll cause our women to prepare what our house yields and merely so much fare as may suffice for health both well will do both for our honour and our profit too and serving strength with food you after may as much earth measure as will match the clay if you will turn your course from sea and go through greece and argos that myself may so keep kind way with thee i'll join horse and guide to our human cities nor ungratified will any one remit us some one thing will each present us that along may bring our pass with love and prove our virtues blazed a cauldron or a tripod richly brazed two mules a bowl of gold that hath his price heightened with emblems of some rare device the wise prince answered i would gladly go home to mine own and see that governed so that i may keep what i for certain hold not hazard that for only hoped for gold i left behind me none so always fit to give it guard as mine own trust with it besides in this broad course which you propose my father seeking i myself may lose when this the shrill-voiced menelaus heard he charged his queen and maids to see prepared breakfast of what the whole house held for best to him rose etionius from his rest whose dwelling was not far off from the court and his attendants his command did sort with kindling fires and furthering all the roast in act of whose charge no time he lost himself then to an odorous room descended whom megapenthe and his queen attended come to his treasury a two-eared cup he choosed of all and made his son bear up a silver bowl the queen then taking stand aside her chest where by her own fair hand lay vests of all hues wrought she took out one most large most artful chiefly fair and shone like to a star and lay of all the last then through the house with either's gifts they passed when to ulysses son atrides said telemachus since so entirely swayed thy thoughts are with thy vowed return now tendered may juno's thundering husband see it rendered perfect at all parts action answering thought of all the rich gifts in my treasure sought i give thee here the most in grace and best a bowl but silver yet the brims compressed with gold whose fabric his desert doth bring from vulcan's hand presented by the king and great hero of sidonia's state when at our parting he did consummate his whole housekeeping this do thou command this said he put the round bowl in his hand and then his strong son megapenthe placed the silver cup before him amply graced with work and lustre helen standing by and in her hand the robe her housewifery his name remembering said and i present love son this gift to thee the monument of so many loved helen's hands which at the knitting of thy nuptial bands present thy wife in mean space may it lie by thy loved mother but to me apply thy pleasure in it and thus take thy way to thy fair house and country's wished stay thus gave she to his hands the veil and he the acceptation authored joyfully which in the chariot's chest pisistratus placed with the rest and held miraculous the yellow-headed king then led them all to seats and thrones placed in his spacious hall 
the handmaid water brought and gave it stream from out a fair and golden ewer to them from whose hands to a silver cauldron fled the troubled wave a bright board then she spread on which another reverend dame set bread to which more servants store of victuals served at onus was the man that curved and megapenthe filled them all their wine all fed and drank till all felt care decline for those refreshings both the guests did go to horse and coach and forth the portico a little issued when the yellow king brought wine himself that with an offering to all the gods they might their journey take he stood before the gods and thus he spake farewell young princes to grave nestor's ear this salutation from my gratitude bear that i profess in all our ilian wars he stood a careful father to my cares to whom the wise ulyssides replied with all our utmost shall be signified jove kept atrides your right royal will and would to god i could as well fulfil mine own mind's gratitude for your free grace in telling to ulysses in the place of my return in what accomplished kind i have obtained the office of a friend at your deservings whose fair end you crowned with gifts so many and of such renown his wish that he might find in his retreat his father safe returned to so repeat the king's love to him was saluted thus an eagle rose and in her seers did truss a goose all white and huge a household one which men and women crying out upon pursued but she being near the guests her flight made on their right hand and kept still foreright before their horses which observed by them the spirits in all their minds took joys extreme which nestor's son thus questioned jove kept king yield your grave thoughts if this ostentful thing this eagle and this goose touch us or you he put to study and not knowing how to give fit answer helen took on her the ostent solution and did this prefer hear me and i will play the prophet's part as the immortals cast it in my heart and as i think will make the true sense known as this jove's bird from out the mountains flown where was her eyrie and whence rose her race trust up this goose that from the house did graze so shall ulysses coming from the wild of seas and sufferings reach unreconciled his native home where even this hour he is and on those house-fed wooers those wrongs of his will shortly wreak with all their miseries o oh, said telemachus if saturnian jove to my desires thy dear presage approve when i arrive i will perform to thee my daily vows as to a deity this said he used his scourge upon the horse that through the city freely made their course to field and all day made that first speed good but when the sun set and obscureness stood in each man's way they ended their access at ferris in the house of diocles son to orsilicus alpheus's seed who gave them guest rites and sleep's natural need they that night served there when aurora rose they joined their horse took coach and did dispose their course for pylos whose high city soon they reached nor would telemachus be won to nestor's house and therefore ordered thus his speech to nestor's son pisistratus how shall i win thy promise to a grace that i must ask of thee we both embrace the names of bedfellows and in that name will glory as an adjunct of our fame our father's friendship our own equal age and our joint travel may the more engage our mutual concord do not then assay my god-loved friend to lead me from my way to my near ship but take a course direct and leave me there lest the old sire's respect in his desire to love me hinder so my way for home that have such need to go this said nestorides held all discourse in his kind soul how best he might enforce both promise and performance which at last he vowed to venture and directly cast his horse about to fetch the ship and shore where come his friend's most lovely gifts he bore aboard the ship and in her hind-deck placed the veil that helen's curious hand had graced and menelaus's gold and said away nor let thy men in any least date stay but quite put off ere i get home and tell the old duke you are past for passing well i know his mind to exceed all force of any prayer that he will stay your course 
himself make hither all your course call back and when he hath you have no thought to rack him from his bounty and to let you part without a present but be vexed at heart with both our pleadings if we once put move the least repression of his fiery love thus took he coach his fair maned steeds scourged on along the pillion city and anon his father's court reached while ulysses son bade board and arm which with a thought was done his rowers set and he rich odours firing in his hind deck for his secure retiring to great athenia to his ship came flying a stranger and a prophet as relying on wished passage having newly slain a man at argos yet his race's vein flowed from melampus who in former date in pylos lived and had a huge estate but fled his country and the punishing hand of great souled neleus in a foreign land from that most famous mortal having held a world of riches nor could be compelled to render restitution in a year in mean space living as close prisoner in the court of philicus and for the sake of neleus's daughter mighty cares did take together with a grievous languor sent from grave erinus that did much torment his vexed conscience yet his life's expense he scaped and drave the loud-voiced oxen thence to breed sheep pylos bringing vengeance thus his foul demerit to great neleus and to his brother's house reduced his wife who yet from pylos did remove his life for feed horse argos where his fate set down a dwelling for him and in much renown made govern many argives where a spouse he took to him and built a famous house there he had borne to him antiphates and forceful mantius to the first of these was great oecleus born oecleus gat amphiaraeus that the popular state had all their health in whom even from his heart jove loved and phoebus in the whole desert of friendship held him yet not blessed so much that age's threshold he did ever touch but lost his life by female bribery yet two sons authored his posterity alcmion and renowned amphilicus mantius had issue of polyphidius and clytus but aurora ravished him for excellence of his admired limb and interested him amongst the gods his brother knew men's good and bad abodes the best of all men after the decease of him that perished in unnatural peace at spacious thebes apollo did inspire his knowing soul with a prophetic fire who angry with his father took his way to hyperesia where making stay he prophesied to all men and had there a son called theoclymenus who here came to telemachus and found aboard himself at sacrifice whom in a word he thus saluted o friend since i find even here at ship a sacrificing mind inform your actions by your sacrifice and by the worthy choice of deities to whom you offer by yourself and all these men that serve your course maritimal tell one that asks the truth nor give it glows both who and whence you are from what seed rose your royal person and what city's towers hold habitation to your parents powers he answered stranger the sure truth is this i am of ithaca my father is or was ulysses but austere death now takes his state from him whose event to know himself being long away i set forth thus with ship and soldiers theoclymenus as freely said and i to thee am fled from forth my country for a man struck dead by my unhappy hand who was with me of one self tribe and of his pedigree are many friends and brothers and the sway of the archive kindred reacheth far away from whom because i fear their spleen suborn blood and black fate against me being born to be a wanderer among foreign men make thy fair ship my rescue and sustain my life from slaughter thy deservings may perform that mercy and to them i pray nor will i bar said he thy will to make my means an equal ship thy aid but take with what we have here in all friendly use thy life from any violence that pursues thus took he in his lance and it extended aloft the hatches which himself ascended the prince took seat at stern and on his right hand set theoclymenus and gave command to all his men to arm and sea made fast amidst the hollow keel the beechen mast with able halsers hoist sail launch which soon he saw obeyed and then his ship did run a merry course 
blue-eyed minerva sent a foreright gale tumultuous vehement along the air that her ways utmost yield the ship might make and plough the brackish field then set the sun and night blacked all the ways the ship with jove's wind winged where the epian sways fetched fairest first then elis the divine and then for those isles made that seaward shine for form and sharpness like a lance's head about which lay the wooers ambushed on which he rushed to try if he could scape his plotted death or serve her treacherous rape and now return we to eumaeus's shed where at their food with others marshalled ulysses and his noble herdsmen sate to try if whose love's curious estate stood firm to his abode or felt it fade and so would take each best cause to persuade his guest to town ulysses thus contends hear me eumaeus and ye other friends next morn to town i covert to be gone to beg some other's alms not still charge one advise me well then and as well provide i may be fitted with an honest guide for through the streets since need will have it so i tread to find if any will bestow a dish or drink on me or a bit of bread till to ulysses house i may be led and there i'll tell all wise penelope news mixed with the wooer's pride and since they use to fare above the full their hands excite to some small feast from out their infinite for which i'll wait and play the serving man fairly enough command the most they can for i will tell thee note me well in here that if the will of heaven's messenger who to the works of men of any sort can grace infuse and glory nothing short am i of him that doth to most aspire in any service as to build a fire to cleave sere wood to roast or boil their meat to wait at board mix wine or know the neat or any work in which the poor called worst to serve the rich called best in fate are forced he angry with him said alas poor guest why did this counsel ever touch thy breast thou seek'st thy utter spoil beyond all doubt if thou givest venture on the wooer's route whose wrong and force affects the iron heaven their light delights are far from being given to such grave servitors youths richly tricked in coats or cassocks locks divinely slicked and looks most rapting ever have the gift to taste their crown cups and full trenchers shift their tables ever like their glasses shine loaded with bread with varied flesh and wine and thou go thither stay for here do none grudge at thy presence nor myself nor one of all i feed but when ulysses son again shall greet us he shall put thee on both coat and cassock and thy quick retreat set where thy heart and soul desire thy seat industrious ulysses gave reply i still much wish that heaven's chief deity love thee as i do that hast eased my mind of woes and wanderings never yet confined naught is more wretched in a human race than countries want and shift from place to place but for the baneful belly men take care beyond good counsel whosoever are in compass of the wants it undergoes by wanderings losses or dependent woes excuse me therefore if i erred at home which since thou wilt make here as overcome with thy command for stay i'll take on me cares appertaining to this place like thee does then ulysses sire and mother breathe both whom he left in the age next door to death or are they breathless and descended where the dark house is that never day doth clear laertes lives said he but every hour beseecheth jove to take from him the power that joins his life and limbs for with a moan that breeds a marvel he laments his son deprived by death and adds to that another of no less depth for that dead son's dead mother whom he a virgin wedded which the more makes him lament her loss and doth deplore yet more her miss because her womb the truer was to his brave son and his slaughter slew her which last love to her doth his life engage and makes him live an undigested age oh such a death she died as never may seize any one that here beholds the day that either is to any man a friend or can a woman kill in such a kind as long as she had being i would be a still inquirer since twas dear to me though death to her to hear his name when she heard of ulysses for i might be bold she brought me up and in her love did hold my life 
compared with long-veiled ctimini her youngest issue and in some small degree her daughter yet preferred a brave young dame and when of youth the dearly loved flame was lighted in us marriage did prefer the maid to samos whence was sent for her infinite riches when the queen bestowed a fair new suit new shoes and all and vowed me to the field but passing loath to part as loving me more than she loved her heart and these i want now but their business grows upon me daily which the gods impose to whom i hold all give account to them for i see none left to the diadem that may dispose all better so i drink and eat of what is here and whom i think worthy or reverend i have given to still these kinds of guest rites for the household ill which where the queen is riots takes her still from thought of these things nor is it delight to hear from her plight of or worker word the wooers spoil all but yet my men will board her sorrows often with discourse of all eating and drinking of the festival that there is kept and after bring to field such things as servants make their pleasures yield o me eumaeus said laertes son hast thou then erred so of a little one like me from friends and country pray thee say and say a truth doth vast destruction lay her hand upon the wide wayed seat of men where dwelt thy sire and reverend mother then that thou art spared there or else set alone in guard of beeves or sheep set the enemy on surprised and shipped transferred and sold thee here he that bought thee paid well yet bought not dear since thou inquirest of that my guest said he here and be silent and mean space sit free in use of these cups to thy most delights unspeakable in length now are the nights those that affect sleep yet to sleep have leave those that affect to hear their hearers give but sleep not ere your hour much sleep doth grieve whoever lists to sleep away to bed together with the morning raise his head together with his fellows break his fast and then his lord's herd drive to their repast we too still in our tabernacle here drinking and eating will our bosoms cheer with memories and tales of our annoys betwixt his sorrows every human joys he most who most hath felt and furthest erred and now thy will to act shall be preferred there is an isle above ortygia if thou hast heard they call it syria where once a day the sun moves backward still tis not so great as good for it doth fill the fields with oxen fills them still with sheep fills roofs with wine and makes all corn there cheap no dearth comes ever there nor no disease that doth with hate us wretched mortals seize but when men's varied nations dwelling there in any city entered the aged year the silver bow-bearer the sun and she that bears as much renown for archery stoop with their painless shafts and strike them dead as one would sleep and never keep the bed in this isle stand two cities betwixt whom all things that of the soil's fertility come in two parts are divided and both these my father ruled Ctesius Ormonides, a man like the immortals with these states the cross-biting phoenicians trafficked rates of infinite merchandise in ships brought there in which they then were held exempt from peer there dwelt within my father's house a dame born a phoenician skilful in the frame of noble housewiferies right tall and fair her the phoenician great wench netlayer with sweet words circumvented as she was washing her linen to his amorous pass he brought her first shored from his ship to her to whom he did his whole life's love prefer which of these breast exposing dames the hearts deceives though fashioned of right honest parts he asked her after what she was and whence she passing presently the excellence told of her father's turrets and that she might boast herself sprung from the progeny of the rich sidons and the daughter was of the much year revenued arabus but that the taphian pirates made her prize as she returned from her field housewiferies transferred her hither and at that man's house where now she lived for value precious sold her to the owner he that stole her love bade her again to her birth seat remove to see the fair roofs of her friends again who still held state and did the port maintain herself reported 
she said be it so so you and all that in your ship shall row swear to return me in all safety hence all swore the oath passed with every consequence she bade be silent now and not a word do you or any of your friends afford meeting me afterward in any way or at the washing fount lest some display be made and told the old man and he then kept me straight bound to you and to your men the utter ruin plotting of your lives keep in firm thought then every word that strives for dangerous utterance haste your ship's full freight of what you traffic for and let me straight know by some sent friend she hath all in hold and with myself i'll bring thence all the gold i can by all means finger and beside i'll do my best to see your freight supplied with some well-weighing burthen of mine own for i can bring up in house a great man's son as crafty as myself who will with me run every way along and i will be his leader till your ship hath made him sure he will an infinite great price procure transfer him to what languaged men ye may this said she gat her home and there made stay a whole year with us goods of great avail their ship enriching which now fit for sale they sent a messenger to inform the dame and to my father's house a fellow came full of phoenician craft that to be sold a tablet brought the body all of gold the verge all amber this had ocular view both by my honoured mother and the crew of her housemaids handled and the price beat asked and promised and while this device lay thus upon the forge this jeweller made privy signs by winks and wiles to her that was his object which she took and he his sign seeing noted hied to ship when she my hand still taking as she used to do to walk abroad with her conveyed me so abroad with her and in the portico found cups with tasted viands which the guests that used to flock about my father's feasts had left they gone some to the council court some to hear news amongst the talking sort her theft three bowls into her lap conveyed and forth she went nor was my wit so stayed to stay her or myself the sun went down and shadows round about the world were flown when we came to the haven in which did ride the swift phoenician ship whose fair broadside they boarded straight took us up and all went along the moist waves when saturnius sent six days we day and night sailed but when jove put up the seventh day she that shafts doth love shot dead the woman who into the pump like to a dop chick died and gave a thump in her sad settling forth they cast her then to serve the fish and sea calves no more men but i was left there with a heavy heart when wind and water grave them quit apart their own course and on ithaca they fell and there poor me did to laertes sell and thus these eyes the sight of this isle proved eumaeus he replied thou much hast moved the mind in me with all things thou hast said and all the sufferance on thy bosom laid but truly to thy ill hath jove joined good that one whose veins are served with human blood hath bought thy service that gives competence of food wine cloth to thee and sure the expense of thy life's date here is of good desert whose labours not to thee alone impart sufficient food and housing but to me where i through many a heaped humanity have hither erred where though like thee not sold nor stayed like thee yet nor not needful hold this mutual speech they used nor had they slept much time before the much near morning leapt to her fair throne and now struck sail the men that served telemachus arrived just then near his loved shore where now they stooped the mast made to the port with oars and anchor cast made fast the ship and then ashore they went dressed supper filled wine when their appetite spent telemachus commanded they should yield the ship to the owner while himself at field would see his shepherds when light drew to end he would his gifts see and to town descend and in the morning at a feast bestow rewards for all their pains and whither now said theoclymenus my loved son shall i address myself whose mansion of all men in this rough-hewn isle shall i direct my way to or go readily to thy house and thy mother 
he replied another time i'll see you satisfied with my house entertainment but as now you should encounter none that could bestow your fit entreaty and which less grace were you could not see my mother i not there for she's no frequent object but a part keeps from her wooers wooed with her desert up in her chamber at her housewifery but i'll name one to whom you shall apply direct repair and that's eurymachus renowned descent to wise polybus a man whom the ithacensians look on now as on a god since he of all that woo is far superior man and likest far to wed my mother and as circular be in that honour as ulysses was but heaven house jove knows the yet hidden pass of her disposure and on them he may a blacker sight bring than her nuptial day as this he uttered on his right hand flew a saker sacred to the god of view that in his talons trussed and plumed a dove the feathers round the ship did rove and on telemachus fell whom the augur then took fast by the hand withdrew him from his men and said telemachus this hawk is sent from god i knew it for a sure ostent when first i saw it be you well assured that will no war be by heaven endured to rule in ithaca above your race but your powers ever fill the regal place i wish to heaven said he thy word might stand thou then should soon acknowledge from my hand such gifts and friendship as would make thee guest met and saluted as no less than blessed this said he called piraeus clytus's son his true associate saying thou hast done of all my followers to the pillion shore my will in chief in other things once more be chiefly good to me take to thy house this loved stranger and be studious to embrace and greet him with thy greatest fare till i myself come and take off thy care the famous for his lance said if your stay take time for life here this man's care all lay on my performance nor what fits a guest shall any penury withhold his feast thus took he ship bade them board and away they boarded sat but did their labour stay till he had decked his feet and reached his lance they to the city he did straight advance up to his sties where swine lay for him store by whose side did his honest swineherd snore till his short cares his longest nights had ended and nothing worse to both his lords intended End of the fifteenth book. The sixteenth book of the Odysseys of Homer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Sixteenth Book of the Odysseys of Homer, translated by George Chapman. The Argument The prince at field, he sends to town Eumaeus, to make truly known his safe return. By Pallas's will, Telemachus is given the skill to know his father. Those that lay in ambush, to prevent the way of young Ulysses for home, retire, with anger overcome. Another Argument Pi to his most dear ulysses shows the wise son here his father knows ulysses and divine eumaeus rose soon as the morning could her eyes unclose made fire break fast and to their pastures send the gathered herds on whom their swains attend the self-tired barking dogs all fond upon nor barked at first sight of ulysses son the whinings of their fawnings yet did greet ulysses ears and sounds of certain feet who thus bespake eumaeus sure some friend or one well known comes that the mastiffs spend their mouths no louder only some one near they whine and leap about whose feet i hear each word of this speech was not spent before his son stood in the entry of the door out rushed amazed eumaeus and let go the cup to earth that he had laboured so cleansed for the neat wine did the prince surprise kissed his fair forehead both his lovely eyes both his white hands and tender tears distilled there breathed no kind soul father that was filled less with his son's embraces that had lived ten years in far-off earth now new retrieved his only child too gotten in his age 
and for whose absence he felt the rage of griefs upon him than for this divined so much for form was this divine for mind who kissed him through who grew about him kissing as fresh from death's gate whom so long time missing he wept for joy and said thou yet art come sweet light sweet sunrise to thy cloudy home oh never i looked when once shipped away for pylos's shore to see thy turning day come enter loved son let me feast my heart with thy sweet sight new come so far apart nor when you lived at home would you walk down often enough here but stayed still at town it pleased you then to cast such forehand view about your house on that most damned crew it shall be so then friend said he but now i come to glad mine eyes with thee and know if still my mother in her house remain or if some wooer hath aspired to gain of her in nuptials for ulysses bed by this lies all with spider's cobweb spread in penury of him that should supply it she still said he holds her most constant quiet aloft thine own house for the bed's respect but for her lord's sad loss sad nights and days obscure her beauties and corrupt their rays this said eumaeus took his brazen spear and in he went when being entered near within the stony threshold from his seat his father rose to him who would not let the old man remove but drew him back and pressed with earnest terms his sitting saying guest take here your seat again we soon shall get within our house here some other seat here's one will fetch it this said down again his father sat and to his son his swain strewed fair green osiers and imposed thereon a good soft sheepskin which made him a throne then he opposed to them his last left roast and in a wicker basket bread engrossed filled luscious wine and then took opposite seat to the divine ulysses when the meat set there before them all fell to and eat when they had fed the prince said pray thee say whence comes this guest what seamen gave him way to this our isle i hope these feet of his could walk no water who boasts he he is i'll tell all truly son from ample crete he boasts himself and says his erring feet have many cities trod and god was he whose finger wrought in his infirmity but to my cottage the last scape of his was from a thesprot's ship whate'er he is i'll give him you do what you please his vaunt is that he is at most a suppliant eumaeus said the prince to tell me this you have afflicted my weak faculties for how shall i receive him to my house with any safety that suspicious of my young forces should i be assayed with any sudden violence may want aid to shield myself besides if i go home my mother is with two doubts overcome if she shall stay with me and take fit care for all such guests as there seek gustive fare her husband's bed respecting and her fame amongst the people or her blood may frame a liking to some wooer such as best may bed her in his house not giving least and thus i am unsure of all means free to use a guest there fit for his degree but being thy guest i'll be his supply for all weeds such as mere necessity shall more than furnish fit him with a sword and set him where his heart would have been shored or if so pleased receive him in thy shed i'll send thee clothes i vow and all the bread his wish would eat that to thy men and thee he be no burthen but that i should be his mean to my house where a company of wrong professing wooers wildly live i will in no sort author lest they give foul use to him and me as gravely grieve for what great act can any one achieve against a multitude although his mind retain a courage of the greatest kind for all minds have not force in one degree ulysses answered o friend since tis free for any man to change fit words with thee i'll freely speak methinks a wolfish power my heart puts on to tear and to devour to hear your affirmation that in spite of what may fall on you made opposite being one of your proportion birth and age these wooers should in such injustice rage what should the cause be do you wilfully endure their spoil 
or hath your empery been such amongst your people that all gather in troop and one voice which even god doth father and bow your hate so that they suffer them or blame your kinsfolk's faiths before the extreme of your first stroke hath tried them whom a man when strifes to blows rise trusts though battle ran in huge and high waves would to heaven my spirit such youth breathed as the man that must inherit yet never touched ulysses or that he but wandering this way would but come and see what my age could achieve and there is fate for hope yet left that he may recreate his eyes with such an object this my head should any stranger strike off if stark dead i struck not all the house in open force entering with challenge if their great concourse did overlay me being a man alone which you urge for yourself be you that one i rather in mine own house wish to die one death for all than so indecently see ever more deeds worse than death applied jess wronged with vile words and blow-giving pride the women servants dragged in filthy kind about the fair house and in corners blind made serve the rapes of ruffians food devoured idly and rudely wine exhaust and poured through throats profane and all about a deed that's ever wooing and will never speed i tell you guest most truly said his son i do not think that all my people run one hateful course against me nor accuse kinsfolks that i in strifes of weight might use but jove will have it so our race alone as if made singular to one and one his hand confining only to the king jove bred arcesias did laertes spring only to old laertes did descend ulysses only to ulysses end am i the adjunct whom he left so young that from me to him never comfort sprung and to all these now for their race arise up in their house a brood of enemies as many as in these isles bow men's knees samos dulichius and the rich in trees zacynthus or in this rough isle's command so many suitors for the nuptials stand that ask my mother and mean space prefer their lust to all spoil that dishonour her nor doth she though she loathes deny their suits nor they denials take though taste their fruits but all this time the state of all things there their throats devour and i must shortly bear a part in all and yet the periods of these designs lie in the knees of gods of all loves then eumaeus make quick way to wise penelope and to her say my safe return from pylos and alone return thou hither having made it known nor let besides my mother any ear partake thy message since a number bear my safe return displeasure he replied i know and comprehend you you divide your mind with one that understands you well but all in one yet may i not reveal to the old hard-fated arcesiades your safe return who though his whole distress felt for ulysses did not yet so grieve but with his household he had will to live and serve his appetite with wine and food surveyed his husbandry and did his blood some comforts fitting life but since you took your ship for pylos he would never brook or wine or food they say nor cast an eye on any labour but sits weeping by and sighing out his sorrows ceaseless moans wasting his body turned all skin and bones more sad news still said he yet mourn he still for if the rule of all men's works be will and his will his way goes mine stands inclined to attend the home turn of my nearer kind do then what i enjoin which given effect ere nor to feel to him but turn direct entreating first my mother with most speed and all the secrecy that now serves need to send this way their storehouse guardian and she shall tell all to the aged man he took his shoes up put them on and went nor was his absence hid from jove's descent divine minerva who took straight to view a goodly woman's shape that all works knew and standing in the entry did prefer her sight to ulysses but though meeting her his son telemachus nor saw nor knew the gods clear presences are known to few yet with ulysses even the dogs did see and would not bark but whining lovingly fled to the stall's far side 
when she her eyne moved to ulysses he knew her design and left the house passed the great sheepcote's wall and stood before her she bade utter all now to his son nor keep the lease unloathed that all the wooers death being now disposed they might approach the town affirming she not long would fail to assist to victory this said she laid her golden rod on him and with his late worn weeds graced every limb his body straightened and his youth instilled his fresh blood called up every wrinkle filled about his broken eyes and on his chin the brown hair spread when his whole trim wrought in she issued and he entered to his son who stood amazed and thought some god had done his house that honour turned away his eyes and said now guest you grace another guise that suits your late show other weeds you wear and other person of the starry sphere you certainly present some deathless god be pleased that to your here vouchsafed abode we may give sacred rites and offer gold to do us favour he replied i hold no deified state why put you thus on me a god's resemblance i am only he that bears thy father's name for whose love's sake thy youth so grieves whose absence makes thee take such wrongs of men thus kissed he him nor could forbear those tears that in such mighty hold he held before still held still issuing ever and now the shores once broke the spring-tide never forbore earth from the cheeks he kissed his son by all these violent arguments not one to credit him his father did deny his kind assumpt and said some deity feigned that joy's cause to make him grieve the more affirming that no man whoever wore the garment of mortality could take by any utmost power his soul could make such change into it since at so much will not jove himself could both remove and fill old age with youth and youth with age so spoil in such an instant you wore all the soil of age but now and were old but now you bear that young grace that the gods endow their heaven-born forms withal his father said telemachus admire nor stand dismayed but know thy solid father since within he answers all parts that adorn his skin there shall no more ulysses come here i am the man that now this twentieth year still under sufferance of a world of ill my country earth recover tis the will the prey professor pallas puts in act who put me thus together thus distract in aged pieces as even now you saw this youth now rendering tis within the law of her free power sometimes to show me poor sometimes again thus amply to restore my youth and ornaments she still would please the gods can raise and throw men down with ease this said he sat when his telemachus poured himself about him tears on tears he showered and to desire of moan increased the cloud both wept and howled and laid out shrieks more loud than o'er the bird bone breaking eagle rears or brood kind vulture with the crooked sears when rustic hands their tender iries draw before they give their wings their full plumed law but miserably poured they from beneath their lids their tears while both their breasts did breathe as frequent cries and to their fervent moan the light had left the skies if first the sun their dumb moans had not vented with demand what ship it was that gave the natural land to his blessed feet he then did likewise lay hand on his passion and gave these words way i'll tell thee truth my son the men that bear much fame for shipping my reducers were to long-wished ithaca who each man else that greets their shore give pass to where he dwells the phaecensian peers in one night's date while i slept fast fetched the ithacensian state graced me with wealthy gifts brass store of gold and robes fair wrought all which have secret hold in caves that by the gods advice i choosed and now minerva's admonitions used for this retreat that we might here dispose in close discourse the slaughters of our foes recount the number of the wooers then and let me know what name they hold with men that my mind may cast over their estates a curious measure and confer the rates of our two powers and theirs to try if we alone may propagate to victory our bold encounters of them all or prove the kind assistance of some other's love 
o oh, father he replied i oft have heard your counsels and your force of hand preferred to mighty glory but your speeches now your venturous mind exceedingly mighty show even to amaze they move me for in right of no fit counsel should be brought to fight two men gainst the able faction of a throng no one two no one ten no twice ten strong these wooers are but more by much for know that from dulichius there are fifty-two all choice young men and every one of these six men attend from samos cross the seas twice twelve young gallants from zacynthus came twice ten of ithaca the best of name twice six of all which all the state they take a sacred poet and a herald make their delicacies too of special sort and skill of banquets serve in all this port if we shall dare to encounter all thrust up in one strong roof have great care lest the cup your great mind thirst exceeding bitter taste and your retreat commend not to your haste your great attempt but make you say you buy their pride's revenges at a price too high and therefore if you could twere well you thought of some assistant be your spirit wrought in such a man's election as may lend his succours freely and express a friend his father answered let me ask of thee hear me consider then answer me think'st thou if pallas and the king of skies we had to friend would their sufficiencies make strong our part or that some other yet my thoughts must work for these said he are set aloft the clouds and are found aids indeed as powers not only that these men exceed but bear of all men else the high command and hold of gods an overruling hand well then said he not these shall sever long their force and ours in fights assured and strong and then twixt us and them shall mars prefer his strength to stand our great distinguisher when in mine own roofs i am forced to blows but when the day shall first her fires disclose go thou for home and troop up with the wooers thy will with theirs joined power with their rude powers and after shall the herdsman guide to town my steps my person wholly overgrown with all the appearance of a poor old swain heavy and wretched if their high disdain of my vile presence make them my desert affect their contumelies let thy loved heart beat in fixed confines of thy bosom still and see me suffer patient of their ill i though they drag me by the heels about mine own free earth and after hurl me out do thou still suffer nay though with their darts they beat and bruise me bear but these foul parts persuade them to forbear and by their names call all with kind words bidding for their shames their pleasures cease if yet they yield not way there breaks the first light of their fatal day in mean space mark this when the chiefly wise minerva prompts me i'll inform thine eyes with some given sign and then all the arms that are aloft thy roof in some near room prepare for speediest use if those brave men inquire thy end in all still rake up all thy fire in fair cool words and say i bring them down to scour the smoke off being so overgrown that one would think all fumes that ever were breathed since ulysses loss reflected here these are not like the arms he left behind in way for troy besides jove prompts my mind in their remove apart thus with this thought that if in height of wine there should be wrought some harsh contention twixt you this apt mean to mutual bloodshed may be taken clean from out your reach and all the spoil prevented of present feast perhaps even then presented my mother's nuptials to your long kind vows steel itself ready draws a man to blows thus make their thoughts secure to us alone two swords two darts two shields left which see done within our readiest reach that at our will we may resume and charge and all their skill pallas and jove that all just counsels breathe may darken with secureness to their death and let me charge thee now as thou art mine and as thy veins mine own true blood combine let after this none know ulysses near not any one of all the household there not here the herdsman not laertes be made privy not herself penelope but only let thyself and me work out the woman's thoughts of all things born about the wooers hearts 
and then thy men approve to know who honours who with reverence love are well weighed memories and who is one to fail thy fit right though my only son you teach said he so punctually now as i knew nothing nor were sprung from you i hope hereafter you shall better know what soul i bear and that it doth not let the least loose motion pass his natural seat but this course you propose will prove i fear small profit to us and could wish your care would weigh it better as too far about for time will ask much to the sifting out of each man's disposition by his deeds and in the meantime every wooer feeds beyond satiety nor knows how to spare the women yet since they more easy are for our inquiry i would wish you try who write your state who do it injury the men i would omit and these things make your labours after but to undertake the wooer's war i wish you utmost speed especially if you could cheer the deed with some ostent from jove thus as the sire consented to the son did here expire their mutual speech and now the ship was come that brought the young prince and his soldiers home the deep haven reached they drew the ship ashore took all their arms out and the rich gifts bore to clytus's house but to ulysses court they sent a herald first to make report to wise penelope that safe at field her son was left yet since the ship would yield most haste to her he sent that first and them to comfort with his utmost the extreme he knew she suffered at the court now met the herald and the herdsman to repeat one message to the queen both whom arrived within the gates both to the foremost strived in that good news the herald he for haste among the maids bestowed it thinking place the queen amongst them now said he o queen your loved son is arrived and then was seen the queen herself to whom the herdsman told all that telemachus enjoined he should all which discharged his steps he back bestows and left both court and city for his sows the wooers then grew sad soul vexed and all made forth the court when by the mighty wall they took their several seats before the gates to whom eurymachus initiates their uttered grievance oh said he my friends a work right great begun as proudly ends we said telemachus should never make his voyage good nor this shore ever take for his return's receipt and yet we fail and he performs it come let's man assail the best in our election and bestow such soldiers in her as can swiftest row to tell our friends that way lay his retreat tis safe to perform and make them quickly get their ship for ithaca this was not said before amphinomus in port displayed the ship arrived her sails then under stroke and oars resumed when laughing thus he spoke move no messenger these men are come some god hath either told his turning home or they themselves have seen his ship gone by had her in chase and lost her instantly they rose and went to port found drawn to land the ship the soldiers taking arms in hand the wooers themselves to council went in throng and not a man besides or old or young let sit amongst them then eupytheus's son antinous said see what the gods have done they only have delivered from our ill the men we waylaid every windy hill hath been their watch-tower where by turns they stood continual sentinel and we made good our work as well for sun once set we never slept wink ashore all night but made sail ever this way and that even till the morning kept her sacred station so to intercept and take his life for whom our ambush lay and yet hath god to his return given way but let us prosecute with counsels here his necessary death nor anywhere let rest his safety for if he survive our sails will never in wished havens arrive since he is wise hath soul and counsel too to work the people who will never do our faction favour what we then intend against his person give we present end before he call a council which believe his spirit will haste and point where it doth grieve stand up amongst them all and urge his death decreed amongst us which complaint will breathe the fire about their spleens and blow no praise on our ill labours lest they therefore raise power to exile us from our native earth and force our live societies to the birth of foreign countries 
let our speeds prevent his coming home to this austere complaint at field and far from town or in some way of narrow passage with his latest day shown to his forward youth his goods and lands left to the free division of our hands the movables made all his mother's dower and his whoever fate affords the power to celebrate with her sweet hymen's rites or if this please not but your appetite stand to his safety and to give him seat in his whole birthright let us look to eat at his cost never more but every man haste to his home and wed with whom he can at home and there lay first about for dower and then the woman give his second power of nuptial liking and for last apply his purpose with most gifts and destiny this silence caused whose breach at last begun Amphinomus, the much renowned son of nisus surnamed aretiades who from dulichius full of flowery leaves led all the wooers and in chief did please the queen with his discourse because it grew from roots of those good minds that did endue his goodly person who exceeding wise used this speech friends i never will advise the prince's death for tis a damned thing to put to death the issue of a king first therefore let us examine what applause the gods will give it if the equal laws of jove approve it i myself will be the man shall kill him and this company exhort to that mind if the gods remain adverse and hate it i advise refrain this said amphinomus and pleased them all when all arose and in ulysses hall took seat again then to the queen was come the wooer's plot to kill her son at home since their abroad design had missed success the herald medon who the whole address knew of their counsels making the report the goddess of her sex with her fair sort of lovely women at the large hall's door her bright cheeks clouded with a veil she wore stood and directed to antinous her sharp reproof which she digested thus antinous composed of injury plotter of mischief though reports that fly amongst our ithacensian people say that thou of all that glory in their sway art best in words and counsels thou art not so fond busy fellow why plottest thou the woe and slaughter of my son and dost not fear the precedence of suppliants when the ear of jove stoops to them tis unjust to do slaughter for slaughter or pay woe for woe mischief for kindness death for life sought then is an injustice to be loathed of men serves not thy knowledge to remember when thy father fled to us who moved to wrath against the taphian thieves pursued with scathe the guiltless thesprots in whose people's fear pursuing him for reek he landed here they after him professing both their prize of all his chiefly valued faculties and more prized life of all whose bloodiest ends ulysses curbed them though they were his friends yet thou like one no law will allow the least true honour eatst his house up now that fed thy father wooest for love his wife whom thus thou griev'st and seek'st her sole son's life cease i command thee and command the rest to see all thought of these foul fashions ceased eurymachus replied be confident thou all of wit made the most famed descent of king acarius free thy spirits of fear there lives not any one nor shall live here now nor hereafter while my life gives heat and light to me on earth that dares entreat with any ill touch thy well-loved son but here i vow and here will see it done his life shall stain my lance if on his knees the city racer laertiades hath made me sit put in my hands his food held his red wine to me shall the blood of his telemachus on my hand lay the least pollution that my life can stay no i have ever charged him not to fear death's threat from any and for that most dear love of his father he shall ever be much the most loved of all that live to me who kills a guiltless man from man may fly from god his searches all escapes deny thus cheered his words but his affection still feared not to cherish foul intent to kill even him whose life to all lives he preferred the queen went up and to her love appeared her lord so freshly that she wept till sleep by pallas forced on her her eyes did steep in his sweet humour when the even was come the godlike herdsman reached the whole way home ulysses and his son for supper dressed a year-old swine and ere their host and guest had got their presents 
Pallas had put by with her fair rod Ulysses' royalty, and rendered him an aged man again with all his vile integuments, lest his swain should know him in his trim and tell his queen in these deep secrets not being deeply seen. He seen to him the prince these words did use. Welcome, divine Eumaeus. Now what news employs the city? Are the wooers come back from their scout dismayed, or here at home will they again attempt me? He replied, These touch not my care. I was satisfied to do with most speed what I went to do, my message done, return. And yet not so came my news first. A herald met with there, forestalled my tale, and told how safe you were besides which merely necessary thing what in my way chanced i may overbring being what i know and witnessed with mine eyes where the hermian sepulchre doth rise above the city i beheld take port a ship and in her many a man of sort her freight was shields and lances and methought they were the wooers but of knowledge naught can therein tell you the prince smiled and knew they were the wooers casting secret view upon his father but what they intended fled far the herdsmen whose swain's labours ended they dressed the supper which past want was eat when all desire sufficed of wine and meat of other human wants they took supplies at sleep soft hand who sweetly closed their eyes end of the sixteenth book The seventeenth book of the Odysseys of Homer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The seventeenth book of the Odysseys of Homer. Translated by George Chapman. The Argument. Telemachus, returned to town, makes to his curious mother known in part his travels after whom ulysses to the court doth come in good eumaeus's guide and pressed to witness of the wooer's feast whom though twice ten years did bestow in far-off parts his dog doth know another argument row ulysses shows through all disguise whom his dog knows who knowing dies but when the heir's rosy birth the morn arose Telemachus did for the town dispose his early steps, and took to his command his fair long lance, well sorting with his hand, thus parting with Eumaeus. Now, my friend, I must a town, lest too far I extend my mother's moan for me, who, till her eyes mine own eyes witness, varies tears and cries through all extremes. Do then this charge of mine, and guide to town this hapless guest of thine, to beg elsewhere his further festival. Give they that please, I cannot give to all. Mine own wants take up for myself my pain. If it incense him, he the worst shall gain. The lovely truth I love, and must be plain. Alas, friend, said his father, nor do I desire at all your further charity. "'Tis better beg in cities than in fields, "'and take the worst a beggar's fortune yields. "'Nor am I apt to stay in swine-sties more. "'However, ever the great chief before the poor ranks "'must to every step obey. "'But go, your man in my command shall sway, "'anon yet too, by favour, "'when your fires have comforted the cold heat age expires, "'and when the sun's flame hath besides corrected "'the early air abroad, not being protected by these my bare weeds from the morning's frost which if so much ground is to be engrossed by my poor feet as you report may give too violent a charge to the heat by which i live this said his son went on with sprightly pace and to the wars studied little grace arrived at home he gave his javelin stay against a lofty pillar and bold way made further in when having so far gone that he transcended the fair porch of stone the first by far that gave his entry eye was nurse eurycleia who the embroidery of stools there set was giving cushions fair who ran upon him and a rapt repair shed tears of joy about him gathered round the other maids his head and shoulders crowned with kisses and embraces from above the queen herself came like the queen of love or bright diana 
cast about her son her kind embraces with effusion of loving tears kissed both his lovely eyes his cheeks and forehead and gave all supplies with this entreaty welcome sweetest light i never had conceit to set quick sight on thee thus soon when thy loved father's fame as far as pylos did thy spirit inflame in that search ventured all unknown to me o oh, say by what power camest thou now to be mine eyes dear object he returned reply move me not now when you my scape descry from imminent death to think me fresh and trapped the feared wound rubbing felt before i scaped double not needless passion on a heart whose joy so green is and so apt to invert but pure weeds putting on ascend and take your women with you that ye all may make vows of full hecatombs in sacred fire to all the godheads if their only sire vouchsafe revenge of guest rights wronged which he is to protect as being their deity my way shall be directed to the hall of common concourse that i thence may call a stranger who from off the pillion shore came friendly with me whom i sent before with all my soldiers but in chief did charge piraeus with him wishing him to enlarge his love to him at home in best affair and utmost honours till mine own repair her son thus spoken his words could not bear the wings too easily through her either ear but putting pure weeds on made vows entire of perfect hecatombs and sacred fire to all the deities if their only sire vouchsafed revenge of guest rights wronged which he was to protect as being their deity her son left house in his fair hand his lance his dogs attending and on every glance his looks cast from them pallas put a grace that made him seem of the celestial race whom come to concourse every man admired about him thronged the wooers and desired all good to him in tongues but in their hearts most deep ills threatened to his most deserts of whose huge rout once free he cast glad eye on some that long before his infancy were with his father great and gracious grave halitherses mentor antiphus to whom he went took seat by them and they inquired of all things since his parting day to them piraeus came and brought his guests along the city thither whom not least the prince respected nor was long before he rose and met him the first word yet bore piraeus from them both whose haste besought the prince to send his women to see brought the gifts from his house that atrides gave which his own roofs he thought would better save the wise prince answered i can scarce conceive the way to these works if the wooers reeve by private stratagem my life at home i rather wish piraeus may become the master of them than the best of these but if i sow in their fields of excess slaughter and ruin then thy trust employ and to me joying bring thou those with joy this said he brought home his grief practised guest where both put off both oiled and did invest themselves in rich robes washed and sate and eat his mother in fair chair taking seat directly opposite her loom applied who when her son and guest had satisfied their appetites with feast said o oh, my son you know that ever since your sire was one to go in agamemnon's guide to troy a tempting sleep i never did enjoy one night's good rest but made my quiet bed a sea blown up with sighs with tears still shed and brood and troubled yet through all your miss in your late voyage hath been made for this that you might know the abode your father made you shun to tell me what success you had now then before the insolent access the wooers straight will force on us express what you have heard i will said he and true we came to pylos where the studious do that any father could afford his son but new arrived from some course he had run to an extreme length in some voyage vowed nestor the pastor of the people showed to me arrived in turrets thrust up high where not his brave sons were loved more than i yet of the unconquered ever sufferer ulysses never he could set his ear alive or dead from any earthy man but to the great lacedaemonian atrides famous for his lance he sent with horse and chariots me to learn the event from his relation where i had the view of argive helen whose strong beauties drew by wills of gods so many grecian states and trojans under such laborious fates 
where menelaus asked me what affair to lacedaemon rendered my repair i told him all the truth who made reply o deed of most abhorred indecency a sort of impotence attempt his bed whose strength of mine hath cities levelled as to a lion's den when any hind hath brought her young calves to their rest inclined when he is ranging hills and herby dales to make of feeders there his festivals but turning to his lustre calves and dam he shows abhorred death in his anger's flame so should ulysses find this rabble housed in his free turrets courting his espoused foul death would fall them oh i would to jove phoebus and pallas that when he shall prove the broad report of his exhausted store true with his eyes his nerves and sinews wore that vigour then that in the lesbian towers provoked to wrestle with the iron powers philomelides vaunted he approved when down he hurled his challenger and moved huge shouts from all the archives then in view if once come home he all those forces drew about him there to work they all were dead and should find bitter his attempted bed but what you ask and sue for i as far as i have heard the true spoke mariner will tell directly nor delude your ear he told me that an island did in sphere in much discomfort great laertes son and that the nymph calypso overrun with his affection kept him in her caves where men nor ship of power to brook the waves were near his convoy to his country's shore and where herself importuned evermore his quiet stay which not obtained by force she kept his person from all else recourse this told atrides which was all he knew nor stayed i more but from the gods there blew a prosperous wind that set me quickly here this put his mother quite from all her cheer when theoclymenus the augur said o woman honoured with ulysses bed your son no doubt knows clearly nothing more hear me yet speak that can the truth uncore nor will be curious jove then witness bear and this thy hospitable table here with this whole household of your blameless lord that at this hour his royal feet are shored on his loved country earth and that even here coming or creeping he will see the cheer these wooers make and in his soul's field sow seeds that shall thrive to all their overthrow this set a shipboard i knew sorted thus and cried it out to your telemachus penelope replied would this would prove you well should witness a most friendly love and gifts such of me as encountering fame should greet you with blessed mortal's name this mutual speech passed all the wooers were hurling the stone and tossing of the spear before the palace in the paved court where other whiles their petulant resort sat plotting injuries but when the hour of supper entered and the feeding power brought sheep from field that filled up every way with those that used to furnish that purvey met on the herald who of all the rest pleased most the wooers and at every feast was ever near said you whose kind consort make the fair branches of the tree our court grace it within now and your suppers take you that for health and fair contention's sake will please your minds no bodies must have meat plays worse than idleness in times to eat this said all left came in cast by on thrones and chairs their garments their provisions were sheep swine goats the chiefly great and fat besides an ox that from the herd they gat and now the king and herdsman from the field in good way were to town twixt whom was held some walking conference which thus began the good eumaeus guest your will was won because the prince commanded to make way up to the city though i wished your stay and to have made you guardian of my stall but i in care and fear of what might fall in after anger of the prince forbore the checks of princes touch their subjects sore but make we haste the day is nearly ended and cold airs still are in the even extended i know it said he consider all your charge is given to one that understands at large haste then hereafter you shall lead the way afford your staff too if it fit your stay that i may use it since you say our pass is less friend to a weak foot than it was thus cast he on his neck his nasty scrip all patched and torn a cord that would not slip for knots and bracks about the mouth of it made serve the turn 
and then his swain did fit his forced state with a staff then plied they hard their way to town their cottage left in guard to swains and dogs and now eumaeus led the king along his garments to a thread all bare and burned and he himself hard bore upon his staff at all parts like a poor and sad old beggar but when now they got the rough highway their voyage wanted not much of the city where a fount they reached from whence the town their choicest water fetched that ever overflowed and curious art was shown about it in which three had part whose names neritus and polyctor were and famous ithacus it had a sphere of poplar that ran round about the wall and into a lofty rock let fall continual supply of cool clear stream on whose top to the nymphs that were supreme in those parts loves a stately altar rose where every traveller did still impose devoted sacrifice at this fount found these silly travellers a man renowned for guard of goats which now he had in guide whose huge stored herd two herdsmen kept beside for all herds it excelled and bred a feed for wooers only he was dolius's seed and called melanthius who casting eye on these two there he chid them terribly and so passed mean that even the wretched fate now on ulysses he did irritate his fume to this effect he did pursue why so tis now at all parts passing true that ill leads ill good evermore doth train with like his like why thou unenvied swain whither dost thou lead this same victless leaguer this bane of banquets this most nasty beggar whose sight doth make one sad it so abhors who with his standing in so many doors hath broke his back and in his beggary tends to beg base crusts but to no manly ends as asking swords or with activity to get a cauldron wouldst thou give him me to farm my stable or to sweep my yard and bring browse to my kids and that preferred he should be at my keeping for his pains to drink as much whey as his thirsty veins would still be swilling whey made all his fees his monstrous belly would oppress his knees but he hath learned to lead a base life about and will not work but crouch among the rout for broken meat to cram his burst and gut yet this i'll say and he will find it put in sure effect that if he enters where ulysses roofs cast shade the stools will there about his ears fly all the house will throw and rub his ragged sides with cuffs and ow past these reviles his manless rudeness spurned divine ulysses who at no part turned his face from him but had his spirit fed with these two thoughts if he should strike him dead with his bestowed staff or at his feet make his direct head and pavement meet but he bore all and entertained a breast that in the strife of all extremes did rest eumaeus frowning on him chid him yet and lifting up his hands to heaven he set this bitter curse at him o oh, you that bear fair name to be the race of jupiter nymphs of these fountains if ulysses ever burned thighs to you that hid in fat did never fail your acceptance or of lamb or kid grant this grace to me let this man thus hid shine through his dark fate make some god his guide that to thee goat herd this same pallet's pride thou drivest afore thee he may come and make the scatterings of the earth and overtake thy wrongs with forcing thee to ever err about the city hunted by his fear and in the mean space by some slothful swains let lousy sickness gnaw thy cattle's veins o oh, gods replied melanthius what a curse hath this dog barked out and can yet do worse this man shall i have given into my hands when in a well-built ship to far-off lands i shall transport him that should i want here my sale of him may find me victuals there and for ulysses would to heaven his joy the silver-bearing bow-god would destroy this day within his house as sure as he the day of his return shall never see this said he left them going silent on but he outwent them and took straight upon the palace royal which he entered straight sat with the wooers and his trencher's freight 
the carvers gave him of the flesh there vented but bread the reverend butlerus presented he took against eurymachus his place who most of all the wooers gave him grace and now ulysses and his swain got near when round about them visited their ear the hollow harp's delicious stricken string to which did phemius near the wooers sing then by the hand ulysses took his swain and said eumaeus one may here see plain in many a grace that laertiades built here these turrets and amongst others these his whole court armed with such a goodly wall the corners and the cope majestical his double gates and turrets built too strong for force or virtue ever to expune i know the feasters in it now abound their cates cast such a savour and the sound the harp gives argues an accomplished feast the gods made music banquet's dearest guest these things said he your skill may tell with ease since you are graced with greater knowledges but now consult me how these works shall sort if you will first approach this praised court and see these wooers i remaining here or i shall enter and yourself forbear but be not too tedious in your stay lest thrust ye be and buffet it away brain hath no fence for blows look to it i pray you speak to one that comprehends said he go you before and here adventure me i have of old been used to cuffs and blows my mind is hardened and have borne the throes of many a sour event in waves and wars where knocks and buffets are no foreigners and this same belly by no mean the greatest abstinent can ever wean men suffer much bane by the belly's rage for whose sake ships in all their equipage are armed and set out to the untamed seas their bulks full fraught with ills to enemies such speech they changed when in the yard there lay a dog called argus which before his way assumed for ilion ulysses bred yet stood his pleasure then in little stead as being too young but growing to his grace young men made choice of him for every chase for of their wild goats of their hares or hearts but his king gone and he now past his parts lay all abjectly on the stable store before the ox-stall and the mule's stable door to keep the clothes cast from the peasants hands while they laid compass on ulysses lands the dog with ticks unlooked to overgrown but by this dog no sooner seen but known was wise ulysses who new entered there up went his dog's laid ears and coming near up he himself rose fawned and wagged his stern couched close his ears and lay so nor discern could evermore his dear loved lord again ulysses sought nor had power to abstain from shedding tears which far off seeing his swain he dried from his sight clean to whom he thus his grief dissembled tis miraculous that such a dog as this should have his lair on such a dunghill for his form is fair and yet i know not if there were in him good pace or parts for all his goodly limb or he lived empty of those inward things as are those trencher beagles tending kings whom for their pleasures or their glory's sake or fashion they into their favour take this dog said he was servant to one dead a huge time since but if he bore his head for form and quality of such a height as when ulysses bound for the ilian fight or quickly after left him your rapt eyes would then admire to see him use his thighs in strength and swiftness he would nothing fly nor anything let scape if once his eyes seized any wild beast he knew straight his scent go where he would away with him he went nor was there ever any savage stood amongst the thickets of the deepest wood a long time before him but he pulled him down as well by that true hunting to be shown in such vast coverts as for speed of pace in any open lawn for in deep chase he was a passing wise and well-nosed hound and yet is all this good in him uncrowned with any grace here now nor he more fed than any errant cur his king is dead far from his country and his servants are so negligent they lend his hound no care where masters rule not but let men alone you never there see honest service done that man's half virtue jove takes quite away that once is sunburnt with the servile day 
this said he entered the well-builded towers upbearing right upon the glorious wooers and left poor argus dead his lord's first sight since that time twenty years bereft his light telemachus did far the first behold eumaeus enter and made signs he should come up to him he noting came and took on earth his seat and then the master cook served in more banquet of which part he set before the wooers part the prince did get who sate alone his table placed aside to which the herald did the bread divide after eumaeus entered straight the king like to a poor and heavy aged thing bore hard upon his staff and was so clad as would have made his mere beholder sad upon the ashen floor his limbs he spread and gainst a cypress threshold stayed his head the tree wrought smooth and in a line direct tried by the plum and by the architect the prince then bade the herdsman give him bread the finest there and see that prostrated at all parts plight of his given all the cheer his hands could turn to take said he and bear these cates to him and bid him beg of all these wooers here and to their festival bear up with all the impudence he can bashful behaviour fits no needy man he heard and did his will hold guest said he telemachus commends these cates to thee bids thee bear up and all these wooers implore wit must make impudent whom fate makes poor o jove said he do my poor prayers the grace to make him blessed of the mortal race and every thought now in his generous heart to deeds that further my desires convert thus took he in with both hands his store and in the uncouth scrip that lay before his ill-shod feet reposed it whence he fed all time the music to the feasters played both jointly ending then began the wooers to put in old act their tumultuous powers when pallas standing close did prompt her friend to prove how far the bounties would extend of those proud wooers so to let him try who most who least had learned humanity however no thought touched minerva's mind that any one should scape his reek designed he handsomely became all crept about to every wooer held a forced hand out and all his work did in so like a way as he had practised begging many a day and though they knew all beggars could do this yet they admired it as no deed of his though far from thought of other used expense and pity to him who he was and whence inquiring mutually melanthius then hear me ye wooers of the far-famed queen about this beggar i have seen before this face of his and know for certain more that this swain brought him hither what he is and of whence he came flies me reply to this antinous made and mocked eumaeus thus o thou renowned herdsman why to us brought'st thou this beggar it serves not our hands that other land leapers and cormorans profane poor knaves lie on us unconducted but you must bring them so amiss instructed art thou in course of thrift as not to know thy lord's goods racked in this their overflow which thinks thou nothing thou call'st in these eumaeus answered though you may be wise you speak not wisely who calls in a guest that is a guest himself none call to feast other than men that are of public use prophets or poets whom the gods produce physicians for men's ills or architects such men the boundless earth affords respects bounded in honour and may call them well but poor men who calls who doth so excel in others good to do himself an ill but all ulysses servants have been still eyesores in your way more than all that woo and chiefly i but what care i for you as long as these roughs hold as thralls to none the wise penelope and her godlike son forbear said he and leave this tongue's bold ill antinous uses to be crossing still and give sharp words his blood that humour bears to set men still together by the ears but turning then to antinous oh said he you entertain a father's care of me to turn these eating guests out tis advice of needful use for my poor faculties but god doth not allow this there must be some care of poor men in humanity what you yourselves take give i not envy but give command that hospitality be given all strangers 
nor shall my powers fear if this mood in me reach my mother's ear much less the servants that are here to see ulysses house kept in his old degree but you bear no such mind your wits more cast to fill yourself than let another taste antinous answered him brave spoken man whose mind's free fire seek check no virtue can if all we wooers here would give as much as my mind serves his largesse should be such as would for three months serve his far-off way from troubling your house with more cause of stay this said he took a stool up that did rest beneath the board his spangled feet at feast and offered at him but the rest gave all and filled his fulsome scrip with festival and so ulysses for the present was and for the future furnished and his past bent to the door to eat yet could not leave antinous so but said do you too give loved lord your presence makes a show to me as you not worst were of the company but best and so much that you seem the king and therefore you should give some better thing than bread like others i will spread your praise through all the wide world that have in my days kept house myself and trod the wealthy ways of other men even to the title blest and often have i given an erring guest how mean soever to the utmost gain of what he wanted kept whole troops of men and had all other comings in with which men live so well and gain the fame of rich yet jove consumed all he would have it so to which his mean was this he made me go far off for egypt in the rude consort of all ways wandering pirates where in port i bade my loved men draw their ships ashore and dwell amongst them sent out some to explore up to the mountains who in temperate and their inflamed bloods bent to satiate forged the rich fields hailed the women thence and unweaned children with foul expense both of their fames and bloods the cry then flew straight to the city and the great fields grew with horse and foot and flamed with iron arms when jove that breaks the thunder in alarms an ill flight cast amongst my men not one inspired with spirit to stand and turn upon the fierce pursuing foe and therefore stood their ill fate thick about them some in blood and some in bondage toils led by constraint fastening upon them me along they sent to cyprus with a stranger prince they met demeter iasades who the imperial seat of that sweet island swayed in strong command and thus feel i here needs contemned hand and what god sent said he this suffering bane to vex our banquet stand off nor profane my board so boldly lest i show thee here cyprus and egypt made more sour than there you are a saucy set-faced vagabond about with all you go and they beyond discretion give thee since they find not here the least proportion set down to their cheer but every fountain hath his under floods it is no bounty to give others goods o oh, gods replied ulysses i see now you bear no soul in this your goodly show beggars at your board i perceive should get scarce salt from your hands if themselves brought meat since sitting where another's board is spread that flows with feast not to the broken bread will your allowance reach nay then said he and looked austerely if so saucy be your suffered language i suppose that clear you shall not scape without some broken cheer thus wrapped he up a stool with which he smit the king's right shoulder twixt his neck and it he stood him like a rock and tenuous's dart nor stirred ulysses who in his great heart deep ills projected which for time yet close he bound in silence shook his head and went out to the entry where he then gave vent to his full scrip sat on the earth and eat and talked still to the wooers hear me yet ye wooers of the queen it never grieves a man to take blows where for sheep or beeves or other main possessions a man fights but for his harmful belly this man smites whose love to many a man breeds many a woe and if the poor have gods and furies too before antinous wear his nuptial wreath he shall be worn upon the dart of death harsh guest said he sit silent at your meat or seek your desperate plight some safer seat lest by the hands or heels you drag your years and rend your rotten rags about your ears 
this made the rest as highly hate his folly as he had violated something holy when one even of the proudest thus began thou dost not nobly thus to play the man on such an errant wretch o ill-disposed perhaps some sacred godhead goes enclosed even in his abject outside for the gods have often visited these rich abodes like such poor stranger pilgrims since their powers being always shapeful glide through towns and towers observing as they pass still who they be that piety love and who impiety this all men said but he held sayings cheap and all this time telemachus did heap sorrow on sorrow on his beating heart to see his father stricken yet let part no tear to earth but shook his head and thought as deep as those ills that were after wrought the queen now hearing of her poor guest stroke said to her maid as to her wooer she spoke i wish the famous for his bow the sun would strike thy heart so her wish thus begun her lady fair eurynome pursued her execration and did thus conclude so may our vows call down from heaven his end and let no one life of the rest extend his life till morning o eurynome replied the queen may all the gods speak in thee for all the wooers we should rate as foes since all their wheels they place in others woes but this antinous we past all should hate as one resembling black and cruel fate a poor strange wretch begged here compelled by need asked all and every one gave in his deed filled his sad scrip and eased his heavy wants only this man bestowed unmanly taunts and with a cruel blow his force let fly twixt neck and shoulders showed his charity these minds above she and her maids did show while at his scrip ulysses sat below in which time she eumaeus called and said go good eumaeus and see soon conveyed the stranger to me bid him come and take my salutations for his welcome's sake and my desired serve if he hath not heard or seen distressed ulysses who hath erred like such a man and therefore chance may fall he hath by him been met and spoke with all o queen said he i wish to heaven your ear were quit of this unreverend noise you hear from these rude wooers when i bring the guest such words your ear would let into your breast as would delight it to your very heart three nights and days i did my roof impart to his fruition for he came to me the first of all men since he fled the sea and yet he had not given a perfect end to his relation of what woes did spend the spite of fate on him but as you see a singer breeding out of deity love kindling lines when all men seated near are wrapped with endless thirst to ever hear so sweetened he my bosom at my meat affirming that ulysses was in crete where first the memories of minos were a guest to him there dwelling then as dear as his true father and from thence came he tired on with sorrows tossed from sea to sea to cast himself in dust and tumble here at wooers feet for blows and broken cheer but of ulysses where the thesprots dwell a wealthy people fame he said did tell the still survival who his native light was bound for now with treasure infinite call him said she that he himself may say this over to me we shall soon have way given by the wooers they as well at gate as set within doors used to recreate their high-fed spirits as their humours lead they follow and may well for still they tread uncharged ways here their own wealth lying unwasted in poor kept houses only something tasted their bread and wine is by their household swains but they themselves let loose continual reins to our expenses making slaughter still of sheep goats oxen feeding past their fill and vainly lavishing our richest wine all these extending past the sacred line for here lives no man like ulysses now to curb these reins but should he once show his country light his presence he and his would soon revenge these wooers injuries this said about the house in echoes round her son's strange kneesings made a horrid sound at which the queen yet laughed and said go call the stranger to me heardst thou not to all my words last uttered what a kneesing break from my telemachus from whence i make this sure conclusion that the death and fate of every wooer here is near his date call then the guest 
and if he tell as true what i shall ask him coat cloak all things new these hands shall yield him this said down he went and told ulysses that the queen had sent to call him to her that she might inquire about her husband what her sad desire urged her to ask and if she found him true both coat and cassock which he needed knew her hands would put on him and that the bread which now he begged amongst the common tread should freely feed his hunger now from her who all he wished would to his wants prefer his answer was i will with fit speed tell the whole truth to the queen for passing well i know her lord since he and i have shared in equal sorrows but i am much scared with this rude multitude of wooers here the rage of whose pride smites heaven's brazen sphere of whose rout when one struck me for no fault telemachus nor none else turned the assault from my poor shoulders therefore though she haste beseech the queen her patience will see past the day's broad light and then may she inquire tis but my closer pressing to the fire in the evening cold because my weeds you know are passing thin for i made bold to show their bracks to you and prayed your kind supply he heard and hasted and met instantly the queen upon the pavement in his way who asked what bringst thou not what cause of stay find his austere supposes takes he fear of the unjust wooers or thus hard doth bear on any other doubt the house objects he does me wrong and gives too nice respects to his feared safety he does right said he and what he fears should move the policy of any wise one taking care to shun the violent wooers he bids bide till sun hath hid his broad light and believe it queen twill make your best course since you too unseen may pass the encounter you to speak more free and he your ear gain less distractedly the guest is wise said she and well doth give the right thought use of all the men that live life serves none such as these proud wooers are to give a good man cause to use his care thus all agreed amongst the wooers goes eumaeus to the prince and whispering close said now my love my charge shall take up me your goods and mine what here is you must see in fit protection but in chief regard your own dear safeguard whose state study hard lest sufferance seize you many a wicked thought conceal these wooers whom just jove see brought to utter ruin ere it touch at us so chance it friend replied telemachus your beaver taken go in first of day come and bring sacrifice the best you may to me and to the immortals be the care or whatsoever here the safeties are this said he sat in his elaborate throne eumaeus fed to satisfaction went to his charge left both the court and walls full of secure and fatal festivals in which the wooers pleasures still would sway and now begun the even's near-ending day End of the seventeenth book The eighteenth book of the Odysseys of Homer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf the eighteenth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument ulysses and the rogue iris fight penelope vouchsafes her sight to all her wooers who present gifts to her ravished with content a certain parley then we sing betwixt a wooer and the king another argument sigma the beggar's glee the king's high fame gifts given to see a virtuous dame there came a common beggar to the court who in the city begged of all resort excelled in madness of the gut drunk ate past intermission was most hugely great yet had no fibres in him nor no force in sight a man in mind a living course his true name was arneas for his mother imposed it from his birth and yet another the city youth would give him from the course he took derived out of the force that need held on him which was up and down to run on all men's errands through the town which sounded iris 
when whose gut was come he needs would bar ulysses his own home and fell to chiding him old man said he your way out of the entry quickly see be with fair language taken lest your stay but little longer see you dragged away see sir observe you not how all these make direct signs at me charging me to take your heels and drag you out but i take shame rise yet your best lest we two play a game at cuffs together he bent brows and said wretch i do thee no ill nor once upbraid thy presence with a word nor what mine eye by all hands sees thee given one thought envy nor shouldst thou envy others thou mayest see the place will hold us both and seems to me a beggar like myself which who can mend the gods give most to whom they are least friend the chief goods gods give is in good to end but to the hand strife of which ye are so free provoke me not for fear you anger me lest the old man on whose scorn you stood your lips and bosom make shake hands in blood i love my quiet well and more will love to-morrow than to-day but if you move my peace beyond my right the war you make will never after give you will to take ulysses house in your begging walk o oh god said he how volubly doth talk this eating gulf and how his fume breaks out as from an old cracked oven whom i will clout so bitterly and so with both hands maul his chaps together that his teeth shall fall as plain sea on the earth as any sows that ruts the cornfields or devours the mows come close we now that all may see what wrong an old man tempts that takes at cuffs a young thus in the entry of those lofty towers these two with all spleen spent their jarring powers antinous took it laughed and said o friends we never had such sport this guest contends with this vast beggar at the buffet's fight come join we hands and screw up all their spite all rose in laughters and about them bore all the ragged rout of beggars at the door then moved antinous the victor's hire to all the wooers thus there are now at fire two breasts of goat both which let law set down before the man that wins the day's renown with all their fat and gravy and of both the glorious victor shall prefer his tooth to which he makes his choice of from us all and ever after banquet in our hall with what our boards yield not a beggar more allowed to share but all keep out at door this he proposed and this they all approved to which ulysses answered o most loved by no means should an old man and one old in chief with sorrows be so overbold to combat with his younger but alas man's own ill-working belly needs will pass this work upon me and enforce me too to beat this fellow but then you must do my age no wrong to take my younger's part and play me foul play making your stroke smart help his to conquer for you easily may with your strengths crush me do then right and lay your honours on it in your oaths to yield his part no aid but equal leave the field all swore his will but then telemachus his father's scoffs with comfort serious could not but answer and made this reply guest if thine own powers cheer thy victory fear no man's else that will not pass it free he fights with many that shall touch but thee i'll see thy guest right paid thou here art come in my protection and to this the sum of all these wars which antinous are and king eurymachus conjoin their care both vowed it when ulysses laying by his upper weed his inner beggary near showed his shame which he with rags prevented plucked from about his thighs and so presented their goodly sight which were so white and great and his large shoulders were to view so set by his bare rags his arms his breast and all so broad and brawny their grace natural being kept by pallas ever standing near that all the wooers his admirers were beyond all measure mutual whispers driven through all their cluster saying sure as heaven poor iris pulled upon him bitter blows through his thin garment what a thigh he shows they said but iris felt his coward mind was moved at root but now he needs must find facts to his brags 
and forth at all parts fit the servants brought him all his arteries smit with fears and tremblings which antinous saw and said nay now too late comes fear no law thou shouldst at first have given thy braggart vein nor should it have so swelled if terror strain thy spirits to this pass for a man so old and worn with penuries that still lay hold on his ragged person howsoever take this vow from me for firm that if he make thy forces stoop and prove his own supreme i'll put thee in a ship and down the stream send thee ashore where king echetus reigns the roughest tyrant that the world contains and he will slit thy nostrils crop each ear thy shame cut off and give it dogs to tear this shook his nerves the more but both were now brought to the lists and up did either throw his heavy fists ulysses in suspense to strike so home that he should fright from thence his coward soul his trunk laid prostrate there or let him take more leisure to his fear and stooped him by degrees the last showed best to strike him slightly out of fear the rest would else discover him but peace now broke on his right shoulder iris laid his stroke ulysses struck him just beneath the ear his jawbone broke and made the blood appear when straight he strewed the dust and made his cry stand for himself with whom his teeth did lie spit with his blood out and against the ground his heels lay sprawling up the hands went round of all the wooers all at point to die with violent laughters then the king did ply the beggar's feet and dragged him forth the hall along the entry to the gates and wall where leaving him he put into his hand a staff and bade him there use his command on swine and dogs and not presume to be the lord of the guests or of the beggary since he of all men was the scum and curse and so bade please with that or fare yet worse then cast he on his scrip all patched and rent hung by a rotten cord and back he went to greet the entry's threshold with his seat the wooers thronged to him and did entreat with gentle words his conquest laughing still prayed jove and all the gods to give his will what most it wished him and would joy him most since he so happily had cleared their coast of that unsavoury morsel whom they vowed to see with all their utmost haste bestowed aboard a ship and for a pirate sent to king echethus on whose throne was spent the worst man's seat that breathed and thus was graced divine ulysses who with joy embraced even that poor conquest then was set to him the goodly goat's breast promised that did swim in fat and gravy by antinous and from a basket by amphinomus were two breads given him who besides renowned his banquet with a golden goblet crowned and this high salutation frolic guest and be those riches that you first possessed restored again with full as many joys as in your poor state i see now a noise amphinomus said he you seem to me exceeding wise as being the progeny of such a father as authentic fame hath told me was so one of honoured name and his great revenues in dulichius his fair name nissus he is blazoned thus and you to be his son his wisdom erring as well as wealth his state in not impairing to prove which always let me tell you this as warning you to shun the miseries that follow full states if they be not held with wisdom still at full and so compelled to courses that abode not in their brows by too much swing their sudden overthrows of all things breathing or that creep on earth naught is more wretched than a human birth lest men think never they can cursed be while any power lasts to move a knee but when the blessed gods make them feel that smart that fled their faith so as they had no heart they bear their sufferings and what well they might have clearly shunned they then meet in despite the mind of man flies still out of his way unless god guide and prompt it every day i thought me once a blessed man with men and fashioned me to all so counted then did all in justice like them what for lust or any pleasure never so unjust i could by power or violence obtain and gave them both in all their powers the rein bold of my fathers and my brothers still while which held good my arts seemed never ill 
and thus is none held simply good or bad but as his will is either missed or had all goods god's gifts man calls howe'er he gets them and so takes all what price soe'er god sets them says not how ill they come nor will control that rapine in him though it cost his soul and these parts here i see these wooers play take all that falls and all dishonours lay on that man's queen that tell your friends doth bear no long time's absence but is passing near let god then guide thee home lest he may meet in his return thy undeparted feet for when he enters and sees men so rude the quarrel cannot but in blood conclude this said he sacrificed then drunk and then referred the given bowl to the guide of men who walked away afflicted at his heart shook head and feared that these facts would convert to ill in the end yet had not grace to fly minerva stayed him being ordained to die upon the lance of young ulyssides so down he sat and then did pallas please to incline the queen's affections to appear to all the wooers to extend their cheer to the utmost lightning that still ushers death and made her put on all the painted sheath that might both set her wooers fancies high and get her greater honour in the eye even of her son and the sovereign than before who laughing yet to show her humour bore no serious appetite to that light show she told your enemy that not till now she ever knew her entertained desire to please her wooer's eyes but oft on fire she set their hate in keeping from them still yet now she pleased to appear though from no will to do them honour vowing she would tell her son that of them that should fit him well to make use of which was not to converse too freely with their pride nor to disperse his thoughts amongst them since they used to give good words but through them ill intents did drive your enemy replied with good advice you vow his counsel and your open guise go then advise your son nor keep more close your cheeks still drowned in your eyes overflows but bathe your body and with balms make clear your thickened countenance uncomposed cheer and ever mourning will the marrow wear nor have you cause to mourn your son hath now put on that virtue which in chief your vow wished as your blessing at his birth might deck his blood and person but forbear to speak of baths or balmings or of beauty now the queen replied lest urging comforts you discomfort much because the gods have won the spoil of my looks since my lord was gone but these must serve call hither then to me hippodamia and autonoe that those our train additions may supply our own deserts and yet besides not i with all my age have learned the boldness yet to expose myself to men unless i get some other gracers this said forth she went to call the ladies and much spirit spent to make their utmost speed for now their queen would both herself show and make them be seen but now minerva other projects laid and through icarius's daughter's veins conveyed sweet sleep's desire in whose soft fumes involved she was soon as laid and quite dissolved with all her lineaments the goddess then bestowed immortal gifts on her that men might wonder at her beauties and the beams that glister in the deified supremes she cleared her morning countenance up withal even such a radiance as doth round in paul crown cytheria when her ordered places conduct the bevy of the dancing graces she added to her own more plump more high and fairer than the polished ivory rendering her parts and presence this grace done away the deity flew and up did run her lovely wristed ladies with a noise that blew the soft chains from her sleeping joys when she her fair eyes wiped and gasping said o me unblessed how deep a sweet sleep spread his shades about me would diana please to shoot me with a death no more diseased as soon as might be that no more my moan might waste my blood and weepings never done for want of that accomplished virtue sphered in my loved lord to all the greeks preferred then she descended with her maids and took place in the portal whence her beamy look reached every wooer's heart yet cast she on so thin a veil that through it quite there shone a grace so stolen it pleased above the clear and sunk the knees of every wooer there their minds so melted in love's vehement fires that to her bed she heightened all desires 
the prince then coming near she said o son thy thoughts and judgments have not yet put on that constancy in what becomes their good which all expect in thee thy younger blood did sparkle choicer spirits but arrived at this full growth wherein their form hath thrived beyond the bounds of childhood and when now beholders should affirm this man doth grow like the rare son of his matchless sire his goodliness his beauty and his fire of soul aspired to thou makest nothing good thy fate nor fortune nor thy height of blood in manage of thy actions what a deed of foul desert hath thy gross sufferance freed beneath thine own roof a poor stranger here used most unmanly how will this appear to all the world when fame shall trumpet out that thus and thus are our guests beat about our court unrighted tis a blaze will show extremely shameful to your name and you i blame you not o mother he replied that this clear wrong sustained by me you chide yet know i both the good and bad of all being past the years in which young errors fall but all this known skill is not so exact to give when once it knows things fit their fact i well may doubt the priests of strangers here who bent to ill and only my nerves near may do it in despite and yet the jar betwixt our guests and iris was no war wrought by the wooers nor our guests sustained wrong in that action but the conquest gained and would to jove minerva and the sun that all your wooers might serve contention for such a purchase as the beggar made and wore such weak heads some should death invade strewed in the entry some embrued the hall till every man had vengeance capital saddled like iris at the gates his head every way nodding like one forfeited to reeling bacchus knees nor feet his own to bear him where he's bettered loved or known their speeches given this end eurymachus began his courtship and expressed it thus most wise icarius's daughter if all those that did for colchus venturous sail dispose for that rich purchase had before but seen earth's richer prize in the ithacensian queen they had not made that voyage but to you would all their virtues and their beings vow should all the world know what a worth you store to-morrow than to-day and the next light more your court should banquet since to all dames you are far preferred both for the grace of show in stature beauty form in every kind of all parts outward and for faultless mind alas said she my virtue body form the gods have blasted with that only storm that ravished greece to ilion since my lord for that war shipped bore all my goods aboard if he return should come and govern here my life's whole state the grace of all things there his guide would heighten as the spirit it bore which dead in me lives given him long before a sad course i live now heaven's stern decree with many an ill hath numbed and deaded me he took life with him when he took my hand in parting from me to the trojan strand these words my witness woman i conceive that not all the archives bound for troy shall leave their native earth their safe returned bones fame saying that troy trains up approved sons in deeds of arms brave putters off of shafts for winging lances masters of their crafts unmatched riders swift of foot and straight can arbitrate a war of deadliest weight hope then can scarce fill all with life supply and of all any failing why not i nor do i know if god hath marshalled me amongst the safe returned or his decree hath left me to the thraldom ordered there however all cares be thy burthens here my sire and mother tend as much now i further off more near in cares be you your son to man's state grown wed whom you will and you gone his care let his household fill thus made my lord his will which heaven sees proved almost at all parts for the sun removed down to his set ere long will lead the night of those abhorred nuptials that should fright each worthy woman which her second are with any man that breathes her first lord's care dead because he to flesh and blood is dead which i fear i shall yield to and so wed a second husband and my reason is since jove hath taken from me all his bliss whom god gives over they themselves forsake their griefs their joys their god their devil make 
and tis a great grief nor was seen till now in any fashion of such men as woo a good and wealthy woman and contend who shall obtain her that those men should spend her beeves and best sheep as their chiefest ends but rather that herself and all her friends they should with banquets and rich gifts entreat their life is death that live with others meet divine ulysses much rejoiced to hear his queen thus fish for gifts and keep in cheer their hearts with hope that she would wed again her mind yet still her first intent retain antinous saw the wooers one to give and said wise queen by all your means receive whatever bounty any wooer shall use gifts freely given tis folly to refuse for know that we resolve not to be gone to keep our own roofs till of all some one whom best you like your long wooed love shall win this pleased the rest and every one sent in his present by the herald first had place antinous gift a robe of special grace exceedingly full and fair and twenty hues changed lustre to it to which choice of shows twelve massy plated buttons all of gold and rich the substance made to fairly hold the robe together all laced down before where keeps and catches both sides of it wore eurymachus a golden tablet gave in which did art her choicest works engrave and round about an amber verge did run that cast a radiance from it like the sun eurydamus two servants had that bore two goodly earrings whose rich hollows wore three pearls in either like so many eyes reflecting glances radiant as the skies the king pisander great polyctor's heir a casket gave exceeding rich and fair the other other wealthy gifts commended to her fair hand which took and straight ascended this goddess of her sex her upper state her ladies all her gifts elaborate up bearing after all to dancing then the wooers went and songs delightful strain in which they frolicked till the evening came and then raised sable hesperus his flame when for their lights within they set up there three lamps whose wicks were wood exceeding sear and passing porous which they caused to burn their matter ever ministered by turn of several handmaids whom ulysses seeing too conversant with wooers ill agreeing with guise of maids advised in this fair sort maids of your long-lacked king keep you the port your queen's chaste presence bears go up to her employ your looms or rocks and keep ye there i'll serve to feed these lamps should these lords dances last till aurora cheered us with their glances they cannot weary me for i'm one born to endure when all men else have done they wantonly break out in laughters all looked on each other and to terms did fall cheek proud melantho who was dolius's seed kept by the queen that gave her dainty bread fit for her daughter and yet one not so her heart to her to share in any woe she suffered for her lord but she was great with great eurymachus and her love's heat in his bed quenched and this choleric thing bestowed this railing language on the king base stranger you are taken in your brain you talk so wildly never you again can get where you were born and seek your bed in some smith's hovel or the market-stead but here you must take confidence to prate before all these for fear can get no state in your wine-hardy stomach or tis like to prove your native garb your tongue will strike on this side of your mouth still being at best is the man idled brain for want of rest or proud because he beat the roguish beggar take heed sir lest some better man beleaguer your ears with his fists and set headlong hence your bold abode here with your blood's expense he looking sternly on her answered her dog what broad language givest thou i'll prefer your usage to the prince that he may fall foul on your fair limbs till he tell them all this frayed the wenches and all straight got gone in fear about their business every one confessing he said well but he stood now close by the cressets and did looks bestow on all men there his brain employed about some sharper business than to dance it out which had not long to go nor therefore would minerva let the wooer's spleens grow cold with too good usage of him that his heart might fret enough and make his collar smart 
eurymachus provoked him first and made his fellow laugh with the conceit he had fetched far from what was spoken long before that this poor form perhaps some deity bore it may well chance said he some god doth bear this man's resemblance for thus standing near the glistering torches his slicked head doth throw beams round about it as those cressets do for not a hair he hath to give it shade say will thy heart serve to undertake a trade for fitting wages should i take thee hence to walk my grounds and look to every fence or plant high trees thy hire should raise thy forces food store and clothes but these same idle courses thou art so prompt in that thou wilt not work but forge up and down and beg and lurk in every house whose roofs hold any will to feed such fellows that the gut may fill gives in to all thy being he replied i wish at any work we too were tried in height of springtime when heaven's lights are long i a good crook scythe that were sharp and strong you such another where the grass grew deep up by daybreak and both our labours keep up till slow darkness ease the labouring light fasting all day and not a crumb till night we then should prove our either workmanship or if again beeves that the goad or whip were apt to obey before tearing a plough big lusty beasts alike in bulk and brow alike in labour and alike in strength our task four acres to be tilled in length of one sole day again then you should try if the dull glebe before the plough should fly or i a long stitch could bear clean and even or lastly if the guide of earth and heaven should stir stern war up either here or there and that at this day i had double spear and shield and steel cask fitting for my brows at this work likewise midst the foremost blows your eyes should note me and get little cause to twit me with my belly's sole applause but you affect to affect with injury your mind ungentle seem in valour high because gainst few and those not of the best your conversation hath been still professed but if ulysses landed on his earth and entered on the true right of his birth should come and front ye straight his ample gates your feet would hold too narrow for your fates he frowned raged called him wretch and vowed to be his death since he durst prove so proud amongst so many to tell him so homed what he effected asked if overcome with wine he were or as his minion said talk still so idly and were palsied in his mind's instruments or was proud because he gat from iris off with such applause with all which snatching up a stool he threw when old ulysses to the knees withdrew of the dulichian lord Enfinimus, as if he feared him his dart missing thus his aged object and his page's hand a boy that waited on his cup's command now holding of an ewer to him he smit down fell the sounding ewer and after it the guiltless page lay sprawling in the dust and crying out when all the wooers thrust a tumult up amongst them wishing all the rogue had perished in some hospital before his life there stirred such uproars up and with rude speeches spiced their pleasure's cup and all this for a beggar to fulfil a filthy proverb good still yields to ill the prince cried out to them to let the bad obscure the good so told them they were mad abused their banquet and affirmed some god tried masteries with them bade them take their load of food and wine sit up or fall to bed at their free pleasures and since he gave head to all their freedoms why should they mistake their own rich humours for a beggar's sake all bit their lips to be so taken down and taught the course that should have been their own admired the prince and said he bravely spoke but nissa's son then struck the equal stroke and said o friends let no man here disdain to put up equal speeches nor maintain with serious words and humour nor with stroke a stranger in another's house provoke nor touch the meanest servant but confine all these dissensions in a bowl of wine which fill us cup-bearer that having done our nightly sacrifice we may atone our powers with sleep resigning first the guest up to the prince that holds all interest in his disposure here the house being his in just descent and all the faculties this all approved 
when noble mulius herald in chief to lord anfinimus the wine distributed with reverend grace to every wooer when the gods given place with service fit they served themselves and took their parting cups till when they all had struck the angry humour off they bent to rest and every wooer to several roofs addressed end of the eighteenth book the nineteenth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by phil schempf the nineteenth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument ulysses and his son eschew offending of the wooer's view with any armor his birth seat ulysses tells his queen is crete eurycleia the truth yet found discovered a scar-healed wound which in parnassus's tops a boar struck by him in his chase did gore another argument ta the king still hid by what he said by what he did informs his maid yet did divine ulysses keep his roof and with minerva plotted still the proof of all the war's deaths when thus his son he taught with these four counsels we must run a close course with these arms and lay them by and to the wooers make so fair a sky as it would never thunder let me then that you may well retain repeat again what in eumaeus's cottage i advised if when they see no leisure exercised in fetching down your arms and ask what use your mind will give them say tis their abuse with smoke and rust that makes you take them down this not being like the armory well known to the leavings of laertes son consorting the design for ilion your eyes may see how much they are infected as all fire's vapours ever since reflected on those sole arms besides a graver thought jove graves within you lest their spirits wrought above their pitch with wine they might contend at some high banquet and to wounds transcend their feast inverting which perhaps may be their nuptial feast with wise penelope the ready weapon when the blood is up doubles the uproar heightened by the cup wrath's means for act curb all the ways ye can as lodestones draw the steel so steel draws man retain these words nor what is good think thus received at second hand superfluous the son obeying did eurycleia call and bade her shut in the utter porches all the other women till himself brought down his father's arms which all were overgrown by his neglect with rust his father gone and he too childish to spend thoughts upon those manly implements but he would now reform those young neglects and the arms bestow past reach of smoke the loving nurse replied i wish o oh son your powers would once provide for wisdom's habit see your household wherein thrifty manage and tend all things there but if these arms must down and every maid be shut in utter rooms who else should aid your work with light he answered this my guest there shall no one in my house taste my feast or join in my knave that shall idly live however far hence he his home derive he said and his words stood the doors she shut of that so well filled house and the other put their thoughts in act best shields helms sharpened lances brought down and pallas before both advances a golden cresset that did cast a light as if the day sat in the throne of night when half amazed the prince said o oh, my father mine eyes my soul's powers all in wonder gather for though the walls and goodly wind-beams here all all these pillars that their heads so rear and all of fur they seem yet all of fire some god is surely with us his wise sire bade peace and keep the counsels of the gods nor asked a word these powers that use abodes above the stars have power from thence to shine through night and all shades to earth's inmost mine go thou for sleep and leave me here to wake the women and the queen whose heart doth ache to make inquiry for myself of me he went to sleep where lights did endlessly burn in his night rooms where he feasted rest till day's fair weed did all the world invest 
Thus was divine Ulysses left alone with Pallas, plotting foul confusion to all the wooers. Forth then came the queen, Phoebe, with golden Cytheria seen, her port presented, whom they set a chair aside the fire, the fashion circular, the substance silver and rich elephant, whose fabric did the cunning finger vaunt of great Icmalius, who besides had done a footstool for her, that did suit her throne, on which they cast an ample skin, to be the cushion for her other royalty. And there she sat, about whom came her maids, who brought upon a table store of breads, and bowls that with the wooer's wine were crowned. The embers then they cast upon the ground from out the lamps, and other fuel added, that still with cheerful flame the sad house gladded. Melantha, seeing still Ulysses there, thus she held out her spleen. Still, stranger here, thus late in night, to see what ladies do. Avaunt, you wretch, hence go without doors, go, and quickly too, lest ye be singed away with burning firebrands. He, thus seeing their fray, continued by her with such spleen, replied, Minion, what makes your angry blood thus chide my presence still? Is it because you see I shine not in your wanton bravery, but wear these rags? It fits the needy fate that makes me beg thus of the common state. Such poor souls and such beggars yet are men, and even my mean means, means had to maintain a wealthy house, and kept a manly press, was counted blessed, and the poor access of any beggar did not scorn, but feed, with often hand, and any man of need relieved as fitted kept my servants too not few but did with those additions go that call choice men the honest who are styled the rich the great but what such great ones build jove off pulls down as thus he ruined me his will was such which is his equity and therefore woman bear your fitting hand on your behaviour lest your spirit thus manned and cherished with your beauties when they wane comes down your pride now being then your bane and in the mean space shun the present danger lest your bold fashion breed your sovereign's anger or lest ulysses come of whom even yet hope finds some life in fate or be his seat amongst the merely ruined yet his son whose life's heat phoebus saves is such a one as can discover who doth well deserve of any woman here his years now serve the queen gave ear and thus suppress the flame thou quite without a brow past female shame i hear thy monstrous boldness which thy head shall pay me pains for thou hast heard it said and from myself too and every part thy knowledge serves thee that to ease my heart so punished in thy witness my desire dwelt on this stranger that i might inquire my lost friend's being but tis ever tried both man and god are still forgot with pride your enemy bring here this guest a seat and cushion on it that we too may treat of the affair in question set it near that i may softly speak yet he well hear she did this little freely and he sat close by the queen who asked him whence and what he was himself and what the inhabited place where lived his parents whence he fetched his race o woman he replied with whom no man that moves in earth's unbounded circle can maintain contention for true honour given whose fame hath reached the fairly flowing heaven who like a never ill-deserving king that is well spoke of first for worshipping and striving to resemble god in empire whose equal hand impartially doth temper greatness and goodness to whom therefore bears the black earth store of all grain trees confers cracking with burthen long-lived herds creates all which the sea with her sorts emulates and all this feeds beneath his powerful hand men valiant many making strong his land with happy lives led nothing else the cause of all these blessings but well-ordered laws like such a king are you in love in fame and all the bliss that deifies a dame and therefore do not mix this with a moan so wretched as is now in question ask not my race nor country lest you fill my heart yet fuller with repeated ill for i must follow it with many tears though tis not seemly to sit wounding ears in public roofs with our particular life time's worst expense is still repeated grief 
i should be irksome to your ladies here and you yourself would say you urged your ear to what offends it my still broken eyne supposing wounded with your too much wine stranger said she you fear your own excess with giving me too great a nobleness the gods my person beauty virtue too long since subverted when the ilian woe the greek design attempted in which went my praise and honour in his government had i deserved your utmost grace but now sinister deity makes dishonour woo in show of grace my ruin all the peers sylvans acanthus and dulichius spheres samos and ithaca strange strifes have shown to win me spending on me all mine own will wed me in my spite and these are those that take from me all virtue to dispose or guest or suppliant or take any course amongst my heralds that should all disperse to order anything though i need none to give me grief at home abroad airs one that my veins shrink for whom these holding gone their nuptials hasten and find me as slow good spirits prompt me to make a show of undertaking a most curious task that an unmeasured space of time would ask which they enduring long would often say when ends thy work i soon had my delay and prayed their stay for though my lord were dead his father's life yet mattered ministred that must employ me which to tell them true was that great work i named for now near drew laertes death and on my hand did lie his funeral robe whose end being now so nigh i must not leave and lose so much begun the rather lest the greek dames might be won to tax mine honour if a man so great should greet his grave without his winding-sheet pride made them credulous and i went on when whatsoever all the day had done i made the night help to undo again though oil and watch it cost an equal pain three years my wit secured me undiscerned yet when the fourth came by my maids discerned false careless wenches how they were deluded when by my light discerned they all intruded using threatening words and made me give it end and then could i to no more length extend my lingered nuptials not a counsel more was to be stood upon my parents bore continual hand on me to make me wed my son grew angry that so ruined his goods were by them he is now a man wise in a great degree and one that can himself give order to his household fair and jove give equal glory to his care but thus you must not pass me i must know it may be for more end from whence doth grow your race and you for i suppose you none sprung of old oak or jostled out of stone he answered o ulysses reverend wife yet hold you purpose to inquire my life i'll tell you though it much afflict me more than all the sorrows i have felt before as worthily it may since so long time as i have wandered from my native clime through human cities and in sufferance still to rip all wounds up though of all their ill i touch but part must actuate all their pain but ask you still i'll tell though still sustain in the middle of the sable sea there lies an isle called crete a ravisher of eyes fruitful and manned with many an infinite store where ninety cities crown the famous shore mixed with all languaged men there greeks survive there the great mind etiocretans live there the dorensian never out of war the sidons there and there the singular pelasgian people there does gnosis stand that mighty city where had most command great jove's disciple minos who nine years conferred with jove both great familiars in mutual councils and this minos's son the mighty-minded king deucalion was sire to me and royal idomen who with atrides went to ilion then my elder brother and the better man my name ethan at that time began my knowledge of ulysses whom my home received with guest rites he was thither come by force of weather from the malian coast but knew got off where he the navy lost then under sail for troy and wind-bound lay long in nemnissus hardly got away from horrid storms that made him anchor there in havens that sacred to lucina were dreadful and dangerous in whose bosom crept lucina's cavern but in my roof slept ulysses shored in crete 
who first inquire for royal idomen and much desire to taste his guest rites since to him had been a welcome guest my brother idomen the tenth or eleventh light on ulysses shined in stay at crete attending then the wind for threatened ilion all which time my house with love and entertainments curious embraced his person though a number more my hospitable roofs received before his men i likewise called and from the store allowed them meal and heat exciting wine and oxen for their slaughter to confine in my free hand the utmost of their need twelve days the greeks stayed ere they got them freed a gale so bitter blew out of the north that none could stand on earth being tumbled forth by some stern god but on the thirteenth day the tempest ceased and then went greeks their way thus many tales ulysses told his wife at most but painting yet most like the life of which her heart such sense took through her ears it made her weep as she would turn to tears and as from off the mountains melts the snow which zephyr's breath concealed but was made flow by hollow eurus which so fast pours down that with their torrent floods have overflown so down her fair cheeks her kind tears did glide her miss lord mourning set so near her side ulysses much was moved to see her mourn whose eyes yet stood as dry as iron or horn in his untroubled lids which in his craft of bridling passion he from issue saft when she had given her moan so many tears that now twas satiate her yet loving fears asked thus much further you have thus far tried my love's credulity but if gratified with so long stay he was with you you can describe what weed he wore what kind of man both he himself was and what followers observed him there alas said he the years have grown so many since this making now their twentieth revolution that my show of these slight notes will set my memory sore but to my now remembrance this he wore a double purple robe drawn close before with golden buttons plaited thick and bore a facing where a hundred colours shined about the skirts a hound of freckled hind in full course hunted on the four skirts yet he pinched and pulled her down when with her feet and all her force she struggled hard for flight which had such life in gold that to the sight it seemed the hind itself for every hue the hound and all so answering the view that all admired all i observed beside his inner weed so rarely beautified that dumb amaze it bred and was as thin as any dry and tender onion skin as soft twas too and glistered like the sun the women were to loving wonder won by him and by his weeds but by the way you must excuse me that i cannot say he brought this suit from home or had it there sent for some present or perhaps elsewhere received it for his guest gift for your lord had friends not few the fleet did not afford many that had not fewer i bestowed a well-edged sword on him a robe that flowed in folds and fullness and did reach his feet of richest purple brought him to his fleet with all my honour and besides to add to all his sifted circumstance he had a herald there in height a little more put from the earth that thicker shoulders wore a swarthy companion and a curled head his name eurybates and much instead he stood your king employed in most command since most of all his mind could understand when all these signs she knew for chiefly true desire of moan upon her beauties grew and yet even that desire sufficed she said till this my guest a wretched state arrayed your ill-used person but from this hour forth you shall be honoured and find all the worth that fits a friend those weeds these hands bestowed from out my wardrobe those gold buttons sewed before for closure and for ornament but never more must his return present the person that gave those adornments state and therefore under an abhorred fate was he induced to feed the common fame to visit vile troy i too vile to name no more yet mourn said he nor thus see pined your lovely person weeping wastes the mind and yet i blame you not for any dame that weds one young and brings to him his name whatever man he is will mourn his loss much more respectful then must show your woes that weep thus for ulysses 
who fame says was equal with the gods in all his ways but where no cause is there must be no moan and therefore hear me my relation shall lay the clear truth naked to your view i heard amongst the thesprots for most true that lord ulysses lived and stood just now on his return for home that wealth did flow in his possession which he made not known but begged amongst the people since alone he quite was left for all his men were lost in getting off from the trinacrian coast jove in the sun was wroth with them for rape made of his oxen and no man let scape the rugged deeps of neptune only he the ship's keel only keeping was by sea cast on the fair phaeacian continent where men survive that are the gods descent and like a god received him gave him heaps of wealthy gifts and would conduct his steps themselves safe home which he might long ago his pleasure make but profit would not so he gathered going and had mighty store of gold in safeguard so beyond the shore that common sails kept his high flood of wit bore glorious top and all the world for it hath far exceeded all this feed on told that doth the sceptre of thesprotia hold who swore to me in household sacrifice the ship was launched and men to man the prize that soon should set him on his country earth showed me the goods enough to serve the birth that in the tenth age of his seed should spring yet in his court contained but then the king your husband for dodona was in way that from the oraculous oak he might display jove's will what course for home would best prevail to come in pomp or bear a secret sail but me the king dispatched in course before a ship then bound for the dulichian shore so thus you see his safety whom you mourn who now is passing near and his return no more will punish with delays but see his friends and country all which truth to thee i'll seal with sacred oath be witness jove thou first and best of all the throned above and thou house of the great laertes heir to whose high roofs i tender my repair that what i tell the queen event shall crown this year ulysses shall possess his own nay ere the next month ends shall here arrive nay ere it enters here abide alive oh may this prove said she gifts friendship then should make your name the most renowned of men but tis of me received and must so sort that nor my lord shall ever see his court nor you gain your deduction thence for now the altered house doth no such man allow as was ulysses if he ever were to entertain a reverend passenger and give him fair dismission but maids see ye bathe his feet and then with tapestry best sheets and blankets make his bed and lay soft waistcoats by him that lodged warm he may even till the golden seated morning's ray enjoy good rest and then with her first light bathe and give alms that cherish appetite he may apply within our hall and sit safe by telemachus or if the unfit and harmful mind of any be so base to grieve his age again let none give grace of doing any deed he shall command how wroth soever to his barbarous hand for how shall you guest know me for a dame that pass so far nay turn and wind the fame of other dames for wisdom and the frame of household usage if your poor thin weeds i let draw on you want and worser deeds that may perhaps cause here your latest day the life of man is short and flies away and if the rulers self of households be ungentle studying in humanity the rest prove worse but he bears all the blame all men will living vow against his name mischiefs and miseries and dead supply with bitter epitaphs his memory but if himself be noble noble things doing and knowing all his underlings will imitate his noblesse and all guests give it in many many interests but worthiest queen said he where you command baths and rich beds for me i scorn to stand on such state now nor ever thought it yet since first i left the snowy hills of crete where once i fell a shipboard those thoughts fled i love to take now as long since my bed though i began the use with sleepless nights i many a darkness with right homely rites have spent ere this hour and desire the morn would come and make sleep to the world a scorn 
nor run these dainty baths in my rude head nor any handmaid to your service bread shall touch my ill-kept feet unless there live some poor old drudge here that hath learned to give old men good usage and no work will fly as having suffered ill as much as i but if there lived one such in your command i will not shame to give my foot her hand she gave this answer o oh, my loved guest there never entered these kind roofs for rest stranger or friend that so much wisdom laid engaged for guest rights as your lips have paid there lives an old maid in my charge that knows the good you speak of by her many woes that nourished and brought up with curious care the unhappy man your old familiar even since his mother let him view the light and oft hath felt in her weak arms his weight and she though now much weaker shall apply her maiden service to your modesty eurycleia rise and wash the feet of one that is of one age with your sovereign gone such hands such feet hath though of altered grace much grief in men will bring on change apace she from her aged slumber waked did clear her heavy eyes and instantly to hear her sovereign's name had work enough to dry her cheeks from tears and to his memory these moans did offer o oh, my son said she i can never take grief enough for thee whom goodness hurts and whom even jove's high spleen since thou art jove like hates the most of men for none hath offered him so many thighs nor such whole hecatombs of sacrifice fat and selected as thy zeal hath done for all but praying that thy noble son thy happy age might see at state of man and yet hath jove with miss cimmerian put out the light of his returning day as you yourself o father in your way took these fair roofs for hospitable rites yet find for them our dogged women's spites so he in like course being driven to proof long time ere this what such a royal roof would yield his miseries found such usage there and you now flying the foul language here and many a filthy fact of our fair dames fly me like them and put on causeless shames to let me cleanse your feet for not the cause the queen's command yields is the power that draws my will to wash your feet but what i do proceeds from her charge and your reverence too since i in soul am stricken with a ruth of your distresses and past show of truth your strangeness claiming little interest in my affections and yet many a guest of poor condition hath been harboured here but never any did so right appear like king ulysses as yourself for state both of your stature voice and very gait so all have said said he that ever yet had the proportions of our figures met in their observance so right your eye proves in your soul your judging faculty thus took she up a cauldron brightly scoured to cleanse his feet in and into it poured store of cold wave which on the fire she set and therein bathed being temperately heat her sovereign's feet who turned him from the light since suddenly he doubted her conceit so rightly touching at his state before a scar now seeing on his foot that bore an old note to discern him might descry the absolute truth which witnessed by her eye was straight approved he first received this sore as in parnassus's tops a white tooth bore he stood in chase withal who struck him there at such time as he lived the sojourner with his grandsire autolycus who the art of theft and swearing not out of the heart but by equivocation first adorned your witty man withal and was suborned by jove's descent ingenious mercury who did bestow it since so many a thigh of lambs and kids he had on him bestowed in sacred flames who therefore when he vowed was ever with him and this man imposed ulysses name the light being first disclosed to his first sight then when his grandsire came to see the then preferrer of his fame his loved daughter the first supper done eurycleia put in his lap her son and prayed him to bethink and give his name since that desire did all desires inflame daughter and son-in-law said he let then the name that i shall give him stand with men since i arrived here at the hour of pain in which mine own kind entrails did sustain moan for my daughter's yet unended throes and when so many men's and women's woes in joint compassion met of human birth 
brought forth to attend the many feeding earth let odysseus be his name as one exposed to just constraint of all men's moan when here at home he is arrived at state of man's first youth he shall initiate his practised feet in travel made abroad and to parnassus where mine own abode and chief means lie address his way for i will give him from my open treasury what shall return him well and fit the fame of one that had the honour of his name for these fair gifts he went and found all grace of hands and words in him and all his race amphithia his mother's mother too applied her to his love with all to do a grand dame's welcomes both his fair eyes kissed and brows and then commanded to assist were all her sons by their respected sire in furnishing a feast whose ears did fire their minds with his command who home straight led a five years old male ox felled slew and flayed gathered about him cut him up with art spitted and roasted and his every part divided orderly so all the day they spent in feast no man went his way without his fit fill when the sun was set and darkness rose they slept till the day's fire het the enlightened earth and then on hunting went both hounds and all autocolus's descent in whose guide did divine ulysses go climbed steep parnassus on whose forehead grow all sylvan offsprings round and soon they reached the concaves whence air's sounding vapours fetched their loud descent as soon as any sun had from the ocean where his waters run in silent deepness raised his golden head the early huntsmen all the hill had spread their hounds before them on the searching trail they near and ever eager to assail ulysses brandishing a lengthful lance of whose first flight he longed to prove the chance then found they lodged a boar of bulk extreme in such a queech as never any beam the sun shot pierced nor any pass let find the moist impressions of the fiercest wind nor any storm the sternest winter drives such proof it was yet all within lay leaves in mighty thickness and through all this flew the hounds loud mouths the sounds the tumult threw and all together roused the boar that rushed amongst their thickest all his bristles pushed from forth his rough neck and with flaming eyes stood close and dared all on which horrid prize ulysses first charged whom above the knee the savage struck and raced it crookedly along the skin yet never reached the bone ulysses lance yet through him quite was thrown at his right shoulder entering at his left the bright head passage to his keenness cleft and showed his point gilt with the gushing gore down in the dust fell the extended boar and forth his life flew to ulysses round his uncle drew who woeful for his wound with all art bounded up and with a charm stayed the blood went home and when the harm received full cure with gifts and all event of joy and love to his loved home they sent their honoured nephew whose return his sire and reverend mother took with joys entire inquired all passages all which he gave in good relation nor of all would save his wound from utterance by whose scar he came to be discovered by this aged dame which when she cleansing felt and noted well down from her lap into the cauldron fell his weighty foot that made the brass resound turned all aside and on the embruet ground spilt all the water joy and grief together her breast invaded and of weeping weather her eyes stood full her small voice stuck within her part expressive till at length his chin she took and spake to him o son said she thou art ulysses nor canst other be nor could i know thee yet till all my king i had gone over with the warmed spring then looked she for the queen to tell her all and yet knew nothing sure though naught could fall in compass of all thoughts to make her doubt minerva that distraction struck throughout her mind's rapt forces that she might not tell ulysses noting yet her aptness well with one hand took her chin and made all show of favour to her with the other drew her offered parting closer asked her why she whose kind breast had nursed so tenderly his infant life would now his age destroy though twenty years had held him from the joy of his loved country but since only she god putting her in mind now knew twas he 
he charged her silence and to let no ear in all the court more know his being there lest if god gave into his requal hand the insulting wooers lives he did not stand on any partial respect with her because his nurse and to the rest prefer her safety therefore but when they should feel his punishing finger give her equal steel what words said she fly your retentive powers you know you lock your counsels in your towers in my firm bosom and that i am far from those loose frailties like an iron bar or a bolt of solid stone i will contain and tell you this besides that if you gain by god's good aid the wooers lives in yours what dames are here their shameless paramours and have done most dishonour to your worth my information well shall paint you forth it shall not need said he myself will soon while thus i mask here set on every one my sure observance of the worst and best be thou then silent and leave god the rest this said the old dame for more water went the rest was all upon the pavement spent by known ulysses foot more brought and he supplied beside the sweetest ointments she his seat drew near the fire to keep him warm and with his pierced rags hiding close his harm the queen came near and said yet guest afford your further patience till but in a word i tell my woes to you for well i know that rest sweet hour her soft foot orders now when all poor men how much soever grieved would gladly get their woe-watched powers relieved but god hath given my grief a heart so great it will not down with rest and so i set my judgment up to make it my delight all day i mourn yet nothing let the right i owe my charge both in my work and maids and when the night brings rest to others aids i toss my bed distress with twenty points slaughtering the powers that to my turning joints convey the vital heat and as all night pandarius's daughter poor edon sings clad in the verdure of the yearly springs when she for Italus, her loved son by zethus's issue in his madness done to cruel death pours out her hourly moan and draws the ears to her of every one so flows my moan that cuts into my mind and here and there gives my discourse the wind uncertain whether i shall with my son abide still here the safe possession and guard of all goods reverence to the bed of my loved lord and to put my far-off spread fame with the people putting still in use or follow any best greek i can choose to his fit house with treasure infinite one to his nuptials while the infant plight and want of judgment kept my son in guide he was not willing with my being a bride nor with my parting from his court but now arrived at man's state he would have me vow my love to some one of my wooers here and leave his court offended that their cheer should so consume his free possessions to settle then a choice in these my moans here and expound a dream that did engrave my sleeping fancy twenty geese i have all which methought mine eye saw tasting wheat in water steeped and joyed to see them eat when straight a crook-beaked eagle from a hill stooped and trussed all their necks and all did kill when all left scattered on the pavement there she took her wing up to the god's fair sphere i even amid my dream did weep and mourn to see the eagle with so shrewd a turn stoop my sad turrets when methought there came about my mornings many a grecian dame to cheer my sorrows in whose most extreme the hawk came back and on the prominent beam that crossed my chamber fell and used to me a human voice that sounded horribly and said be confident icarius's seed this is no dream but what shall chance indeed the geese the wooers are the eagle i was heretofore a fowl but now imply thy husband's being and am come to give the wooers death that on my treasure live with this sleep left me and my waking way i took to try if any violent prey were made of those my fowls which well enough i as before found feeding at their trough their yoded wheat o woman he replied thy dream can no interpretation bide but what the eagle made who was your lord and said himself would sure effect afford to what he told you that confusion to all the wooers should appear and none escape the fate and death he had decreed she answered him 
o guest these dreams exceed the art of man to interpret and appear without all choice or form nor ever were performed to all at all parts but there are to these light dreams that like thin vapours fare two leaved gates the one of ivory the other horn those dreams that fantasy takes from the polished ivory port delude the dreamer ever and no truth include those that the glittering horn gate lets abroad do evermore some certain truth abode but this my dream i hold of no such sort to fly from thence yet whichever so port it had access from it did highly please my son and me and this my thoughts profess that day that lights me from ulysses court shall both my infamy and curse consort i therefore propose to propose them now in strong contention ulysses bow which he that easily draws and from his draught shoots through twelve axes as did his shaft all set up in a row and from them all his stand far off kept firm my fortune shall dispose and take me to his house from hence where i was wed a maid in confluence of feast and riches such a court here then as i shall ever in my dreams retain do not said he defer the gameful prize but set to task their importunities with something else than nuptials for your lord will to his court and kingdom be restored before they thread those steels or draw his bow o guest replied penelope would you thus sit and please me with your speech mine ears would never mine eyelids close their spheres but none can live without the death of sleep the immortals in our mortal memories keep our ends and deaths by sleep dividing so as by the fate and portion of our woe our time spent here to let us nightly try that which we live as much live as we die in which use i will to my bed ascend which i bedew with tears and sigh past end through all my hours spent since i lost my joy for vile lewd never to be named troy yet there i'll prove for sleep which take you here or on the earth if that your custom were or have a bed disposed for warmer rest thus she left with her ladies her old guest ascended her fair chamber and her bed whose sight did ever duly make her shed tears for her lord which still her eyes did steep till pallas shut them with delightsome sleep end of the nineteenth book the twentieth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by phil shemp the twentieth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument ulysses in the wooers beds resolving first to kill the maids that sentence giving off his care for other objects doth prepare another argument upsilon jove thunder chides but cheers the king the wooer's pride's discomfiting ulysses in the entry laid his head and under him an oxhide newly flayed above him sheep fell store and over those eurynomy cast mantles his repose would bring no sleep yet studying the ill he wished the wooers who came by him still with all their wenches laughing wantoning in mutual lightness which his heart did sting contending two ways if all patience fled he should rush up and strike those strumpets dead or let that night be last and take the extreme of those proud wooers that were so supreme in pleasure of their high-fed fantasies his heart did bark within him to surprise their sports with spoils no fell she mastiff can amongst her whelps fly eagerer on a man she doth not know yet sense him something near and fain would come to please her tooth and tear that his disdain to see his roof so filed with those foul fashions grew within him wild to be in blood of them but finding best in his free judgment to let passion rest he chid his angry spirit and beat his breast and said forbear my mind and think on this there hath been time when bitter agonies have tried thy patience call to mind the day in which the cyclop which passed manly sway of violent strength 
devoured thy friends thou then stoodst firmly bold till from that hellish den thy wisdom brought thee off when naught but death thy thoughts resolved on this discourse did breathe the fiery boundings of his heart that still lay in that esther without and his ill yet manly suffering but from side to side it made him toss apace you have not tried a fellow roasting of a pig before a hasty fire his belly yielding store of fat and blood turn faster labour more to have it roast and would not have it burn than this and that way his unrest made turn his thoughts and body would not quench the fire and yet not have it heighten his desire past his discretion and the fit enough of haste and speed that went to all the proof his well-laid plots and his exploits required since he but one to all their deaths aspired in this contention pallas stooped from heaven stood over him and had her presence given a woman's form who sternly thus began why thou most sour and wretched fated man of all that breathe yet liest thou thus awake the house in which thy cares so toss and take thy quiet up is thine thy wife is there and such a son as if thy wishes were to be sufficed with one they could not mend goddess said he tis true but i contend to right their wrongs and though i be but one to lay unhelped and wreakful hand upon this whole resort of impudence that here their rude assemblies never will forbear and yet a greater doubt employs my care that if their slaughters in my reaches are and i perform them jove and you not pleased how shall i fly their friends and would stand seized of counsel to resolve this care in me wretch she replied a friend of worse degree might win thy credence that a mortal were i and used to second thee though nothing near so powerful in performance nor in care yet i a goddess that have still had share in thy achievements and thy person's guard must still be doubted by thy brain so hard to credit anything above thy power and that must come from heaven if every hour there be not personal appearance made and aid direct given that may sense invade i tell thee therefore clearly if there were of divers languaged men an army here of fifty companies all driving hence thy sheep and oxen and with violence offered to charge us and besiege us round thou shouldst their prey reprise and them confound let sleep then seize thee to keep watch all night consumes the spirits and makes dull the sight thus poured the goddess sleep into his eyes and reascended the olympian skies when care and lineament resolving sleep had laid his temples in his golden steep his wise in chaste wit worthy wife did rise first sitting up in her soft bed her eyes opened with tears in care of her estate which now her friends resolved to terminate to more delays and make her merry one her silent tears then ceased her orison this queen of women to diana made reverend diana let thy darts invade my woeful bosom and my life deprive now at this instant or soon after drive my soul with tempests forth and give it way to those far-off dark vaults where never day hath power to shine and let them cast it down where refulent oceanus doth crown his curled head where pluto's orchard is an entrance to our after miseries and such stern whirlwinds ravished to that stream pandarius's daughters when the gods to them had reft their parents and left them alone poor orphan children in their mansion whose desolate life did love's sweet queen incline to nurse with pressed milk and sweetest wine whom juno decked beyond all other dames with wisdom's light and beauty's moving flames whom phoebe goodliness of stature rendered and to whose fair hands wise minerva tendered the loom and needle in their utmost skill and while love's empress scaled the olympian hill to beg of lightning loving jove since he the means to all things knows and doth decree fortunes in fortunes to the mortal race for those poor virgins the accomplished grace of sweet nuptials the fierce harpies preyed on every good and miserable maid and to the hateful furies gave them all in horrid service yet may such fate fall from steep olympus on my loathed head 
or fair chair'd phoebe strike me instant dead that i may undergo the gloomy shore to visit great ulysses soul before i soothe my idle blood and wed a worse and yet beneath how desperate a curse do i live now it is an ill that may be well endured to mourn the whole long day so night's sweet sleeps that make a man forget both bad and good in some degree would let my thoughts leave grieving but both day and night some cruel god gives my sad memory sight this night methought ulysses graced my bed in all the goodly state with which he led the grecian army which gave joys extreme to my distress esteeming it no dream but true indeed and that conceit i had that when i saw it false i might be mad such cruel fates command in my life's guide by this the morning's orient dews had dyed the earth in all her colours when the king in his sweet sleep supposed the sorrowing that she used waking in her plaintive bed to be her mourning standing by his head as having known him there who straight arose and did again within the hall dispose the carpets and the cushions where before they served the seats the hide without the door he carried back and then with held up hands he prayed to him that heaven and earth commands o oh, father jove if through the moist and dry you willing brought me home when misery had punished me enough by your free dooms let some of these within those inner rooms startled with horror of some strange ostent come here and tell me that great jove hath bent threatenings without at some lewd men within to this his prayer jove shook his sable chin and thundered from those pure clouds that above the breathing air in bright olympus move divine ulysses joyed to hear it roar report of which a woman miller bore straight to his ears for near to him their ground mills for his corn that twice six women found continual motion grinding barley meal and wheat man's marrow sleep the eyes did seal of all the other women having done their usual task which yet this dame alone had scarce given end to being of all the rest least fit for labour but when these sounds pressed her ears above the rumbling of her mill she let that stand looked out and heaven's steep hill saw clear and temperate which made her unware of giving any comfort to his care in that strange sign he prayed for thus invoke o king of men and gods a mighty stroke thy thundering hand laid on the cope of stars no cloud in all the air and therefore wars thou bidst to some men in thy sure ostent perform to me poor wretch the main event and make this day the last and most extreme in which the wooer's pride shall solace them with whorish banquets in ulysses roof that with sad toil to grind them meal enough have quite dissolved my knees vouchsafe then now thy thunders may their latest feast foreshow this was the boon ulysses begged of jove which with his thunder through his bosom drove a joy that this vaunt breathed why now these men despite their pride will jove make pay me pain by this had other maids than those that lay mixed with the wooers made a fire-like day amidst the hearth of the illustrious hall and then the prince like a celestial rose from his bed to his embalmed feet tied fair shoes his sword about his breast applied took to his hand his sharp piled lance and met amidst the entry his old nurse that set his haste at sudden stand to whom he said o oh, my loved nurse with what grace have you laid and fed my guest here could you so neglect his age to lodge him thus though all respect i give my mother's wisdom i must yet affirm it failed in this for she hath set at much more price a man of much less worth without his person's note and yet casts forth with ignominious hands for his form's sake a man much better do not fault make good son the faultless he was given his seat close to her side and food till he would eat wine till his wish was served for she required his wants and willed him all things he desired commanded her chief maids to make his bed but he as one whom sorrow only fed and all in fortune would not take his rest in bed and coverings fit for any guest but in the entry on an ox's hide never at tanner's his old limbs implied in warm sheep fells yet over all we cast a mantle fitting for a man more graced 
he took her answer left the house and went attended with his dogs to sift the event of private plots betwixt him and his sire in common council then the crew entire of all the household maids eurycleia bade bestir them through the house and see it clad in all best form gave all their parts and one she set to furnish every seat and throne with needleworks and purple cloths of state another set to scour and cleanse the plate another all the tables to make proud with porous sponges others she bestowed in all speed to the spring to fetch from thence fit store of water all at all expense of pains she willed to be for this to all should be a day of common festival and not a wooer now should seek his home elsewhere than there but all were bid to come exceeding early and to be raised to heaven with all the entertainment could be given they heard with greedy ears and everything put straight in practice twenty to the spring made speed for water many in the house took pains and all were both laborious and skilled in labour many fell to fell and cleave their wood and all did more than well then trooped the lusty wooers in and then came all from spring at their heels loaded men with slaughtered bronze of all the herd the prize that had been long fed up in several styes eumaeus and his men conveyed them there he seeing now the king began to cheer and thus saluted him how now my guest have yet your virtues found more interest in these great wooers good respects or still pursue they you with all their wanted ill i would to heaven eumaeus he replied the deities once would take in hand their pride that such unseemly fashions put in frame in others roofs as show no spark of shame thus these and to these came melanthius great guardian of the most egregious rich wooers herds consisting all of goats which he with two more drave and made their coats the sounding porticos of that fair court melanthius seeing the king this former sort of upland language gave what still stay here and dull these wooers with thy wretched cheer not gone for ever yet why now i see this strife of cuffs betwixt the beggary that yesterday essayed to get thee gone and thy more roguery needs will fall upon my hands to arbitrate thou wilt not hence till i set on thee thy ragged impudence is so fast-footed are there not beside other great banquetants but you must tide at anchor still with us he said nothing but thought ill enough and shook his head then came philetius a chief of men that to the wooers all devouring den a barren steer grave and fat goats for they in custom were with traffickers by sea that who they would sent and had utterance there and for these likewise the fair porches were hurdles and sheep pens as in any fair philetius took note in his repair of seen ulysses being a man as well given to his mind's use as to buy and sell or do the drudgery that the blood desired and standing near eumaeus this inquired what guest is this that makes our house of late his entertainer whence claims he the state his birth in this life holds what nation what race what country stands his speech upon or hardly portioned by the terrible fates the structure of his lineaments relates a king's resemblance in his pomp of reign even thus in these rags but poorering men that have no firm home but range here and there as need compels god keeps in this earth's sphere as under water and this tune he sings when he is spinning even the cares of kings thus coming to him with a kind of fear he took his hand and touched exceeding near with mere imagination of his worth this salutation he sent loudly forth health father stranger in another world be rich and happy though thou here art hurled at feet of never such insulting need o jove there lives no one god of thy seed more ill to man than thou thou takest no ruth when thou thyself hast got him in most truth to wrap him in the straits of most distress and in the curse of others wickedness my brows have sweat to see it and mine eyes broke all in tears when this being still the guise of worthiest men i have but only thought that down to these ills was ulysses wrought and that thus clad even he is error driven if yet he live and sees the light of heaven but if now dead and in the house of hell o oh me o oh good ulysses 
that my wheel did ever wish and when but half a man amongst the people cephalenian his bounty to his oxen's charge preferred one in that youth which now is grown a herd unspeakable for number and feed there with their broad heads as thick as of his ear a field of corn is to a man yet these some men advise me with this noted priest of wooers may devour and wish me drive up to their feasts with them that neither give his son respect though in his own free roof nor have the wit to fear the infallible proof of heavenly vengeance but make offer now this long lacked king's possessions to bestow in their self shares methinks the mind in me doth turn as fast as in a flood or sea a raging whirlpit doth to gather in to fishy death those swimmers in their sin or feeds a motion as circular to drive my herds away but while the sun bears up with life twere highness wrong to run to other people with them and to trust men of another earth and yet more just it were to venture their laws the main right made still their masters than at home lose quite their right in them and sit and grieve to see the wrong authorized by their gluttony and i had long since fled and tried the event with other proud kings since more insolent these are than can be borne but that even still i had a hope that this though born to ill would one day come from some coast and their last in his roof strew with ruins red and vast herdsman said he because thou art in show nor lewd nor indiscreet and that i know their rules in thee an understanding soul i'll take an oath that in thee shall control all doubt of what i swear be witness jove that swayest the first seat of the throne above this hospitable table and this house that still hold title for the strenuous son of laertes that if so you please your eyes shall witness laertiades arrived at home and all these men that reign in such excesses here shall here lie slain he answered stranger would just jove would sign what you have sworn in your eyes beams should shine what powers i manage and how these my hands would rise and follow where he first commands so said eumaeus praying all the sky that wise ulysses might arrive and try thus while they vowed the wooer sat as hard on his son's death but had their counsels scared for on their left hand did an eagle soar and in her sears a fearful pigeon bore which seen amphinomus presaged o friends our counsels never will receive their ends in this man's slaughter let us therefore ply our bloody feast and make his oxen die thus came they in cast off on seats their cloaks and fell to giving sacrificing strokes of sheep and goats the chiefly fat and great slew fed up swine and from the herd and eat the inwards roasted they disposed betwixt their then observers wine and flagons mixed the bowls eumaeus brought philetius bread melanthius filled the wine thus drank and fed the feastful wooers then the prince in grace of his close project did his father place amidst a paved entry in a seat seamless and abject a small board and meat of the only inwards in a cup of gold yet set him wine and bade him now drink bold all his approaches he himself would free gainst all the wooers since he would not see his court made popular but that his sire built it to his use therefore all the fire blown in the wooers spleens he bade suppress and that in hands nor words should they digress from that set peace his speech did then proclaim they bit their lips and wondered at his aim in that brave language when antinous said though this speech grecians be a mere upbraid yet this time give it pass the will of jove forbids the violence of our hands to move but of our tongues we keep the motion free and therefore if his further jollity tempt our encounter with his braves let's check his growing insolence though pride to speak fly passing high with him the wise prince made no more spring of his speech but let it fade and now the heralds bore about the town the sacred hecatomb to whose renown the fair-haired greeks assembled and beneath apollo's shady wood the holy death they put to fire which made enough they drew divided all that did in the end accrue to glorious satisfaction those that were disposers of the feast did equal cheer bestow on wretched laertiades with all the wooers souls it so did please telemachus to charge them 
and for these minerva would not see the malices the wooers bore too much contained that so ulysses moved heart might yet higher flow in wreakful anguish there was wooing there amongst the rest a gallant that did bear the name of one well learned in jest profane his name ctesippus born a Sanian, who proud because his father was so rich had so much confidence as did bewitch his heart with hope to wed ulysses wife and this man said hear me my lords in strife for this great widow this her guest did share even feast with us with very comely care of him that ordered it for tis not good nor equal to deprive guests of their food and specially whatever guest makes way to that house where telemachus doth sway and therefore i will add to his receipt a gift of very hospitable weight which he may give again to any maid that bathes his grave feet and her pains see paid or any servant else that the divine ulysses lofty battlements confine thus snatched he with a valiant hand from out the poor folk's common basket a neat's foot and threw it at ulysses who his head shrunk quietly aside and let it shed his malice on the wall the suffering man a laughter raising most sardinian with scorn and wrath mixed at the samian whom thus the prince reproved your valour won much graze ctesippus and hath eased your mind with mighty profit yet you see it fine no mark it aimed at the poor stranger's part himself made good enough to scape your dart but should i serve thee worthily my lance should strike thy heart through and in place to advance thyself in nuptials with his wealth thy sire should make thy tomb here that the foolish fire of all such valours may not dare to show these foul indecencies to me i now have years to understand my strength and know the good and bad of things and am no more at your large sufferance to behold my store consumed with patience see my cattle slain my wine exhausted and my bread in vain spent on your license for to one then young so many enemies were matched too strong but let me never more be witness to your hostile minds nor those base deeds ye do for should ye kill me in my offered reek i wish it rather and my death would speak much more good of me than to live and see indignity upon indignity my guests provoked with bitter words and blows my women servants dragged about my house to lust and rapture this made silence seize the house throughout till damasterides at length the calm break and said friend forbear to give a just speech a disdainful ear the guest no more touch nor no servant here myself will to the prince and queen command a motion grateful if they please to lend grateful receipt as long as any hope left wise ulysses any passage ope to his return in our conceits so long the queen's delays to our demand stood strong in cause and reason and our quarrels thus with guests the queen or her telemachus set never foot amongst our liberal feast or should the king return though thought deceased it had been gain to us in finding him to lose his wife but now since nothing dim the days break out that show he never more shall reach the dear touch of his country's shore sit by your mother in persuasion that now it stands her honour much upon to choose the best of us and who gives most to go with him home for so all things lost in sticking on our haunt so you shall clear recover in our no more concourse here possess your birthright wholly eat and drink and never more on our disgraces think by jove no agelaus for i swear by all my father's sorrows who doth err far off from ithaca or rests in death i am so far from spending but my breath to make my mother any more defer her wished nuptials that i'll counsel her to make her free choice and besides will give large gifts to move her but i fear to drive or charge her hence for god will not give way to any such course if i should assay at this minerva made for foolish joy the wooers mad and roused their late annoy to such a laughter as would never down they laughed with others cheeks ate meat overflown with their own bloods their eyes stood full of tears for violent joys their souls yet thought of fears which theoclaminus expressed and said o wretches why sustain ye well appaid your imminent ill a night with which death sees your heads and faces hides beneath your knees shrieks burn about you your eyes thrust out tears 
these fixed walls and that main beam that bears the whole house up in bloody torrents fall the entry full of ghosts stands full the hall of passengers to hell and under all the dismal shades the sun sinks from the poles and troubled air pours bane about your souls they sweetly laughed at this eurymachus to mox disposed and said this new come to us is surely mad conduct him forth to light in the open market-place he thinks tis night within the house eurymachus said he i will not ask for any guide of thee i both my feet and joy have ears and eyes and no mad soul within me and with these will i go forth the doors because i know that imminent mischief must abide with you which not a man of all the wars here shall fly or scape ye all too highly bear your uncurbed heads impieties ye commit and every man affect with forms unfit this said he left the house and took his way home to piraeus who as free as day was of his welcome when the wooers eyes changed looks with one another and their guise of laughter still held on still eased their breasts of will to set the prince against his guests affirming that of all the men alive he worst luck had and proved at worst to give guests entertainment for he had one there a wandering hunter out of provender an errant beggar every way yet thought he was so hungry that he needed not but wine and victuals, nor knew how to do nor had a spirit to put a knowledge to but lived an idle burthen to the earth another then stepped up and would lay forth his lips in prophecy thus but would he hear his friend's persuasions he should find it were more profit for him to put both abroad for the sicilian people that afford these feet of men good price and this would bring good means for better guess these words made wing to his ears idly who had still his eye upon his father looking fervently when he would lay his long withholding hand on those proud wooers and within command of all this speech that passed icarius's heir the wise penelope her royal chair had placed of purpose their high dinner then with all pleased palates these ridiculous men fell sweetly to as joying they had slain such store of banquet but there did not reign a bitterer banquet planet in all heaven than that which pallas had to that day driven and with her able friend now meant to oppose since they till then were in deserts so gross End of the twentieth book. The twenty first book of the Odysseys of Homer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The twenty first book of the Odysseys of Homer. Translated by George Chapman the argument penelope proposeth now to him that draws ulysses boat her instant nuptials ithacus eumaeus and philetius gives charge for guarding of the gates and he his shaft shoots through the plates another argument fie the nuptial vow and game rehearsed drawn is the bow the steels are pierced Pallas, the goddess with the sparkling eyes, excites Penelope to object a prize. The bow and bright steels to the wooer's strength, and here began the strife and blood at length. She first ascended by a lofty stair her utmost chamber, of whose door her fair and half transparent hand received the key. Bright, brazen, bitted passing curiously, and at it hung a knob of ivory and this did lead her where was strongly kept the treasure royal in whose store lay heaped gold brass and steel engraven with infinite art the crooked bow and arrowy quiver part of that rich magazine in the quiver were arrows a number sharp and sighing gear the bow was given by kind eurydotes iphitus fashioned like the deities to young ulysses when within the roof of wise orsilicus their pass had proof of mutual meeting in messina where ulysses claimed a debt to whose pay were the whole messenian people bound since they from ithaca had forced a wealthy prey of sheep and shepherds in their ships they thrust three hundred sheep together for whose just and instant rendry old laertes sent ulysses his ambassador 
that went a long way in the embassy yet then bore but the foremost prime of youngest men his father sending first to that affair his gravest counsellors and then his heir iphitus made his way there having lost twelve female horse and mules commended most for use of burthen which were after cause of death and fate to him for past all laws of hospitality jove's mighty son skilled in great acts was his confusion close by his house though at that time his guest respecting neither the opposed feast and hospitable table that in love he set before him nor the voice of jove but seizing first his mares he after slew his host himself from those mares search now grew ulysses known to iphitus who that bow at their encounter did in love bestow which great eurytus's hand had borne before iphitus's father who at death's sad door in his steep turrets left it to his son ulysses gave him a keen falchion and mighty lance and thus began they there their fatal loves for after never were their mutual tables to each other known because jove's son the unworthy part had shown of slaughtering this godlike loving man eurytus's son who with that bow began and ended love to ulysses who so dear a gift esteemed it that he would not bear in his black fleet that guest right to the war but in fit memory of one so far in his affection brought it home and kept his treasure with it where till now it slept and now the queen of women had intent to give it use and therefore made ascent up all the stairs height to the chamber door whose shining leaves two bright pilasters bore to such a close when together went it would resist the air in their consent the ring she took then and did draw aside a bar that ran within and then implied the key into the lock which gave a sound the bolt then shooting as in pasture ground a bull doth low and make the valleys ring so loud the lock hummed when it loosed the spring and ope the doors flew in she went along the lofty chamber that was boarded strong with heart of oak which many years ago the architect did smooth and polish so that now as then he made it freshly shine and tried the evenness of it with a line there stood in this room presses that enclosed robes odiferous by which reposed the bow upon pins nor from it far hung the round quiver glittering like a star both which her white extended hand took down then sat she low and made her lap a crown of both these relics which she wept to see and cried quite out with loving memory of her dear lord to whose worth paying then kind debts enow she left and to the men vowed to her wing brought the crooked bow and shaft receiving quiver that did flow with arrows beating size up where they fell then with another chest replete as well with games won by the king of steel and brass her maids attended past whom making pass to where her wooers were she made her stay amidst the fair hall door and kept the ray of her bright countenance hid with veil so thin that though they seemed to expose they let love in her maids on both sides stood and thus she spake hear me ye wooers that a pleasure take to do me sorrow and my house invade to eat and drink as if it were only made to serve your rapines my lord long away and you allowed no colour for your stay but his still absence striving who shall frame me for his wife and since tis made a game i here propose divine ulysses bow for that great masterpiece to which ye vow he that can draw it with least show to strive and through these twelve axe heads an arrow drive him will i follow and this house forego that nourished me a maid now furnished so with all things fit and which i so esteem that i shall still live in it in my dream this said she made eumaeus give it them he took and laid it by and wept for woe and like him wept philetius when the bow of which his king was bare he beheld their tears and tenuous's manhood much refelled and said ye rustic fools that still each day your minds give over to this vain dismay why weep ye wretches and the widow's eyes tempt with renewed thought that would otherwise dispose her sorrows since her lord is dead and tears are idle sit and eat your bread nor whisper more a word or get ye gone and weep without doors 
let this bow alone to our outmet contention for i fear the bow will scarce yield draught to any here here no such man lives as laertes son amongst us all i knew him thought puts on his looks sight now methinks though then a child thus showed his words doubt yet his hopes instilled his strength the stretcher of ulysses string and his steel's piercer but his shaft must sing through his pierced pallet first whom he so wronged in his free roof and made the rest ill-tongued against his virtues then the sacred heat that inspired his son did further set their confidence on fire and said o friends job hath bereft my wits the queen intends though i must grant her wise ere long to leave ulysses court and to her bed receive some other lord yet notwithstanding i am forced to laugh and set my pleasures high like one mad sick but wooers since ye have an object for your trials now so brave as all the broad achaean earth exceeds as sacred pylos as the argive breeds as black epirus as mycenae's birth and as the more famed ithacensian earth all which yourselves well know and oft have said for what need hath my mother of my aid in her advancement tender no excuse for least delay nor too much time profuse in stay to draw this bow but draw it straight shoot and the steels pierce make all see how slight you make these poor bars to so rich a prize no eagerer yet come all my faculty shall try the bow's strength and the pierced steel i will not for my reverend mother feel the sorrows that i know will seize my heart to see her follow any and depart from her so long held home but first extend the bow and arrow to her tender end for i am only to succeed my sire in guard of his games and let none aspire to their besides possession this said his purple robe he cast off by he laid his well-edged sword and first a several pit he digged for every axe and strengthened it with earth close rammed about it on a rue he set them of one height by a line he drew along the whole twelve and so orderly did every deed belonging yet his eye never before beholding how twas done that in amaze stood all his lookers-on then stood he near the door and proved to draw the stubborn bow thrice tried and thrice gave law to his uncrowned attempts the fourth assay with all force offering which a sign gave stay given by his father though he showed a mind as if he stood right heartily inclined to perfect the exploit when all was done in only drift to set the wooers on his weakness yet confessed he said o oh, shame i either shall be ever of no name but prove a wretch or else i am too young and must not now presume on power so strong as sinews yet more growing may engraft to turn a man quite over with a shaft besides to men whose nerves are best prepared all great adventures at first proof are hard but come you stronger men attempt this bow and let us end our labour thus below a well-joined board he laid it and close by the brightly headed shaft then throned his thigh amidst his late left seat antinous then bade all arise but first who did sustain the cup state ever and did sacrifice before they ate still and that man bade rise since on the other's right hand he was placed because he held the right hand's rising graced with best success still this discretion won supreme applause and first rose enops's son Lyades, that was priest to all the rest sat lowest with the cup still and their jest could never like but ever was the man that checked their follies and he now began to taste the bow the sharp shaft took tugged hard and held aloft and till he quite had marred his delicate tender fingers could not stir the churlish string who therefore did refer the game to others saying that the same bow in his presage would prove the overthrow of many a chief man there nor thought the fate was any whit austere since death's short date were much the better taken than long life without the object of their amorous strife from whom they had burned out so many days to find still other nothing but delays obtaining in them and affirm that now some hope to have her 
but when that tough bow they all had tried and seen the utmost done they must rest pleased to cease and now some one of all their other fair-veiled grecian dames with gifts and dower and hymeneal flames let her love light to him that most will give and whom the nuptial destiny did drive thus laid he on the well-joined polished board the bow and bright piled shaft and then restored his seat his right to him antinous gave bitter language and reproved him thus what words laodes pass thy speeches guard that tis a work to bear and set so hard they set up my disdain this bow must end the best of us since thy arms cannot lend the string least motion thy mother's throes brought never forth thy arms to draught of bows or knitting shafts off though thou canst not draw the sturdy plant thou art to us no law Balanthius, light a fire and set thereat a chair and cushions and that mass of fat that lies within bring out that we may set our pages to this bow to see it het and suppled with the suet and then we may give it draught and pay this great decree utmost performance he a mighty fire gave instant flame put into act the entire command laid on him chair and cushions set laid on the bow which straight the pages het chafed suppled with the suet to their most and still was all their unctuous labour lost all wooers strengths too indigent and poor to draw that bow antinous's arms it tore and great eurymachus's the both clear best yet both it tired and made them glad to rest forth then went both the swains and after them divine ulysses when being past the extreme of all the gates with winning words he tried their loves and this asked shall my counsels hide their depths from you my mind would gladly know if suddenly ulysses had his vow made good for home and had some god to guide his steps and strokes to wreak these wooers pride would your aids join on his part or with theirs how stand your hearts affected they made prayers that some god would please to return their lord he then should see how far they would afford their lives for his he seeing their truth replied i am your lord though many a sufferance tried arrive now here whom twenty years have held from forth my country yet are not concealed from my sure knowledge your desires to see my safe return of all the company now serving here besides not one but you mine ear hath witnessed willing to bestow their wishes of my life so long held dead i therefore vow which shall be perfected that if god please beneath my hand to leave these wars lifeless ye shall both receive wives from that hand and means and near to me have houses built to you and both shall be as friends and brothers to my only son and that ye may well know me and be one to that assurance the infallible sign the white-toothed boar gave this marked knee of mine when in parnassus he was held in chase by me and by my famous grandsire's race i'll let you see thus severed he his weed from that his wound and every word had deed in their sure knowledges which made them cast their arms about him his broad breast embraced his neck and shoulders kissed and him as well did those true powers of human love compel to kiss their heads and hands and to their moan had sent the free light of the cheerful sun had not ulysses broke the ruth and said cease tears and sorrows lest we prove displayed by some that issue from the house and they relate to those within take each his way not all together in but one by one first i then you and then see this be done the envious wooers will by no means give the offer of the bow and arrow leave to come at me spite then their pride do thou my good eumaeus bring both shaft and bow to my hand's proof and charge the maids before that instantly they shut every door that they themselves if any tumult rise beneath my roofs by any that envies my will to undertake the game may gain no passage forth but close at work contain with all free quiet or at least constrained and therefore my philetius see maintained when close the gates are shut their closure fast to which end be it thy sole work to cast their chains before them this said in he led 
took first his seat and then they seconded his entry with their own then took in hand eurymachus the bow made close his stand aside the fire at whose heat here and there he warmed and suppled it yet could not steer to any draught the string with all his art and therefore swelled in him his glorious heart affirming that himself and all his friends had cause to grieve not only that their ends they missed in marriage since enough besides kind grecian dames there lived to be their brides in ithaca and other bordering towns but that to all times future their renowns would stand disparaged if ulysses bow they could not draw and yet his wife would woo antinous answered that there could ensue no shame at all to them for well he knew that this day was kept holy to the sun by all the city and there should be done no such profane act therefore bade lay by the bow for that day but the mastery of axes that were set up still might stand since that no labour was nor any hand would offer to invade ulysses house to take or touch with surreptitious or violent hand what there was left for use he therefore bade the cup-bearer infuse wine to the bowls that so with sacrifice they might let rest the shooting exercise and in the morning make melanthius bring the chief goats of his herd that to the king of bows and archers they might burn the thighs for good success and then attempt the prize the rest sat pleased with this the herald straight poured water on their hands each page did wait with his crowned cup of wine served every man till all were satisfied and then began ulysses plot of his close purpose thus hear me ye much renowned eurymachus and king antinous in chief who dwell and with decorum sacred doth compel this day's observance and to let lay down the bow all this light giving gods their own the morning's labour god the more will bless and strength bestow where he himself shall please against which time let me presume to pray your favours with the rest that this assay may my old arms prove trying if there lie in my poor powers the same activity that long since crowned them or if needy fair and desolate wanderings have the web worn bare of my life's thread at all parts that no more can furnish these affairs as heretofore this hath their spleen's past measure blown with fear lest his loathed temples would the garland wear of that bow's draught and tenuous using speech to this sour purpose thou most errant wretch of all guest breathing in no least degree graced with a human soul it serves not thee to feast in peace with us take equal share of what we reach to sit and all things here that we speak freely which no begging guest did ever yet but thou must make request to mix with us in merit of the queen but wine inflames thee that hath ever been the bane of men whoever yet would take the excess it offers and the mean forsake wine spoiled the centaur great eurition in guest rites with a mighty-minded son of bold ixion in his way to war against the lapathies who driven as far as madness with the bold effects of wine did outrage to his kind host and declined other heroes from him feasted there with so much anger that they left their cheer and dragged him forth the forecourt slit his nose cropped both his ears and in the ill dispose his mind then suffered drew the fatal day on his head with his host for thence the fray between the centaurs and the lapathies had moral act but he for his excess in spoil of wine fared worse himself as thou for thy large cups if thy arms draw the bow my mind foretells shall fear for not a man of all our consort that in wisdom can boast any fit share will take prayers then but to echethus the most stern of men a black sail freight with thee whose worst of ill be sure is past all ransom sit then still drink temperately and never more contend with men your youngers this the queen did end with her defence of him and told his foe it was not fair nor equal to overcrow the poorest guests her son pleased to entertain in his free turrets with so proud a strain of threats and bravings asking if he thought that if the stranger to his arms had brought the stubborn bow down he should marry her and bear her home and said himself should err in no such hope nor of them all the best that grieved at any good she did her guest should banquet there 
since it in no sort showed no bless in them nor paid her what she owed her own free rule there this eurymachus confirmed and said nor feeds it hope in us icarius's daughter to solemnize rites of nuptials with thee nor in noblest sights it can show comely but to our respects the rumour both of sexes and of sects amongst the people would breed shame and fear lest any worst greek said see men that were of mean deservings will presume to aspire to his wife's bed whom all men did admire for fame and merit could not draw his bow and yet his wife had foolish pride to woo when straight an errant beggar comes and draws the bow with ease performing all the laws the gain besides contained and this would thus prove both indignity and shame to us the queen replied the fame of men i see bears much price in your great supposed degree yet who can prove amongst the people great that of one so esteemed of them the seat doth so defame and ruin and beside with what right is this guest thus vilified in your high censures when the man in blood is well composed and great his parents good and therefore give the bow to him to try his birth and breeding by his chivalry if his arms draw it and that phoebus stands so great a glory to his strength my hands shall add this guerdon every sort of weed a two-edged sword and lance to keep him freed from dogs and men hereafter and dismiss his worth to what place tends that heart of his her son gave answer that it was a wrong to his free sway in all things that belonged to guard of that house to demand the bow of any wooer and the use bestow upon the stranger for the bow was his to give or to withhold no masteries of her proposing giving any power to impair his right in things for any wooer or any that rough ithaca affords any that elis of which no man's words nor powers should curb him stood he so inclined to see the bow in absolute gift resigned to that his guest to bear and use at will and therefore bade his mother keep her still amongst her women at her rock and loom bows were for men and this bow did become past all men's his disposure since his sire left it to him and all the house entire she stood dismayed at this and in her mind his wide words laid up standing so inclined as he had willed with all her women going up to her chamber there her tears bestowing as every night she did on her loved lord till sleep and palace her fit rest restored the bow eumaeus took and bore away which up in tumult and almost in fray put all the wars one inquiring thus whither rogue abject wilt thou bear from us that bow proposed lay down or i protest thy dog shall eat thee that thou nourishest to guard thy swine amongst whom left of all thy life shall leave thee if the festival we now observe to phoebus may our zeals grace with his aid and all the deities else this threat made good eubius yield the bow to his late place not knowing what might grow from such a multitude and then fell on telemachus with threats and said sit gone that bow yet further tis no servant's part to serve too many masters raise your heart and bear it off lest though you're younger yet with stones i pelt you to the field with it if you and i close i shall prove too strong i wish as much too hard for all this throng the gods would make me i should quickly send some after with just sorrow to their end they waste my victual so and ply my cup and do me such shrewd turn still this put up the wooers all in laughters and put down their angers to him that so late were grown so grave and bloody which resolved that fear of good eumaeus who did take and bear the king the bow called nurse and bade her make the doors all sure that if men's tumults take the ears of some within they may not fly but keep at work still close and silently these words put wings to her and close she put the chamber door the court gates then were shut by kind philetius who straight did go out from the hall and in the portico found laid a gable of a ship composed of spongy bulrushes with which he closed in winding round about them the court gates then took his place again to view the fates that quickly followed when he came he saw ulysses viewing ere he tried to draw the famous bow which every way he moved 
up and down turning it in which he proved the plight it was in fearing chiefly lest the horns were eat with worms in so long rest but what his thoughts intended turning so and keeping such a search about the bow the wooers little knowing fell to jest and said past doubt he is a man professed in boyer's craft and sees quite through the wood or something certain to be understood there is in this his turning of it still a cunning rogue he is at any ill then spake another proud one would to heaven i might at will get gold till he hath given that bow his draught with these sharp jests did these delightsome wooers their fatal humours please but when the wise ulysses once had laid his fingers on it and to proof surveyed the still sound plight it held as one of skill in song and of the harp doth at his will in tuning of his instrument extend a string out with his pin touch all and lend to every well wreathed string his perfect sound struck all together with such ease drew round the king the bow then twanged he up the string that as a swallow in the air doth sing with no continued tune but pausing still twinks out her scattered voice in accent shrill so sharp the string sung when he gave it touch once having bent and drawn it which so much amazed the wooers that their colours went and came most grievously and then jove rent the air with thunder which at heart did cheer the now enough sustaining traveller that jove again would his attempt enable then took he into hand from off the table the first drawn arrow and a number more spent shortly on the wooers but this one he measured by his arm as if not known the length were to him knocked it then and drew and through the axes at first hole flew the steel charged arrow which when he had done he thus bespake the prince you have not won disgrace yet by your guest for i have struck the mark i shot at and no such toil took in wearying the bow with fat and fire as did the wooers yet reserved entire thank heaven my strength is and myself am tried no man to be so basely vilified as these men please to think me but free way take that and all their pleasures and while day holds her torch to you and the hour of feast hath now full date give banquet and the rest poem and harp that grace a well-filled board this said he beckoned to his son whose sword he straight girt to him took to his hand his lance and complete armed did to his sire advance end of the twenty-first book the twenty-second book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil shamp the twenty-second book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument the wooers in minerva's sight slain by ulysses all the light and lustful housewives by his son and servants are to slaughter done another argument Kai the end of pride and lawless lust is wretched tried with slaughters just the upper rags that wise ulysses wore cast off he rusheth to the great hall door with bow and quiver full of shafts which down he poured before his feet and thus made known his true state to the wooers this strife thus hath harmless been decided now for us there rests another mark more hard to hit and such as never man before hath smit whose full point likewise my hands shall assay and try if phoebus will give me this day he said and off his bitter arrow thrust right at antinous and struck him just as he was lifting up the bowl to show that twixt the cup and lip much ill may grow death touched not at his thoughts at feast for who would think that he alone could perish so amongst so many and he best of all the arrow in his throat took full his fall and thrust his head far through the other side down fell his cup down he down all his pride straight from his nostrils gushed the human gore and as he fell his feet far overbore the feastful table all the roast and bread about the house strewed when his high-born head the rest beheld so low 
up rushed they all and ransacked every corner of the hall for shields and darts but all fled their far reach then fell they foul on him with terrible speech and told him it should prove the dearest shaft that ever passed him and that now was saft no shift for him but sure and sudden death for he had slain a man whose like did breathe in no part of the kingdom and that now he should no more for game strive with his bow but vultures eat him there these threats they spent yet every man believed that stern event chanced gainst the author's will o oh, fools to think that all their rest had any cup to drink but what their great antinous began he frowning said dogs see in me the man ye all held dead at troy my house it is that thus ye spoil and thus your luxuries file with my women's rapes in which ye woo the wife of one that lives and no thought show of man's fit fear or god's your present fame or any fair sense of your future name and therefore present and eternal death shall end your base life this made fresh fears breathe their former boldness every man had eye on all the means and studied ways to fly so deep deaths imminent but seeing none eurymachus began with suppliant moan to move his pity saying if you be this isle's ulysses we must all agree in grant of your reproof's integrity the greeks have done you many a wrong at home at field as many but of all the sum lies here contract in death for only he imposed the whole ill offices that we are now made guilty of and not so much sought his endeavours or in thought did touch at any nuptials but a greater thing employed his forces for to be our king was his chief object his sole plot it was to kill your son which jove's hand would not pass but set it to his own most merited end in which end your just anger nor extend your stern reek further spend your royal powers in mild ruth of your people we are yours and whatsoever waste of wine or food our liberties have made we'll make all good in restitutions call a court and pass a fine of twenty oxen gold and brass on every head and raise your most rate still till you are pleased with your confessed fill which if we fail to tender all your wrath it shall be justice in our bloods to bathe eurymachus said he if you would give all that your fathers hoard to make ye live and all that ever you yourself possess or shall by any industry increase i would not cease from slaughter till your bloods had brought out your intemperance in my goods it rests now for you that you either fight that will scape death or make your way by flight in whose best choice my thoughts conceive not one shall shun the death your first hath undergone this quite dissolved their knees eurymachus enforcing all their fears yet counselled thus o friends this man now he hath got the bow and quiver by him ever will bestow his most inaccessible hands at us and never leave if we avoid him thus till he hath strewn the pavement with us all and therefore join we swords and on him fall with tables forced up and borne in opposed against his sharp shafts when being round enclosed by all our onsets we shall either take his horrid person or for safety make his rage retire from out the hall and gates and then if he escape we'll make our states known to the city by our general cry and thus this man shall let his laugh shaft fly that ever his hand vaunted thus he drew his sharp-edged sword and with a table flew in on ulysses with a terrible throat his fierce charge urging but ulysses smote the board and cleft it through from end to end borne at his breast and made his shaft extend his sharp head to his liver his broad breast pierced at his nipple when his hand released forth with his sword that fell and kissed the ground with cups and victuals lying scattered round about the pavement amongst which his brow knocked the embrued earth while in pains did flow his vital spirits till his heels shook out his feastful life and hurled a throne about that way laid death's convulsions in his feet when from his tender eyes the light did fleet then charged anthinimus with his drawn blade the glorious king in purpose to have made his feet forsake the house 
but his assay the prince prevented and his lance gave way quite through his shoulder at his back his breast the fierce pile letting forth his ruin pressed groans from the pavement which his forehead struck telemachus his long lance then forsook left in Amphinomus, and to his sire made fiery pass not staying to acquire his lance again in doubt that while he drew the fixed pile some other might renew fierce charge upon him and his unharmed head cleave with his back-drawn sword for which he fled close to his father bade him arm and he would bring him shield and javelins instantly his own head arming more arms laying by to serve the swineherd and the oxherd valor well armed is ever most preferred run then said he and come before the last of these auxiliary shafts are passed for fear lest left alone they forced my stand from forth the ports he flew and brought to hand eight darts four shields four helms his own parts then first put in arms he furnished both his men that to their king stood close but he as long as he had shafts to friend enough was strong for all the wars and some one man still he made make even with the earth till all a hill had raised in the even floored hall his last shaft spent he set his bow against the beam and went to arm at all parts while the other three kept off the wooers who unarmed could be no great assailants in the well-built wall a window was thrust out at end of all the house's entry on whose utter side there lay a way to town and in it wide and two-leaved folds were forged that gave fit mean for flyers out and therefore at it then ulysses placed eumaeus in close guard one only pass ope to it which prepared in this sort by ulysses gainst all pass by agelaus's tardy memory was in question called who bade some one ascend at such a window and bring straight to friend the city with his clamour that this man might quickly shoot his last this no one can make safe access to said melanthius for tis too near the hall's fair doors whence thus the man afflicts ye for from thence there lies but one straight passage to it that denies access to all if any one man stand being one of courage and will countermand our offer to it but i know a way to bring you arms from where the king doth lay his whole munition and believe there is no other place to all the armories both of himself and son this said a pair of lofty stairs he climbed and to the affair twelve shields twelve lances brought as many casks with horsehair plumes and set to bitter tasks both son and sire then shrunk ulysses knees and his loved heart when thus in arms he sees so many wars and their shaken darts for then the work showed as it acts more parts to safe performance and he told his son that or melanthius or his maids had done a deed that foul war to their hands conferred o oh, father replied he tis i have erred in this caused labour i and none but i that left the door ope of your armoury but some it seems hath set a sharper eye on that important place eumaeus haste and shut the door observing who hath passed to this false action any maid or one that i suspect more which is dolius's son while these spake thus melanthius went again for more fair arms when the renowned swain eumaeus saw and told ulysses straight it was the hateful man that his conceit before suspected who had done that ill and being again there asked if he should kill if his powers served or he should bring the swain to him to inflict on him a several pain for every forfeit he had made his house he answered i and my telemachus will here contain these proud ones in despite how much soever these stolen arms excite their guilty courages while you two take possession of the chamber the doors make sure at your back and then surprising him his feet and hands bind wrapping every limb in pliant chains and with a halter cast above the wind-beam at himself made fast aloft the column draw him where alive he long may hang and pains enough deprive his vexed life before his death succeed this charge soon heard as soon they put to deed 
stole on his stealth and at the further end of all the chamber saw him busily bend his hands to more arms when they still at door watched his return at last he came and bore in one hand a fair helm in the other held a broad and ancient rusty rested shield that old laertes in his youth had worn of which the cheek-bands had with age been torn they rushed upon him caught him by the hair and dragged him in again whom crying out they cast upon the pavement wrapped about with sure and pinching cords both foot and hand and then in full act of their king's command a pliant chain bestowed on him and hauled his body up the column till he scaled the highest wind-beam where made firmly fast eumaeus on this just infliction passed this pleasurable cavil now you may all night keep watch here and the earliest day discern being hung so high to rouse from rest your dainty cattle to the wooer's feast there as befits a man of mien so fair soft may you sleep not under you but air and so long hang you thus they left him there made fast the door and with ulysses were all armed in the instant then they all stood close their minds fire breathed in flames against their foes four in the entry fighting all alone when from the hall charged many a mighty one but to them then jove's seed minerva came resembling mentor both in voice and frame of manly person passing well a paid ulysses was and said now mentor aid gainst these odd mischiefs call to memory now my often good to thee and that we two of one year's life are thus he said but thought it was minerva that had ever brought to her side safety on the other part the wooers threatened but the chief in heart was agelaus who to mentor spake mentor let no words of ulysses make thy hand a fighter on his feeble side against all us wooers for we firm abide in this persuasion that when sire and son our swords have slain thy life is sure to run one fortune with them what strange acts hast thou conceit to form here thy head must bestow the reek of theirs on us and when thy powers are taken down by these fierce steels of ours all thy possessions indoors and without must raise on heap with this and all thy rout of sons and daughters in thy turrets bleed reek offerings to us and our town stand freed of all charge with thy wife minerva's heart was fired with these braves the approved desert of her ulysses chiding saying no more thy force nor fortitude as heretofore will gain thee glory when nine years at troy white-wristed helen's rescue did employ thy arms and wisdom still and ever used the bloods of thousands through the field diffused by thy vast valour priam's broad wade town by thy grave parts was sacked and overthrown and now amongst thy people and thy goods against the wooers base and petulant bloods stints thou thy valour rather mourning here thy manly fighting come friend stand we near and note my labour that thou mayest discern amongst thy foes how mentor's nerves will earn all thy old bounties this she spake but stayed her hand from giving each way often swayed uncertain conquest to his certain use but still would try what self-powers would produce both in the father and the glorious son then on the wind-beam that along did run the smoky roof transformed minerva sat like to a swallow sometimes cuffing at the swords and lances rushing from her seat and up and down the troubled house did beat her wing at every motion and as she had roused ulysses so the enemy the master's son excited polybus and phinemus and demoptolemus eurynimus and polycterides for these were men that of the wooing priests were most egregious and the clearly best in strength of hand of all the desperate rest that yet survived and now fought for their souls which straight swift arrows sent among the fowls but first the master's son had more spare breath to spend on their excitements ere his death and said that now ulysses would forbear his dismal hand since mentor's spirit was there and blue vain vaunts about ulysses ears in whose trust he would cease his massacres rest him and put his friends huge boasts in proof 
and so was he beneath the entry's roof left with telemachus and the other two at whom said he discharge no darts but throw all at ulysses rousing his faint rest whom if we slaughter by our interest in jove's assistance all the rest may yield our powers no care when he strews once the field as he then willed they all at random threw where they supposed he rested and then flew minerva after every dart and made some strike the threshold some the walls invade some beat the doors and all acts rendered vain their grave steel offered which escaped again came on ulysses saying o oh, that we the wooers troop with our joint archery might so assail that where their spirits dream on our deaths first we first may slaughter them thus the much sufferer said and all let fly when every man struck dead his enemy ulysses slaughtered demoptolemus eurydes by young telemachus his death encountered good eumaeus slew elatus and philetius overthrew pisander all which tore the paved floor up with their teeth the rest retired before their second charge to inner rooms and then ulysses followed from the slaughtered men their darts first drawing while which work was done the wooers threw with huge contention to kill them all when with her swallowing minerva cuffed and made their javelins ring against the doors and thresholds as before some yet did graze upon their marks one tore the prince's wrist which was amphimedon the extreme part of the skin but touched upon ctesippus over good eumaeus's shield his shoulders top did taint which yet did yield the lance free pass and gave his hurt the ground again then charged the wooers and girt round ulysses with their lances who turned head and with his javelin struck eurydamus dead telemachus dislived amphimedon eumaeus polybus philetius won ctesippus's bosom with his dart and said in quittance of the jester's part he played the neat's foot hurling at ulysses now great son of polytherses you that vow your wit to bitter taunts and love to wound the heart of any with a jest so crowned your wit be with a laughter never yielding to fools in folly but your glory building on putting down in fooling spitting forth puffed words of all sorts cease to scoff at worth and leave revenge of vile words to the gods since their wits bear the sharper edge by odds and in meantime take the dart i drave for that right hospitable foot you gave divine ulysses begging but his own thus spake the black ox herdsman and straight down ulysses struck another with his dart the master's son telemachus did part just in the midst the belly of the fair evenor's son his fierce pile taking air out at his back flat fell he on his face his whole brows knocking and did mark the place and now manslaughtering pallas took in hand her snake fringed shield and on that beam took stand in her true form where swallow like she sat and then in this way of the house and that the wooers wounded at heart with fear fled the encounter as in pastures where fat herds of oxen feed about the field as if wild madness their instincts impelled the high-fed bullocks fly whom in the spring when days are long gad bees or breezes sting ulysses and his son the flyers chased as when with crooked beaks and sears a cast of hill-bred eagles cast off at some game that yet their strength keep but put up in flame the eagle stoops from which along the field the poor fowls make wing this and that way yield their hard-flown pinions then the clouds essay for scape or shelter their forlorn dismay all spirit exhaling all wing strength to carry their bodies forth and trust up to the quarry their falconers ride in and rejoice to see their hawks perform a flight so fervently so in their flight ulysses with his air did stoop and cuff the wooers that the air broke in vast sighs whose heads they shot and cleft the pavement boiling with the souls they reft lyades running to ulysses took his knees and thus did on his name invoke ulysses let me pray to thee my place afford the reverence and to me the grace that never did or said to any dame thy court contained 
or deed or word to blame but others so affected i have made i lay down their insolence and if the trade they kept with wickedness have made them still despise my speech and use their wanted ill they have their penance by the stroke of death which their desert divinely warranteth but i am a priest amongst them and shall i that not hath done worth death amongst them die from thee this proverb then will men derive good turns do never their mere deeds survive he bending his displeased forehead said if you be priest among them as you plead yet you would marry and with my wife too and have descent by her for all that woo wish to obtain which they should never do dames husbands living you must therefore pray of force and oft in court here that the day of my return for him might never shine the death to me wished therefore shall be thine this said he took a sword up that was cast from agelaus having struck his last and on the priest's mid-neck he laid a stroke that struck his head off tumbling as he spoke then did the poet phemius whose surname was called terpiades who thither came forced by the wooers fly death but being near the court's great gate he stood and parted there into his counsels either to remove and take the altar of hercyon jove made sacred to him with a world of art engraved about it where were wont to impart laertes and ulysses many a thigh of broad-browed oxen to the deity or venture to ulysses clasp his knee and pray his ruth the last was the decree his choice resolved on twixt the royal throne and that fair table that the bowl stood on with which they sacrificed his harpy laid along the earth the king's knees hugged and said ulysses let my prayers obtain of thee my sacred skill's respect and ruth to me it will hereafter grieve thee to have slain a poet that doth sing to gods and men i of myself am taught for god alone all sorts of song hath in my bosom sown and i as to a god will sing to thee then do not thou deal like the priest with me thine own love's son telemachus will say that not to beg here nor with willing way was my access to thy high court addressed to give the wooers my song after feast but being many and so much more strong they forced me hither and compelled my song this did the prince's sacred virtue hear and to the king his father said forbear to mix the guiltless with the guilty's blood and with him likewise let our mercy save medon the herald that did still behave himself with care of my good from a child if by eumaeus yet he be not killed or by philetius nor your fury met while all this blood about the house is sweat this met on heard as lying hid beneath a throne set near half dead with fear of death a new-flayed ox-hide as but there thrown by his serious shroud made he lying there to fly but hearing this he quickly left the throne his ox-hide cast as quickly and as soon the prince's knees seized saying o oh, my love i am not slain but here alive and move abstain yourself and do not see your sire quench with my cold blood the unmeasured fire that flames in his strength making spoil of me his wrath's right for the wooer's injury ulysses smiled and said be confident this man hath saved and made thee different to let thee know and say and others see good life is much more safe than villainy go then sit free without from death within this much renowned singer from the sin of these men likewise quit both rest you there while i my house purge as it fits me here this said they went and took their seat without at jove's high altar looking round about expecting still their slaughter when the king searched round the hall to try life's hidden wing made from more death but all laid prostrate there in blood and gore he saw whole shoals they were and lay as thick as in a hollow creek without the white sea when the fishers break their many meshed draught net up there lie fish frisking on the sands and fain the dry wood for the wet change but the all-seeing beam the sun exhales hath sucked their lives from them so one by other sprawled the wooers there ulysses and his son then bid appear the nurse eurycleia 
to let her hear his mind in something fit for her affair he oped the door and called and said repair grave matron long since born that art our spy to all this house's servile housewifery my father calls thee to impart some thought that asks thy action his word found in naught her slack observance who straight oped the door and entered to him when himself before had left the hall but there the king she viewed amongst the slain with blood and gore embrued and as a lion skulking all in night far off in pastures and come home all dight in jaws and breastlocks with an ox's blood new feasted on him his looks full of mood so looked ulysses all his hands and feet freckled with purple when which sight did greet the poor old woman such works being for eyes of no soft temper out she break in cries whose vent though throughly opened he yet closed called her more near and thus her plaints composed forbear nor shriek thus but vent joys as loud it is no piety to bemoan the proud though ends befall them moving ne'er so much these are the portions of the gods to such men's own impieties in their instant acts sustain their plagues which are with stay but racked but these men gods nor men had in esteem nor good nor bad had any sense in them their lives directly ill were therefore cause that death in these stern forms so deeply draws recount then to me those licentious dames that lost my honour and their sex's shames i'll tell you truly she replied there are twice five and twenty women here that share all work amongst them whom i taught to spin and bear the just bands that they suffered in of all which only there were twelve that gave themselves to impudence and light behave nor me respecting nor herself the queen and for your son he hath but lately been of years to rule nor would his mother bear his empire where her women's labours were but let me go and give her notice now of your arrival sure some god doth show his hand upon her in this rest she takes that all these uproars bears and never wakes nor wake her yet said he but cause to come those twelve light women to this utter room she made all utmost haste to come and go and bring the women he had summoned so then both his swains and son he bade go call the women to their aid and clear the hall of those dead bodies cleanse each board and throne with wetted sponges which with fitness done he bade take all the strumpets twixt the wall of his first court and that room next the hall in which the vessels of the house were scoured and in their bosoms sheathed their every sword till all their souls were fled and they then felt twas but pain to sport with lawless men this said the women came all drowned in moan and weeping bitterly but first was done the bearing thence the dead all which beneath the portico they stowed where death on death they heaped together then took all the pains ulysses willed his son yet and the swains with paring shovels wrought the women bore their parings forth and all the clottered gore the house then cleansed they brought the women out and put them in a room so walled about that no means serve their sad estates to fly then said telemachus these shall not die a death that lets out any wanton blood and vents the poison that gave lust her food the body cleansing but a death that chokes the breath and altogether that provokes and seems as bellows to abhorred lust that both on my head poured depraves unjust and on my mother's scandaling the court with men debauched in so abhorred a sort this said a halser of a ship they cast about a cross-beam of the roof which fast they made about their necks in twelve parts cut and haled them up so high they could not put their feet to any stay as which was done look how a mavis or a pigeon in any grove caught with a springer net with struggling pinions gainst the ground doth beat her tender body and that then straight bed is sour to that swing in which she was bred so strive these taken birds till every one her pliant halter had enforced upon her stubborn neck and then aloft was hauled to wretched death a little space they sprawled their feet fast moving but were quickly still then fetched they down melanthius to fulfil the equal execution which was done in portal of the hall and thus begun they first slit both his nostrils 
cropped each ear his members tugged off which the dogs did tear and chopped up bleeding sweet and while red hot the vice abhorring blood was off they smote his hands and feet and there that work had end then washed they hands and feet that blood had stained and took the house again and then the king euryclea calling bade her quickly bring all ill expelling brimstone and some fire that with perfumes cast he might make entire the house's first integrity in all and then his timely will was she should call her queen and ladies still yet charging her that all the handmaids she should first confer she said he spake as fitted but before she held it fit to change the weeds he wore and she would others bring him that not so his fair broad shoulders might rest clad and show his person to his servants was to blame first bring me fire said he she went and came with fire and sulphur straight with which the hall and of the huge house all rooms capital he throughly sweetened then went nurse to call the handmaid servants down and up she went to tell the news and willed them to present their service to their sovereign down they came sustaining torches all and poured a flame of love about their lord with welcomes home with huggings of his hands with laboursome both heads and foreheads kisses and embraces and plied him so with all their loving graces that tears and sighs took up his whole desire for now he knew their hearts to him entire end of the twenty-second book the twenty-third book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by phil schempf the twenty-third book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument ulysses to his wife is known a brief sum of his travels shown himself his son and servants go to approve the wooer's overthrow another argument sigh for all a noise sustained before the true wife's joys now made the more the servants thus informed the matron goes up where the queen was cast in such repose affected with a fervent joy to tell what all this time she did with pain conceal her knees revoked their first strength and her feet were borne above the ground with wings to greet the long-grieved queen with news her king was come and near her said wake leave this withdrawn room that now your eyes may see at length though late the man returned which all the heavy date your woes have racked out you have longed to see ulysses is come home and hath set free his court of all your wooers slaughtering all for wasting so his goods with festival his house so vexing and for violence done so always varied to his only son she answered her the gods have made thee mad of whose power now thy powers such proof have had the gods can blind with follies wisest eyes and make men foolish so to make them wise for they have hurt even thy grave brain that bore an understanding spirit heretofore why hast thou waked me to more tears when moan hath turned my mind with tears into her own thy madness much more blameful that with lies thy haste is laden and both robs mine eyes of most delightsome sleep and sleep of them that now had bound me in his sweet extreme to embrace my lids and close my visual spheres i have not slept so much this twenty years since first my dearest sleeping mate was gone for that too ill to speak of ilion hence take your mad steps back if any maid of all my train besides a part had played so bold to wake and tell mine ears such lies i had returned her to her housewiferies with good proof of my wrath to such rude dames but go your years have saved their younger blames she answered her i nothing wrong your ear but tell the truth your long-missed lord is here and with the wooer's slaughter his own hand in chief exploit hath to his own command reduced his house and that poor guest was he that all those wooers wrought such injury 
telemachus had knowledge long ago that twas his father but his wisdom so observed his counsels to give sure end to that great work to which they did contend this called her spirits to their conceiving places she sprung for joy from blames into embraces of her grave nurse wiped every tear away from her fair cheeks and then began to say what nurse said over thus o nurse can this be true thou sayest how could that hand of his alone destroy so many they would still troop all together how could he then kill such numbers so united how said she i have not seen nor heard but certainly the deed is done we sat within in fear the doors shut to us and from thence might hear the sighs and groans of every man he slew but heard nor saw more till at length there flew your son's voice to mine ear that called to me and bade me then come forth and then i see ulysses standing in the midst of all your slaughtered wooers heaped up like a wall one on another round about his side it would have done you good to have described your conquering lord all smeared with blood and gore so like a lion straight then off they bore the slaughtered carcasses that now before the forecourt gates lie one on another piled and now your victor all the hall defiled with stench of hot death is perfuming round and with a mighty fire the hearth hath crowned thus all the death removed and every room made sweet and sightly that yourself should come his pleasure sent me come then take you now your mutual fills of comfort grief on you hath long and many sufferings laid which length with many sufferings now your virtuous strength of uncorrupted chasteness hath conferred a happy end to he that long hath erred is safe arrived at home his wife his son found safe and good all ill that hath been done on all the doers heads though long prolonged his right hath wreaked and in the place they wronged she answered do not you now laugh and boast as you had done some great act seeing most into his being for you know he won even through his poor and vile condition a kind of prompted thought that there was placed some virtue in him fit to be embraced by all the house but most of all by me and by my son that was the progeny of both our loves and yet it is not he for all the likely proofs ye plead to me some god hath slain the wars in disdain of the abhorred pride he saw so reign in those base works they did no man alive or good or bad whoever did arrive at their abodes once ever could obtain regard of them and therefore their so vain and vile deserts have found as vile an end but for ulysses never will extend his wished return to greece nor he yet lives how strange a queen you are said she that gives no truth your credit that your husband set close in his house at fire can purchase yet no faith of you but that he still is far from any home of his your wits at war with all credulity ever and yet now i'll name a sign shall force belief from you i bathed him lately and beheld the scar that still remains a mark too ocular to leave your heart yet blinded and i then had run and told you but his hand was fain to close my lips from the acclamation my heart was breathing and his wisdom won my still retention till he gave me leave and charge to tell you this now then receive my life for gauge of his return which take in any cruel fashion if i make all this not clear to you love nurse said she though many things thou knowest yet these things be veiled in the counsels the uncreated gods have long time masked in whose dark periods tis hard for thee to see into but come let's see my son the slain and him by whom they had their slaughter this said down they went when on the queen's part diverse thoughts were spent if all this given no faith she still should stand aloof and question more or his hugged hand and loved head she should at first assay with free given kisses when her doubtful way had passed the stony pavement she took seat against her husband in the opposite heat the fire then cast upon the other wall himself set by the column of the hall his looks cast downwards and expected still when her incredulous and curious will to shun ridiculous air and the shame to kiss a husband that was not the same would down and win enough faith from his sight 
she silent sat and her perplexed plight amaze encountered sometimes she stood clear he was her husband sometimes the ill wear his person had put on transformed him so that yet his stamp would hardly current go her son her strangeness seeing blamed her thus mother ungentle mother tyrannous is this too curious modesty you show why sit you from my father nor bestow a word on me to inquire and clear such doubt as may perplex you found man ever out one other such a wife that could forbear her loved lord's welcome home when twenty year in infinite sufferance he had spent apart no flint so hard is as a woman's heart son said she amaze contains my mind nor can i speak and use the common kind of those inquiries nor sustain to see with opposite looks his countenance if this be my true ulysses now returned there are tokens betwixt us of more fitness far to give me argument he is my lord and my assurance of him may afford my proofs of joy for him from all these eyes with more decorum than object their guise to public notice the much sufferer break in laughter out and to his son said take your mother from the priest that she may make her own proofs of me which perhaps may give more cause to the acknowledgments that drive their show thus off but now because i go so poorly clad she takes disdain to know so loath the creature for her loved lord let us consult then how we may accord the town to our late action some one slain hath made the all left slaughterer of him fain to fly his friends and country but our swords have slain a city's most supportful lords the chief peers of the kingdom therefore see you use wise means to uphold your victory see you to that good father said the son whose counsels have the sovereign glory won from all men living none will strive with you but with unquestioned girlands grace your brow to whom our whole alacrities we vow in free attendance nor shall our hands leave your onsets needy of supplies to give all the effects that in our powers can fall then this said he to me seems capital of all choice courses bathe we first and then attire we freshly all our maids and men enjoining likewise to their best attire the sacred singer then let touch his lyre and go before us all in graceful dance that all without to whose ears shall advance our cheerful accents or of travellers by or firm inhabitants solemnity of frolic nuptials may imagine here and this perform we lest the massacre of all our wooers be divulged about the ample city ere ourselves get out and greet my father in his grove of trees whereafter we will prove what policies olympias shall suggest to overcome our latest toils and crown our welcome home this all obeyed bathed put on fresh attire both men and women did then took his lyre the holy singer and set thirst on fire with songs and faultless dances all the court rung with the footings that the numerous sport from jocund men drew and fair girdled dames which heard abroad thus flew the common fames this sure the day is when the much wooed queen is richly wed o wretch that hath not been so constant as to keep her ample house till the utmost hour had brought her foremost spouse thus some conceived but little knew the thing and now eurynomy had bade the king smoothed him with oils and he himself attired in vestures royal her part then inspired the goddess pallas decked his head and face with infinite beauties gave a goodly grace of stature to him a much plumper plight through all his body breathed curls soft and bright adorned his head withal and made it show as if the flowery hyacinth did grow in all his pride there in the general trim of every lock and every curious limb look how a skilful artisan well seen in all arts metalline as having been taught by minerva and the god of fire doth gold with silver mix so that entire they keep their self-distinction and yet so that to the silver from the gold doth flow a much more artificial lustre than his own and thereby to the gold itself is grown a greater glory than if wrought alone both being struck off by either's mixtion so did minerva hers and his combine he more in her she more in him did shine 
like an immortal from the bath he rose and to his wife did all his grace dispose encountering this her strangeness cruel dame of all that breathe the gods past steel and flame have made thee ruthless life retains not one of all dames else that bears so overgrown a mind with abstinence as twenty years to miss her husband drowned in woes and tears and at his coming keep aloof and fair as of his so long absence and his care no sense had seized her go nurse make a bed that i alone may sleep her heart is dead to all reflection to him thus replied the wise penelope man hath deified tis not my fashion to be taken straight with bravest men nor poorest use to slight your mean appearance made not me retire nor this your rich show makes me now admire nor moves at all for what is all to me if not my husband all this certainty i knew at parting but so long apart the outward likeness holds no full desert for me to trust to go nurse see a dress a soft bed for him and the single rest himself affects so let it be the bed that stands within our bridal chamber stead which he himself made bring it forth from thence and see it furnished with magnificence this said she to assay him and did stir even his established patience and to her whom thus he answered woman your words prove my patience strangely who is it can move my bed out of his place it shall oppress earth's greatest understander and unless even god himself come that can easily grace men in their most skills it shall hold his place for man he lives not that as not most skilled so not most young shall easily make it yield if building on the strength in which he flows he adds both levers to and iron crows for in the fixture of the bed is shown a masterpiece a wonder and twas done by me and none but me and thus was wrought there was an olive tree that had his grot amidst a hedge and was of shadow proud fresh and the prime age of his verdure showed his leaves and arms so thick that to the eye it showed a column for solidity to this i had a comprehension to build my bridal bower which all of stone thick as the tree of leaves i raised and cast a roof about it nothing meanly graced put glued doors to it that oped art enough then from the olive every broad leaved bough i lopped away then felled the tree and then went over it both with my axe and plane both governed by my line and then i hewed my curious bedstead out in which i shewed work of no common hand all this begun i could not leave till to perfection my pains had brought it took my wimble bored the holes as fitted and did last afford the varied ornament which showed no want of silver gold and polished elephant an ox hide dyed in purple then i threw above the cords and thus to curious view i hope i have objected honest sign to prove i author not that is not mine but if my bed stand unremoved or no o woman passeth human wit to know this sunk her knees and heart to hear so true the signs she urged and first did tears ensue her rapt assurance then she ran and spread her arms about his neck kissed oft his head and thus the curious day she made excused ulysses be not angry that i use such strange delays to this since heretofore your suffering wisdom hath the garland wore from all that breathe and tis the gods that thus with mutual mist so long afflicting us have caused my coyness to our youths envied that wish society that should have tied our youths and years together and since now judgment and duty should our age allow as full joys therein as in youth and blood see all young anger and reproof withstood for not at first sight giving up my arms my heart still trembling lest the false alarms that words oft strike up should ridiculize me had argive helen known credulity would bring such plagues with it and her again as authoress of them all with that foul stain to her and to her country she had stayed her love and mixture from a stranger's bed but god impelled her to a shameless deed because she had not in herself decreed before the attempt that such acts still were shent as simply in themselves as in the event by which not only she herself sustains 
but we for her fault have paid mutual pains yet now since these signs of our certain bed you have discovered and distinguished from all earth's others no one man but you yet ever getting of it the only show nor one of all dames but myself and she my father gave old actor's progeny who ever guarded to ourselves the door of that thick shaded chamber i no more will cross your clear persuasion though till now i stood too doubtful and austere to you these words of hers so justifying her stay did more desire of joyful moan convey to his glad mind than if at an instant sight she had allowed him all his wishes right he wept for joy to enjoy a wife so fit for his great mind that knew his depth of wit and held chaste virtue at a price so high and as sad men at sea when shore is nigh which long their hearts have wished their ship quite lost by neptune's rigour and they vexed and tossed twixt winds and black waves swimming for their lives a few escaped and that few that survives all drenched in foam and brine crawl up to land with joy as much as they did world's command so dear to his wife was her husband's sight who still embraced his neck and had till light displayed her silver ensign if the dame that bears the blue sky intermixed with flame in her fair eyes had not infixed her thought on other joys for love's so hardly brought to long for meeting who the extended night withheld in long date nor would let the light her winged hoof horse join lampus phaeton those ever colts that bring the morning on to worldly men but in her golden chair down to the ocean by her silver hair bound her aspirings then ulysses said o wife nor yet are my contentions stayed a most unmeasured labour long and hard asks more performance to it being prepared by grave tiresias when down to hell i made dark passage that his skill might tell my men's return and mine but come and now enjoy the sweet rest that our fates allow the place of rest is ready she replied your will at full service since the deified have brought you where your right is to command but since you know god making understand your searching mind inform me what must be your last set labour since twill fall to me i hope to hear it after tell me now the greatest pleasure is before to know unhappy said ulysses to what end importune you this labour it will lend nor you nor me delight but you shall know i was commanded yet more to bestow my years in travel many cities more by sea to visit and when first for shore i left my shipping i was willed to take a naval oar in hand and with it make my passage forth till such strange men i met as knew no sea nor ever salt did eat with any victuals who the purple beaks of ships did never see nor that which breaks the waves in curls which is a fan-like oar and serves as wings with which a ship doth soar to let me know then when i was arrived on that strange earth where such a people lived he gave me this for an unfailing sign when any one that took that oar of mine borne on my shoulder for a corn cleanse fan i met ashore and showed to be a man of that land's labour there had i command to fix mine oar and offer on that strand to imperial neptune whom i must implore a lamb a bull and a sow ascending boar and then turn home where all the other gods that in the broad heaven made secure abodes i must solicit all my curious heed given to the several rites they have decreed with holy hecatombs and then at home a gentle death should seize me that would come from out the sea and take me to his rest in full ripe age about me living blessed my loving people to which he presaged the sequel of my fortunes were engaged if then said she the gods will please to impose a happier being to your fortunes close than went before your hope gives comfort strength that life shall lend you better days at length while this discourse spent mutual speech the bed your enemy and nurse had made and spread with richest furniture while torches spent their parcel gilt thereon to bed then went the aged nurse and where their sovereigns were your enemy the chambermaid did bear a torch and went before them to their rest 
to which she left them and for hers addressed the king and queen then now as newly wed resumed the old laws of the embracing bed telemachus and both his herdsmen then dissolved the dances both to maids and men who in their shady roofs took timely sleep the bride and bridegroom having ceased to keep observed love joys from their fit delight they turned to talk the queen then did recite what she had suffered by the hateful rout of harmful wooers who had eat her out so many oxen and so many sheep how many ton of wine their drinking deep had quite exhausted great ulysses then whatever slaughters he had made of men whatever sorrows he himself sustained repeated amply and her ears remained with all delight attentive to their end nor would one wink sleep till he told her all beginning where he gave the sicken's fall from thence his past the lotophagy the cyclops acts the putting out his eye and the reek of all the soldiers he had eat no less ruth shown to all they could entreat his way to aeolus his prompt receipt and kind dismission his enforced retreat by sudden tempest to the fishy main and quite distraction from his course again his landing at the least dragonian port where ships and men in miserable sort met all their spoils his ship and he alone got off from the abhorred confusion his pass to circe her deceits and arts his thence dissension to the infernal parts his life's course of the theban prophet learned where all the slaughtered grecians he discerned and loved mother his astonished ear with what the sirens voices made him hear his scape from the erring rocks with scylla was and rough charybdis with the dangerous pass of all that touched there his sicilian offence given to the sun his every man destroyed by thunder volleyed out of heaven that split his ship his own endeavours driven to shift for succours on the ogygian shore where nymph calypso such affection bore to him in his arrival that with feast she kept in inner caves and would have blessed his welcome life with an immortal state would he have stayed and lived her nuptial mate all which she never could persuade him to his pass to the phaeacian spent in woe their hearty welcome of him as he were a god descended from the starry sphere their kind dismission of him home with gold brass garments all things his occasions would this last word used sleep seized his weary eye that salves all care to all mortality in mean space pallas entertained intent that when ulysses thought enough time spent in love joys with his wife to raise the day and make his grave occasions call away the morning rose and he when thus he said o queen now satiate with afflictions laid on both our bosoms you oppress it here with cares for my return i everywhere by jove and all the deities tossed even till all our hope of my return was lost and both arrived at this sweet haven our bed be your care used to see administered my house possessions left those sheep that were consumed in surfeits by your wooers here i'll forage to supply with some and more the suffering grecians shall be made restore even till our stalls receive their wanted fill and now to comfort my good father's ill long suffered for me to the many treed and ample vineyard grounds it is decreed in my next care that i must haste and see his longed-for presence in the meantime be your wisdom used that since the sun ascended the fame will soon be through the town extended of those i here have slain yourself got close up to your chamber see you there repose cheered with your women and nor look afford without your court nor any man a word this said he armed to arms both son and swain his power commanding who did entertain his charge with spirit ope the gates and out he leading all and now was hurled about aurora's ruddy fire through all whose light minerva led them through the town from sight end of the twenty-third book the twenty-fourth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil schempf the twenty-fourth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman 
the argument by mercury the wooer's souls are ushered to the infernal pools ulysses with laertes met the people are in uproar set against them for the wooer's ends whom pallas stays and renders friends another argument omega the uproar's fire the people's fall the grandsire sire and son to all Silenian Hermes, with his golden rod, the wooer souls that yet retained abode amidst their bodies, called in dreadful rout forth to the infernals, who came murmuring out. And as amidst the desolate retreat of some vast cavern, made the sacred seat of austere spirits, bats with breasts and wings clasp fast the walls, and each to other clings, but swept off from their coverts up they rise and fly with murmurs in amazeful guise about the cavern so these grumbling rose and flock together down before them goes none hurting mercury to hell's broad ways and straight to those straits where the ocean stays his lofty current in calm deeps they flew then to the snowy rock they next withdrew and to the close of phoebus's orient gates the nation then of dreams and then the states of those souls idols that the weary dead gave up in earth which in a flowery mead had habitable situation and there they saw the soul of thetis's son of good patroclus brave antilochus and ajax the supremely strenuous of all the greeks hosts next pelion all which assembled about maia's son and to them then after came the mournful ghost of agamemnon with all those he lost in false aegisthus's court achilles then beholding there the mighty king of men deplored his plight and said o atreus's son of all heroes all opinion gave thee for jove's most loved since most command of all the greeks he gave thy eminent hand at siege of ilion where we suffered so and is the issue this that first in woe stern fate did therefore set thy sequel down none born past others fates can pass his own i wish to heaven that in the height of all our pomp at ilion fate had signed thy fall that all the greeks might have advanced to thee a famous sepulchre and fame might see thy son given honour in thy honoured end but now a wretched death did fate extend to thy confusion and thy issue's shame o thetis's son said he the vital flame extinct at ilion far from the argive fields the style of blessed to thy virtue yields about thy fall the best of greece and troy were sacrificed to slaughter thy just joy conceived in battle with some worth forgot in such a death as great apollo shot at thy encounters thy brave person lay hid in a dusty whirlwind that made way with human breaths spent in thy ruined state thou great were greatly valued in thy fate all day we fought about thee nor at all had ceased our conflict had not jove let fall a storm that forced off our unwilling feet but having brought thee from the fight to fleet thy glorious person bathed and balmed we lay aloft a bed and round about thee paid the greeks warm tears to thy deplored decease quite daunted cutting all their curls increase thy death grave of divine voice through the seas that started up thy mother from the waves and all the marine godheads left their caves consorting to our fleet her rapt repair the greeks stood frighted to see sea and air and earth combined so in thy losses sense had taken ship and fled forever thence if old much knowing nestor had not stayed there rushing off his counsels having swayed in all times former with such cause their courses who bade contain themselves and trust their forces for all they saw was thetis come from sea with others of the watery progeny to see and mourn for her deceased son which stayed the fears that all to flight had won and round about thee stood the old sea god seeds wretchedly mourning their immortal weeds spreading upon thee all the sacred nine of deathless muses paid thee dues divine by varied turns their heavenly voices venting all in deep passion for thy death consenting 
and then of all our army not an eye you could have seen undrowned in misery the moving muse so ruled in every mind full seventeen days and nights our tears confined to celebration of thy mourned end both men and gods did in thy moan contend the eighteenth day we spent about thy heap of dying fire black oxen fat as sheep we slew past number then the precious spoil thy course we took up which with floods of oil and pleasant honey we embalmed and then wrap thee in those robes that the gods did reign in which we gave thee to the hallowed flame to which a number of heroical name as pressed to sacrifice their vital right to thy dead ruins while so bright they burned both foot and horse break in and fought and mourned in infinite tumult but when all the night the rich flame lasted and that wasted quite thy body was with the enamoured fire we came in early morn and an entire collection made of every ivory bone which washed in wine and given fit unction a two-eared bowl of gold thy mother gave by bacchus given her and did form receive from vulcan's famous hand which o renowned great thetis's son with thy fair bones we crowned mixed with the bones of menetiades and brave antelicus who in decease of thy patroclus was thy favours dear about thee then a matchless sepulchre the sacred host of the achaeans raised upon the hellespont where most it seized for height and conspicuity the eyes of living men and their posterities thy mother then obtained the greeks consent to institute an honoured game that spent the best approvement of our grecian fames in whose praise i must say that many games about hero sepulchres mine eyes have seen performed but these bore off the prize with miracles to me from all before in which thy silver-footed mother bore the institution's name but thy deserts being great with heaven caused all the eminent parts and thus through all the worst effects of fate achilles fame even death shall propagate while any one shall lend the light an eye divine eosities shall never die but wherein can these comforts be conceived as rights to me when having quite achieved an end with safety and with conquest too of so unmatched a war what none could do of all our enemies there at home a friend and wife have given me inglorious end while these thus spake the argus killing spy brought near ulysses noble victory to their renewed discourse in all the ends the wooers suffered and showed those his friends whom now amaze invaded with the view and made give back yet agamemnon knew melanthius's heir much famed amphimedon who had in ithaca guest favours shown to great atrides who first spake and said amphimedon what sufferance hath been laid on your alive parts that hath made you make this land of darkness the retreat you take so altogether all being like in years nor would a man have choosed of all the peers a city honours men to make a part more strong for any object hath your smart been felt from neptune being at sea his wrath the winds and waves exciting to your scathe or have offensive men imposed this fate your oxen driving or your flocks estate or for your city fighting and your wives have deaths untimely seized your best timed lives inform me truly i was once your guest when i and menelaus had professed first arms for ilion and were come ashore on ithaca with purpose to implore ulysses aid that city racing man in reek of the adulterous phrygian retain not you the time a whole month's date we spent at sea in hopes to instigate in our arrival old laertes son whom hardly yet to our design we won the soul made answer worthiest king of men i well remember every passage then you now reduce to thought and will relate the truth in whole form of our timeless fate we wooed the wife of that long absent king who though her second marriage were a thing of most hate to her she would yet deny at no part our affections nor comply with any in performance but decreed in her delays the cruel fates we feed 
her craft was this she undertook to weave a funeral garment destined to receive the course of old laertes being a task of infinite labor and which time would ask in midst of whose attempt she caused our stay with this attraction youths that come in way of honored nuptials to me though my lord abide amongst the dead yet cease to board my choice for present nuptials and sustain lest what is past me of this web be vain till all receive perfection tis a weed disposed to wrap in at his funeral need the old laertes who possessing much would in his want of rights as fitting touch my honor highly with each vulgar dame thus spake she and persuaded and her frame all day she labored her day's work not small but every night-time she unwrought it all three years continuing this imperfect task but when the fourth year came her slights could mask in no more covert since her trusted maid her whole deceit to our true note betrayed with which surprised she could no more protract her work's perfection but gave end exact to what remained washed up and set thereon a gloss so bright that like the sun and moon the whole work showed together and when now of mere necessity her honored vow she must make good to us ill fortune brought ulysses home who yet gave none one thought of his arrival but far off at field lived with his herdsman nor his trust would yield note of his person but lived there as guest ragged as a beggar in that life professed at length telemachus left pylos's sand and with a ship fetched soon his native land when yet not home he went but laid his way up to his herdsman where his father lay and where both laid our deaths to town then bore the swineherd and his king the swain before telemachus in other ways bestowed his course home first to associate us that wooed the swain the king led after who came on ragged and wretched and still leaned upon a borrowed staff at length he reached his home where on the sudden and so wretched come nor we nor much our elders once did dream of his return there but did wrongs extreme of words and blows to him all which he bore with that old patience he had learned before but when the mind of jove had raised his own his son and he fetched all their armor down fast locked the doors and to prepare their use he willed his wife for first mean to produce his bow to us to draw of which no one could stir the string himself yet set upon the deadly strength it held drew all with ease shot through the steels and then began to seize our armless bosoms striking first the breast of king antinous and then the rest in heaps turned over hopeful of his end because some god he knew stood firm his friend nor proved it worse with him but all in flood the pavement straight blushed with our vital blood and thus our souls came here our bodies laid neglected in his roofs no word conveyed to any friend to take us home and give our wounds fit balming nor let such as live entomb our deaths and for our fortunes shed those tears and death rites that renown the dead atrides ghost gave answer o blessed son of old laertes thou at length hast won with mighty virtue thy unmatched wife how good a knowledge how untouched a life hath wise penelope how well she laid her husband's rights up whom she loved a maid for which her virtues shall extend applause beyond the circles frail mortality draws the deathless in this vale of death comprising her praise in numbers into infinites rising the daughter tindarus begat begot no such chaste thoughts but cut the virgin knot that knit her spouse and her with murderous swords for which posterities shall put hateful words to notes of her that all her sex defamed and for her ill shall even the good be blamed to this effect these these digressions made in hell earth's dark and ever hiding shade ulysses and his son now past the town soon reached the field elaborately grown by old laertes labor when with cares for his lost son he left all court affairs and took to this rude upland which with toil he made a sweet and habitable soil 
where stood a house to him about which ran in turnings thick and labyrinthian poor hovels where his necessary men that did those works of pleasure to him then might sit and eat and sleep in his own house an old sicilian dame lived studious to serve his sour age with her cheerful pains then said ulysses to his son and swains go you to town and for your dinner kill the best swine ye can choose myself will still stay with my father and assay his eye if my acknowledged truth it can descry or that my long time's travel doth so change my sight to him that i appear as strange thus gave he arms to them and home they hide ulysses to the fruitful field applied his present place nor found he dolius there his sons or any servant anywhere in all that spacious ground all gone from thence were dragging bushes to a pair of fence old dolius leading all ulysses found his father far above in that fair ground employed in proining of a plant his weeds all torn and tattered fit for homely deeds but not for him upon his legs he wore patched boots to guard him from the brambles gore his hands had thorn-proof hedging mittens on his head a goatskin cask through all which shone his heart given over to abjectest moan him when ulysses saw consumed with age and all the ensigns on him that the rage of grief presented he brake out in tears and taking stand then where a tree of pears shot high his forehead over him his mind had much contention if to yield to kind make straight way to his father kiss embrace tell his return and put on all the face and fashion of his instant told return or stay the impulsion and the long day burn of his quite loss given in his father's fear a little longer trying first his cheer with some free dalliance the earnest being so near this course his choice preferred and forth he went his father then his aged shoulders bent beneath what years had stooped about a tree busily digging oh old man said he you want no skill to dress and deck your ground for all your plants doth ordered distance bound no apple pear or olive fig or vine nor any plat or quarter you can find to grass or flower stands empty of your care which shows exact in each peculiar and yet which let not move you you bestow no care upon yourself though to this show of outward irksomeness to what you are your labour with an inward froward care which is your age that should wear all without more neat and cherishing i make no doubt that any sloth you use procures your lord to let an old man go so much abhorred in all his weeds nor shines there in your look a fashion and a goodliness so took with abject qualities to merit this nasty entreaty your resemblance is a very king's and shines through this retreat you look like one that having washed and eat should sleep securely lying sweet and neat it is the ground of age when cares abuse it to know life's end and as tis sweet so use it but utter truth and tell what lord is he that rates your labour and your liberty whose orchard is it that you husband thus or quit me this doubt for if ithacus this kingdom claims for his the man i found at first arrival here is hardly sound of brain or civil not enduring stay to tell nor hear me my inquiry out of that my friend if still he bore about his life and being or were dived to death and in the house of him that harboureth the souls of men for once he lived my guest my land and house retaining interest in his abode there where there sojourn none as guest from any foreign region of more price with me he derived his race from ithaca and said his father was laertes surnamed arcesiades i had him home and all the offices performed to him that fitted any friend whose proof i did to wealthy gifts extend seven talents gold a bowl all silver set with pots of flowers twelve robes that had no pleat twelve cloaks or mantles of delicious dye twelve inner weeds twelve suits of tapestry i gave him likewise women skilled in use of loom and needle freeing him to choose for the most fair 
his father weeping said stranger the earth to which you are conveyed is ithaca by such rude men possessed unjust and insolent as first address to your encounter but the gifts you gave were given alas to the ungrateful grave if with his people when you now arrive your fate had been to find your friend alive you should have found like guest rites from his hand like gifts and kind pass to your wished land but how long since received you for your guest your friend my son who was the unhappiest of all men breathing if he were at all o oh, born when fates in ill aspects let fall a cruel influence for him far away from friends and country destined to allay the sea-bred appetites or left ashore to be by fowls and upland monsters tore his life's kind authors nor his wealthy wife bemoaning as behooved his parted life nor closing as in honour's course it lies to all men dead in bed his dying eyes but give me knowledge of your name and race what city bred you where the anchoring place your ship now rides at lies that shored you here and where your men or if a passenger in other keels you came who giving land to your adventures here some other strand to fetch in further course have left to us your welcome presence his reply was thus i am of elibandi where i hold my name's chief house to much renown extolled my father aphidantes famed to spring from polypemon the molossian king my name apiratus my taking land on this fair isle was ruled by the command of god or fortune quite against consent of my free purpose that in course was bent for the isle sicania my ship is held far from the city near an ample field and for ulysses since his pass from me tis now five years unblessed by destiny that all this time hath had the fate to err though at his parting good birds did augur his putting off and on his right hand flew which to his passage my affection drew his spirit joyful and my hope was now to guest with him and see his hand bestow rites of our friendship this a cloud of grief cast over all the forces of his life with both his hands the burning dust he swept up from the earth which on his head he heaped and fetched a sigh as in it life were broke which grieved his son and gave so smart a stroke upon his nostrils with the inward stripe that up the vein rose there and weeping ripe he was to see his sire feel such woe for his dissembled joy which now let go he sprung from earth embraced and kissed his sire and said o oh, father he of whom ye inquire am i myself that from you twenty years is now returned but do not break in tears for now we must not forms of kind maintain but haste and guard the substance i have slain all my wife's wooers so revenging now their wrong so long time suffered take not you the comfort of my coming then to heart at this glad instant but in proved desert of your grave judgment give moan glad suspense and on the sudden put this consequence in act as absolute as all time went to ripening of your resolute assent all this haste made not his staid faith so free to trust his words who said if you are he approve it by some sign this scar then see replied ulysses given me by the boar slain in parnassus i being sent before by yours and by my honoured mother's will to see your sire autolycus fulfil the gifts he vowed at giving of my name i tell you too the trees in goodly frame of this fair orchard that i asked of you being yet a child and followed for your show and name of every tree you gave me then of fig trees forty apple bearers ten pear trees thirteen and fifty ranks of vine each one of which a season did confine for his best eating not a grape did grow that grew not there and had his heavy brow when jove's fair daughters the all ripening hours gave timely date to it discharged the powers both of his knees and heart with such impression of sudden comfort that it gave possession of all to trance the signs were all so true 
and did the love that gave them so renew he cast his arms about his son and sunk the circle slipping to his feet so shrunk were all his age's forces with the fire of his young love rekindled the old sire the son took up quite lifeless but his breath again respiring and his soul from death his body's power recovering out he cried and said o jupiter i now have tried that still there live in heaven remembering gods of men that serve them though the periods they set on their appearances are long in best men's sufferings yet as sure as strong they are in comforts be their strange delays extended never so from days to days yet see the short joys or the soon mixed fears of helps withheld by them so many years for if the wooers now have paid the pain due to their impious pleasures now again extreme fear takes me lest we straight shall see the ithacensians here in mutiny their messengers dispatched to win to friend the cephalian cities do not spend your thoughts on these cares said his suffering son but be of comfort and see that course run that best may shun the worst our house is near telemachus and both his herdsmen there to dress our supper with their utmost haste and thither haste we this said forth they passed came home and found telemachus at feast with both his swains while who had done all dressed with baths and balms and royally arrayed the old king was by a sicilian maid by whose side pallas stood his crooked age straightening his flesh more plumping and his looks enlightening who issuing then to view his son admired the god's aspects into his form inspired and said o father certainly some god by your aggression in this state hath stood more great more reverend rendering you by far at all your parts than of yourself you are i would to jove said he the sun and she that bears jove's shield the state had stood with me that helped me take in the well-builded towers of strong nericus the cephalian powers to that fair city leading two days passed while with the wooers thy conflict did last and i had then been in the wooers reek i should have helped thee so to render weak their stubborn knees that in thy joy's desert thy breast had been too little for thy heart this said and supper ordered by their men they sat to it old dolius entering then and with him tried with labour his sons came called by their mother the sicilian dame that brought them up and dressed their father's fare as whose age grew with it increased her care to see him served as fitted when thus set these men beheld ulysses there at meat they knew him and astonished in the place stood at his presence who with words of grace called to old dolius saying come and eat and banish all astonishment your meat hath long been ready and ourselves made stay expecting ever when your wished way would reach amongst us this brought fiercely on old dolius from his stand who ran upon with both his arms abroad the king and kissed of both his wrapped up hands the either wrist thus welcoming his presence o oh, my love your presence here for which all wishes strove no one expected even the gods have gone in guide before you to your mansion welcome and all joys to your heart contend knows yet penelope or shall we send some one to tell her this she knows said he what need these troubles father touch at thee then came the sons of dolius and again went over with their fathers entertain welcomed shook hands and then to feast sat down about which while they sat about the town fame flew and shrieked about the cruel death and fate the wooers had sustained beneath ulysses roofs all heard together all from hence and thence met in ulysses hall short breathed and noiseful bore out all the dead to instant burial while their deaths were spread to other neighbour cities where they lived from whence in swiftest fisher boats arrived men to transfer them home in mean space here the heavy nobles all in council were where met in much heap up to all arose extremely grieved eupitheus so to lose his son antinous who first of all by great ulysses hand had slaughterous fall whose father weeping for him said o friends 
this man hath authored works of dismal ends long since conveying in his guide to troy good men and many that did ships employ all which are lost and all the soldiers dead and now the best men cephalenia bred his hand hath slaughtered go we then before his scape to pylos or the elian shore where rule the epians gainst his horrid hand for we shall grieve and infamy will brand our fames for ever if we see our sons and brothers end in these confusions revenge left uninflicted nor will i enjoy one day's life more but grieve and die with instant onset nor should you survive to keep a base and beastly name alive haste then lest flight prevent us this with tears his griefs advised and made all sufferers in his affliction but by this was come up to the council from ulysses home when sleep had left them which their slaughters there and their self-dangers from their eyes in fear had two nights intercepted those two men that just ulysses saved out of the slain which medon and the sacred singer were these stood amidst the council and the fear the slaughter had impressed in either's look struck still so ghastly that amaze it struck through every there beholder to whose ears one thus enforced in his fright cause of theirs attend me ithacensians this stern fact done by ulysses was not put in act without the god's assistance these self eyes saw one of the immortal deities close by ulysses mentor's form put on at every part and this sure deity shone now near ulysses setting on his bold and slaughterous spirit now the points controlled of all the wooers weapons round about the armed house whisking in continual rout their party putting till in heaps they fell this news new fears did through their spirits impel when halitherses honoured master's son who of them all saw only what was done present and future the much knowing man and aged hero this plain course ran amongst their counsels give me likewise ear and let me tell ye friends that these ills bear on your malignant spleens their sad effects who not what i persuaded gave respects nor what the people's pastor mentor said that you should see your issues folly stayed in those foul courses by their petulant life the goods devouring scandling the wife of no mean person who they still would say could never more see his returning day which yet appearing now now give it trust and yield to my free counsels do not thrust your own safe persons on acts your son so dearly bought lest their confusions on your loved heads your like addictions draw this stood so far from force of any law to curb their loose attempts that much the more they rushed to wreak and made rude tumult roar the greater part of all the court arose good counsel could not ill designs dispose eupytheus was persuader of the course which complete armed they put in present force the rest sat still in council these men met before the broad town in a place they set all girt in arms eupytheus choosing chief to all their follies who put grief to grief and in his slaughtered son's revenge did burn but fate gave never feet to his return ordaining there his death then pallas spake to jove her father with intent to make his will high arbiter of the act designed and asked of him what his unsearched mind held undiscovered if with arms and ill and grave encounter he would first fulfil his sacred purpose or both parts combine in peaceful friendship he asked why incline these doubts thy counsels hast not thou decreed that ithacus should come and give his deed the glory of revenge on these and theirs perform thy will the frame of these affairs have this fit issue when ulysses hand hath reached full reek his then renowned command shall reign for ever faithful truces struck twixt him and all for every man shall brook his sons and brothers slaughters by our mean to send oblivion in expunging clean the characters of enmity in them all as in best leagues before peace festival and riches in abundance be the state that crowns the close of wise ulysses fate this spurred the free 
who from heaven's continent to the ithacensian isle made straight descent where dinner passed ulysses said some one look out to see their nearness dolius's son made present speed abroad and saw them nigh ran back and told bade arm and instantly were all in arms ulysses part was four and six more sons of dolius all his power two only more which were his aged sire and light year dolius whose lives slaked fire all white had left their heads yet driven by need made soldiers both of necessary deed and now all girt in arms the port set wide they sallied forth ulysses being their guide and to them in the instant pallas came in form and voice like mentor who a flame inspired of comfort in ulysses heart with her seen presence to his son apart he thus then spake now son your eyes shall see exposed in slaughterous fight the enemy against whom who shall best served will be seen disgrace not then your race that yet hath been for force and fortitude the foremost tried of all earth's offsprings his true son replied yourself shall see loved father if you please that my deserving shall in naught digress from best fame of our race's foremost merit the old king sprung for joy to hear his spirit and said o loved immortals what a day do your clear bounties to my life display i joy past measure to behold my son and nephew close in such contention of virtues martial pallas standing near said o my friend of all supremely dear seed of arcesius pray to jove and her that rules in arms his daughter and a dart spritefully brandished hurled at the adverse part this said he prayed and she a mighty force inspired within him who gave instant course to his brave brandished lance which struck the brass that cheeked eupytheus's cask and thrust his pass quite through his head who fell and sounded falling his arms the sound again from earth recalling ulysses and his son rushed on before and with their both weight-headed darts did gore their enemy's breast so thick that all had gone the way of slaughter had not pallas thrown her voice betwixt them charging all to stay and spare expense of blood her voice did fray the blood so from their faces that it left a greenish paleness all their hands it reft of all their weapons falling thence to earth and to the common mother of their birth the city all fled in desire to save the lives yet left them then ulysses gave a horrid shout and like jove's eagle flew in fiery pursuit till saturnius threw his smoking lightning twixt them that had fall before minerva who then out did call thus to ulysses born of jove abstain from further bloodshed jove's hand in the slain hath equalled in their pains their prides to thee abstain then lest you move the deity again then twixt both parts the seat of jove athenian pallas of all future love a league composed and for her form took choice of mentor's likeness both in limb and voice end of the twenty-fourth book end of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman circa fifteen fifty nine to sixteen thirty four